<laughs> wow. Woo. Hello, hello, everybody here in Fulham. Oh, no, we can do better than that. We can do better, better than that. A bit louder. Let's go. Welcome, Welcome to the show. Ladies and gentlemen, everybody. OK. Right. <laughs> My name is Bowie. My name is Nims. And uh, welcome to the Digital Schoolhouse Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Team Battle Grand Finals 2022. <laughs> Ooh, OK. Yes, Lynn, go. Let's go. Let's get straight down these steps because, ladies and gentlemen, we have a jam-packed show for you today. We are so excited to be finally in an arena, the Gfinity Ooh. Arena in London, for this Grand Final. We've had teams battling it out on Super Smash Bros. Ultimate all the way from September yeah. last year to now and can I just say it's an absolute I can't describe the feeling just to be in front of a live audience Ooh. and in front of people once yeah. again audience are you still with us I hope you can hear them at home and of course everybody watching at home welcome of course once again to the show we have so much exciting exciting uh, tournaments and of course lots of other special guests coming to the show uh, mm -hmm. for you to check out later today yeah, it's going to be, uh, um, as Nim said, loads and loads of action. Most importantly, of course, we've got that, that, that tournament. We've got hopefully six, maybe seven sets of very exciting Super Smash Bros. Ultimate action. And a little bit later, um, Nims is also going to be moderating a very special um, careers panel, speak speaking, speaking to uh, four um, industry pro professionals, mm -hmm. talking about how they got here. So let's have a look at that schedule over the course of, of the day so everyone knows what's going to be going down. Absolutely, so yeah. yeah. So, Bowie, of course, we are going to kick things off straight away with our first two teams which of course are Norton College. Norton College, are you here? Yep, here, yep, here. One person is here from Norton <laughs> yeah, College, course, excellent. Great. It's good to support, know. Support. <laughs> and of course going up against Norton College we have Caldy Grammar. Caldy Grammar, are you here? No, no, they're not. They're not here. Okay, they just—it's a good moment. It's a bit early, guys. It's a bit early. They—they they need waking up. They'll be—they'll be—they'll be awake in just a bit. Um, of course, we have our first two teams going straight away in the first set of games, which we'll talk about just in a moment's time. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. After this, of course, we then have our lower bracket matches, yep. um, taking straight forward through there. We'll have a short break. Uh, after this, we then, of course, do the upper bracket matches and the lower bracket matches, uh, followed by, of course, the careers panel, which Bowie just explained. We have some very, very exciting guests. Very lucky to have them here today with us. We're going to talk a little bit about of course working in the industry perhaps if you have an interest working in esports or perhaps working in a competitive environment um, in the video games industry mm -hmm. after this of course we have the grand final uh, and then after the grand final we have of course the prize giveaways mm -hmm. Very, very exciting times. Yeah, for sure. So we've got a stacked day. So do not uh, to click away from that, that browser and don't leave your seats unless, of course, you need, need to get a drink or go to the loo. Um, but yeah, re regarding that panel, we are going to be doing a live Q&A here in the audience. But if anyone is watching at home, you can get involved too. Um, go to uh, Twitter and at DIG Schoolhouse and use the hashtag DSH Esports to ask any questions that you might have for the panel guests who are going to be um, uh, having a chat a little bit earlier. So get involved if you are at home. Head straight to Twitter. Absolutely. And of course, I'm just ready to go. Are you ready to go? I'm ready to go. Let's, Let's go. go. We're going to head straight over to this wonderful desk, ladies and gentlemen. I want to take this desk home <laughs> with me because it's so special to sit at this seat. And yeah. of course, Bowie, we're joined by a special guest at this desk, we? Aren't are we? indeed. Well, not only do we have 12 brilliant competitors, we also have three very talented uh, student shoutcasters joining us here on the desk. And that first uh, young guest is Danny. Danny, welcome to, to the show. Let's give him a round of applause. Thank yeah, you. absolutely. Um, Obviously, um, you know we had, you know, you were you were picked as, you know, the uh, the, the best shoutcaster of your um, re re regional final. So it's a pleasure to have you here. Um, just obviously um, in introduce you to yourself, the school you're from, and give us a little bit of uh, what you're excited about today. So um, I'm Danny. I'm from um, Norton College, yep. and I'm just I'm mainly just looking forward to just just witnessing the event <laughs> unfold and see who can bring out. The best of the best. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, that is that is the point of, of competition to see who is is the best on that day and yeah, and get get to share that uh, passion mm -hmm. with everyone. It's a pleasure to have have you here. No no pressure, of course. Just have some fun and it'll be it's a great a day. Pleasure to be here. No worries, no worries. <laughs> Excellent. So, Bowie and Danny, of course, excellent. Thank you so much for joining us once again. Um, for those of you guys watching at home, uh, and of course our audience members, we're going to talk a little bit about the bracket format of exactly what you're going to see in today's tournament. Mm -hmm. um, so, Bowie, could you talk us through a little bit about the format? Yeah, sure. For someone who's watching for the first time, what's going to happen today? Excellent. So, yeah, we have uh, those four, four teams. Each team consists of three players. It's going to be a double elimination bracket. So, if a player loses their first match, they'll still get, or a team loses their first match, they'll still have one more chance to redeem themselves before the, in, in 
and, and if they lose, lose twice, they'll be out of the event. Be a best of five, so it's first to three um, game wins. Um, and the way it's going to work is that we're going to have a, double, a doubles game to begin with, 2v2, and then the player who didn't play will then start off a series of three 1v1s. And should we go the distance, Danny? How are we ending it up? Uh, so the final match, game five, will be a squad strike, 3v3, elimination right. style. So, um, so when a player loses a stock, they'll obviously be out. The next person will rotate in, and they'll just keep the same sense, and it'll keep going until everyone's make, out. It's going to make for a very, very dramatic game five, should we reach there indeed. So squad that's how it, it's now. going uh, to look per game. It's going to be very, very exciting stuff, ladies and gentlemen. On the other side of excitement, Bowie and Danny, we have a little bit of a, a little bit of a sad announcement. Yeah. But it's okay. We've we've managed to resolve the situation. <laughs> we were, of course, going to be joined by another co-host of ours. We are unfortunately she is a little bit under the weather. Yep. But with the power of technology and the thing called the internet. I've heard of that. Yeah, it's it's a good thing. Yeah. It's a good thing. Um, we of course have our other co-host. She is live from her apartment right now, ladies and <laughs> gentlemen. Please give it up for Alicia. Alicia, where are you? Alicia. Hello, Alicia. There she is. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Alicia, guys. first and foremost, I am absolutely gutted that you're not here today. Yeah, um, but of course, you know, we're still with the power of internet. We are still with us. Rocking the jacket, I can see. I love it. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. She's, Thank you, <laughs> she's ready and good to go. <laughs> Alicia, so of course, you, uh, like myself and Bowie, um, have been witnessing these exciting games that have been happening all throughout, lot since September to now. Tell us a little bit about what you're looking forward to today. Are you excited? Is there anything specific you want to talk about and let us know? Oh my God, I could not be more stoked to be <laughs> here today. It's been such a journey and I wasn't expecting to do it here from my bedroom. Um, <laughs> thank you all for coming here to my room. I think this is the most people I've ever fitted in here before. I would have made you a cup of tea if I realised that we were going from here today. But what I'm most excited for today, I think, is... Um, it's just the fact that everyone who's competing today is the next generation of esports professionals, right? Like some people Absolutely. here today haven't competed at all, ever. This is their first time. So anyone watching, we're going to have a few surprises. You know, there might be a few curveballs as people uh, kind of come to the final and, and just experience that pressure, right? Absolutely. Pressure. Absolutely. Yeah. And I have to say, Bowie and Alicia, I am a little bit jealous of the schools, you know, because yeah. I wish when I was at school, <laughs> yeah. I had these kind of opportunities. I mean, if I told my school teachers that I'm just going to go take part in a uh, in a Super Smash Brothers tournament, they'd be like, what? OK, uh, no. right. Is that, is that but, a thing? Is that worthwhile? <laughs> but, again, it's, it's super exciting for all of the teams that are partaking all across the UK uh, here today. And Alicia, we are, of course, going to be back with you shortly later today. We're going to be checking in on you uh, throughout the day, so don't go anywhere. And I hope you're I feeling won't. better uh, <laughs> in your bedroom. Thanks, guys. Um, and thank you so much, Alicia. Um, now, we're going to talk a little bit more about the bracket now. So, yes, of course. Uh, yeah. Getting into exactly who's going to be going up against each other first. Uh, Bowie, could you talk us through what's happening in the bracket first? Of course, as I mentioned earlier, it is going to be a double elimination bracket. So the way that it works, as I said, if you lose one game, you're not going to be out just yet. You're going to drop down to the lower bracket and you've got one more chance. If you lose it in, in the lower bracket, you are out. So our first, we have four teams, they're all in the upside right now. Norton College versus Langley Grammar School will open up and then we'll have Cooldee Grange Grammar versus New College Swindon. The winners of those two will go across to the upper C match and the loser of, that, of those first two games will go down to the lower A match. And then obviously we'll play through those brackets until we get to the grand final, which could potentially get a bracket reset. If the, if the winner of lower side B wins that match, we'll have a, another bracket reset because, again, it's unfair if uh, the, 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 a team who never loses on their way to the grand finals loses once and is out. So that there is our, the way our bracket's looking. So, you know, six, six sets minimum, and may, maybe we'll get that seventh set as a nice little surprise at the end. But we'll have to see how it goes. We absolutely have to see how things go. Um, ladies and gentlemen, of course, um, just as a reminder, the journey here for these schools has been absolutely sensational. They have come from all across the UK uh, to compete. And of course, now we're down to the f uh, four finalist teams for our grand final. And I think it's time that we call on our first set of teams. Let, let, let's do it. Game so, one. ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching at home, if you are watching from your schools and, of course, audience members, please give it up for our first team coming to the stage. Make some noise for Norton College! <laughs> Welcome, 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 Norton College. And of course, going against 
Norton College, we, of course, go absolutely crazy for Langley Grammar School. <laughs> they got fans in the audience. <laughs> we got some fans, we got some fans. Cool as cucumbers, a lot of them, look at that. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen. So, of course, we have our first two teams standing next to me here. I can feel the energy. I can feel the competitiveness from each side. So, guys, you're here. You made it. You made it finally to the grand final. You're going to represent your school. How has it been for you guys? How's the process been? Have you guys been practicing day in, day out? You've been going to each other's houses. You've been practicing at school. Talk us a little bit about the process. Well, first off, the three of us have been practicing at schools. During lunch times, we've been asking for permission, and we've been getting the team coordination down for the 2v2s and the team call-outs for the 1v1s all down. And I just want to say, first off, shout-out to Masi Khan, who can't be here because of his chemistry mock exam, but he's watching the stream. <laughs> <laughs> Exams are important. <laughs> Excellent stuff. And, of course, now, of course, you guys are Norton College, but you do have a team name, which is, of course... Uh, Matt says Team Thunk and Dunk. <laughs> team Thunk and Dunk, ladies and gentlemen. Talk us a little bit about what you guys have been getting up to. Um, yeah, so we've had lots of practice sessions over the time. We've had a practice session scheduled after school every single Monday without fail. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> the competitive viableness of those, uh, a little bit on the <laughs> dubious side, but, you know. <laughs> awesome stuff. All right, so I'm not going to keep these guys any longer. I'm going to ask both teams to go take a seat Get yourselves prepared and let's get the show on the road, shall we? Give it up for both teams one more time, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to throw straight over to, of course, our shoutcasters. Bowie and Danny, are you guys ready? Oh, we most oh. certainly are. Thank you very much, Nims. <laughs> yeah, we're here on the comms desk, uh, our first game. So, obviously, you said you were from Norton College, so am, you, yes. you know those players there. I do. And any any kind of like, you know, I mean, you don't want to give anyway any secrets to the opposing team, but any, anything you, you can tell us about, about these three and kind of... Because they were saying they practice quite, quite a lot, quite, de quite yeah. a dedicated group then. They, they practice a lot, like, a lot, a lot, and they are definitely very good. Like, they're, they're, the, best, they're the best players I've ever met. I will. <laughs> I am going to say that. Okay, that's fair. So, fair. yeah. Uh, uh, some high standards then, so I'm looking forward to some, oh, yeah. some, some, some good stuff. One thing that I, I found very interesting when I heard them kind of like saying how they were preparing, and this is a big side of like the strategy of this layout, mm -hmm. that we have this 2v2, then we've got three 1v1s, kind of knowing and kind of getting an idea for how the players are playing and then kind of seeing from that first game and what characters come out, what play styles we see, how they're going to like, you know, pick their players for the upcoming games. Because again, if, you, if it's like one all after the first two games, you want to try and get that 2-1 advantage. You may, may want to send out uh, your big guns early, maybe, and try and get that game. Or maybe save it if, in case it goes worse. Um, or try and close it out if it go, goes well well for you in game, game three. Um, so, yeah, it, it's going to be in intriguing to see kind of what they're thinking about. Yeah. At least I'm, I'm glad that they actually thought about that stuff. It wasn't <laughs> just like, let's just play the game. <laughs> yeah, it, it should be interesting to see how both teams decide to play out their strategies. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, just... Seeing, seeing what characters they'll put in the 2v2s is going to be most interesting because yeah, characters cause that are good in 2v2s aren't always necessarily good in 1v1. True. Vice versa. Yeah, yeah so. for sure. I think, I mean, and the thing is, like, sometimes we have, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a concept of team synergy as well that maybe mm -hmm. you play very well with a certain character that maybe that you, there's a particular combination that you just have that works well with, with your teammates. So, and and I, guess, I guess if it's experience, I know that some teams may have played before in uh, earlier parts that they, can, they kind of think, you know what, actually... Uh, we've played them before, and we know what strategy works against them. Um, yeah, because we have, like, I think, two qualifiers from different um, of di di different parts of the region. So. Yeah, and then uh, there's also to bear in mind that in the two v two there is team damage as well. So yes, of course. So characters that do a lot of damage, but it's all AOE, won't necessarily be as good. Yeah, of course, yeah. So you and have to it, play cats right. Same thing with like projectiles. You want to make sure that you're not kind yeah. of like spamming projectiles and, and actually hitting your teammate. You want to make sure that if you're going to use those, use, in, uh, use those in a very particular way. We should mention as well that when it comes to the rule set, um, one, of, one of the parts of this one, we want to throw a bit of chaos into the mix. It's not just going to be, you know, you know, no items, FD, Fox only kind of thing. <laughs> but, you know, we're going to, we're going to, you know, we do have the, uh, the smash ball is on, on low. So it will show up maybe once, maybe twice in a game. Twice. Which is going to be a very pivotal part of the game. Like, who's going to get it? How are they going to use it? And are they going to capitalize on it? I always love Final Smashes. They're so fun. <laughs> it's like, yeah. it turns the tide of the battle instantly. Mm -hmm. It pulls off. So it should be interesting to see how it actually does so. Yeah, we're just going to make sure our player players are ready as soon as they are. We're going to be jumping into game. 
Sam sounds like, like, like they are. So I think we're ready for our first game of the Digital Schoolhouse Super Smash Bros. Ultimate <laughs> Grand Finals of the, of the Team Battle 2020 Cup. Uh, it looks like we're going for it. We've got, uh, we've got uh, Team Red, Team Blue. Um, let's have a look at those. Team Red, I believe, is uh, crikey. That's uh, Langley Grammar School, isn't it? Yes, Langley. And then Team Blue is Norton College, just for your... Okay, cool. The the red the red team or the the, the 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 team in red hoodies are in blue, of course. So that's very very important. Game one, then. Let's get this underway. Audience, let's, let's make some noise. Your first game of our grand final. Okay, so we're starting on Kalos. You know these wider platforms to the side. You know we've got some. Uh, you know going to be quite all right with those walls. Does get caught by the roller. Quick hit there in the center. A flurry of blows. Uh, Cloud already has limit though. Oh, just uses it quickly though. So uh, not too much going on. Clouds up B being quite a good move, especially out of shield. In my opinion, it's the best out of shield up B. Very, very good. Does a lot, a lot of damage, and if you can, yeah. you, you can get, get that, that going. It, it kind of, this is a thing I see a lot in the beginning of two v two. You have these two one v ones happening on all, yeah. on both sides. You know, trying to maybe find some space to get a two v one option. Yeah, I think I think that's what um, that's what non college will be going for is separating off into two one v ones. Yeah, very good edge guard from Harry there against the cloud. Sides as well. Yeah. Very, very good edge, um, edge guard from Harry, managing to wait for the edge guard, uh, go, wait, 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 wait for the air dodge and then punish an immediate counter back. So it's uh, four stocks now for the um, for Norton College, five for Langley Grammar. Uh, yeah, that, that inkling still on low percent. They really want to try and maybe really pressurize good. them if possible. Maybe it should be should be interesting to see how both teams actually work together. Mm -hmm. as, mm -hmm. as we've seen, red team sort of sort of playing off separately, but then blue team, as you saw there. The Ike up B into um, into by, uh, forward smash. Mm -hmm. Both trying to like play to each other's strengths, really. Yeah, very, very, very nice, 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 nice use there from seven just to get the um, the cloud li cloud limit limit break to ensure that Tim Hazard can get him back safely. Cloud li um, recovery kind of limited when he hasn't got limit ready. Yeah. Um, limited limit. Ah. Um, <laughs> The uh, quick draw from Harry to get back on stage very, very quickly. Rhythm is still surviving with still three with stock. Three Nathan stock. goes down to one. They need to take down this inkling stock if they want to try and get back into the into this game. Violet's obviously doing the classical um, up being saggy there. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Never fails. Yes. Limit cross slash doesn't get any there. Doesn't really land. There's a couple of shields there. Cloud looking for that smash ball. Gets it. Okay, we have the, cro the omni slash on deck. And Gets it connects. It. Gets onto the that right team member as well. That will be the stock off Ike. It most certainly will be. It's a guaranteed stock if I think it's, if it's over 100. And we finally have Rhythm going down. And Cloud, immediate trade back. So it's a three for two stock um, situation. We maybe want to try and see Rhythm get that taken down early. Um, mm -hmm. Just to see if they can get back into this game. And they need to be very protective. Nathan's taking a lot of damage here. There's, there's two ways Blue Team can play this. They can mm -hmm. either try and get Rhythm down, or they could focus the Cloud and try and get the Cloud to take the stock. Mm -hmm. And then maybe work from there. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, that is a really, really good thing potentially. Yeah, you know, yeah. that is a big part. That, you know, taking a stop from your your, your teammate, and bringing them back in, or do they have the confidence to allow rhythm to do a two v one if they feel like they're ready? Nathan mm -hmm. just keeping rhythm in the air, looking to try and go for an edge guard, but you know, tries to turn the position back around. Very, very nice. A uh, uh, the the down air from Harry into the the back end. Wonderful. And the forward That's smash. An incredible turnaround. Now we're in the two v one that we, we were talking about. Rhythm's got a very safe stop, but it could turn around very, 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 very quick if there's good team play, as you were mentioning earlier. See, it is a very safe stock. However, 2v1 is never a safe option to be in. Mm -hmm. So, should see how they play it. Landing there into up tilt, up air as well, just covering the air very well. Back Harry there. now keeping pressure up on rhythm. Nathan coming forward, and then Harry grabbing and covering the uh, the jump over, over option. This is the thing. In 2v1, you can force your teammate to make an option and punish Ooh. it. Rhythm in, un, under some pressure here. Let's grab there's, there's a and the dash attack, attack and that enough. takes the stock, and that will be game one. Really good. Two not in college. You're happy about that? About that? I'm pretty sure. I'm, I'm happy about that. <laughs> yes. So Langley started off really nicely, having a stock lead the really entire strong. time, but then Norton just brought it back toward toward towards the end. So here's here's the question. Obviously, we had two two of our players from both teams. Mm -hmm. We're going to have the third player have to come in so everyone gets get, get, gets a game. But what yes. do you think that, you know, Langley need to start taking some notes here? What they saw from that first game and what they're going to see from this third one to take forward to those 1v1s a little bit later on? 
That's hmm. the question. You know, you don't have to have an answer to that just in case. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to like, put it all on you. So I was do you know say, exactly what they're going to do? Me. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm just putting you through through your paces. You're on the uh, you know big stage now, so. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, I mean, obviously, the third player will be um, someone who we haven't seen in the two v twos. Yeah. Um, I won't say much about the third player. Okay. Um, sure. however, just I, in case they're listening in, of course. However, I will <laughs> say, be careful. Okay. With the character choices. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So th th there's like a little caveat we have have to this, where when a character is picked, if there's any any kind of like character crossover that happens from, uh, you know, maybe two players play the same character, mm -hmm. when a character is chosen, I believe it's st it's stricken from the uh, from the choice for later yes. on. So if you know that, oh, actually they played Cloud and, and Inkling in that game, so actually yeah, I have a Cloud, I can maybe maybe pull it out and prevent them it from being picked mm -hmm. potentially. Um, but yeah. So, you know, we had a little bit of fun. Now it's going to be 1v1, a little bit more yes. standard form, I guess, for a lot of maybe the competitive players out there who are used to that kind of, though just the 1v1 one, the one, one one scenario. Um, and as you said earlier, it's a very, very different, like, different game. You can build yeah. neutral a lot differently. It's, it's just, it's, so, it's such a big, like, dynamic in 2v2s mm. because yeah. obviously there's the idea of being put into free fall, but with the idea of team damage, you can just hit them with a simple weak move and you've saved them, basically. Yeah. Um, and with the idea of Final Smash as well, if the Final Smash pulls them into centre stage and they're on low percent, waste that Final Smash, save your teammate, everything works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. It's, yeah. it's just amazing how like counterplay can be built in two v twos. Yeah, um, it, it, it's always one of those things where I sometimes hear you know that like, oh you know the two v twos you know doubles isn't as exciting, but I think that, as you say there's a very specific unique thing here. So we're going into our next game. There we've got Captain Falcon versus Diddy Kong. Uh, Diddy, Donkey Kong, sorry. I was watching a friend play Diddy Kong yesterday. And it was I a make pain. that mistake all the time. It was pain. Like, <laughs> no, I, I, I know I shouldn't talk, to, I shouldn't like, really like talk badly about that. Diddy Kong is a pain to watch. Oh my word. <laughs> anyway, uh, it's not Diddy Kong, it's Donkey Kong. It's Yay! Donkey Kong. A heavy. I love a heavy character. I love heavy characters. They're so fun. It's either combo or be comboed. It's, mm. That's the life of a heavy man. So I think we've got the, the, uh, the colours the right, the right way around now. We do have Norton in red and we have uh, Langley Grammar School in blue. Um, so yeah, it's all, all of the work is on the, this Captain Falcon. As you were saying, you know, heavy character is, is DK, so, you know, combo or be comboed. And, you know, we've got a rushdown character like Captain Falcon who's able to put out a lot of damage quickly, so maybe that speed will come in, come in handy here. Maybe. I mean, Captain Falcon's just, as you said, just the rushdown character just always tries to get in, mm. like, just do as much damage with the combos. Down tilt in, 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 into grab, get that forward throw off, just trying to cover there. Oh, the spike! Oh, oh my Four god! There. Wow! Opens up very strongly, does, does, does Kyle. A has and got to uh, only on thirty percent as well. Mm. This is this is looking very iffy for the Captain Falcon right now. Yeah, these the, these these grabs into up throw into um, up up air are standard for just racking up a, a good chunk of percent in the early area. Falcon kicking them maybe a little bit a bit, a bit wayward there, trying to find their way back down. But okay, here's the grab. Okay, misses the up air, but follows up there. Man, just there's a lot of whipping going on here. Okay, dash attack comes in, trying to find these these up airs, but. Double, double into double back air. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Up smash just doesn't get the full connection. Just that first hit. The uh, okay, oh, wonderful. Oh, the forward smash. Beautiful. Charged it as well as um, perhaps anticipating that, that roll in. Kyle gets punished for that. The spike into a air. Wonderful. Yeah, that getting works. Getting the star yeah. KO. Wow. Donkey Kong with a full stop lead. Yeah, it's looking really good right now yeah. for Norton College. Looking to go 2 0 up, up here, putting all the work on to Langley to bring it back. But you know, you can see just these low percent combos really working right now for Kyle, just getting these smaller hits and following up as best they can. Landing there into roll, does get shielded. Very nice. Just trying to cover that, that ground. There's the Raptor. Side oh, yeah. And here we see a mini ladder. No? There's the stomp, doesn't get stomp. the knee though. Stomp, stomp, stomp to knee is a, is a Captain Falcon classic. Um, I will see if we can see that one. It's so good. It's <laughs> okay, yeah, Raptor Boost gets um, spot dodged again, but. There's a stomp. Oh, wow. okay, couldn't quite get down in oh, time, gosh. so I had to opt for the back air, but it wasn't there. Um, just trying to find the way. Yeah, just trying to throw out these, these. there it is again. Back air though, because there's a little, little bit too much height. <gasps> I do like, like this from Kyle. He's opting for very aggressive yes. defensive options, like trying to attack, try and get back on stage. Yes. But nice, yeah. nice up smash does secure the stock. 89%, not an inter insurmountable amount. If they can, if if Captain Falcon just can keep that damage uh, racking up on a very low percent DK. Gotta play safe. 
See, Captain Falcon has so many options available that he could just easily bring it back with one simple combo. It's, yeah, that's 39% from just a few down. hits. Goes the, for the, oh, the Falcon dive. So you can see what Carl's doing. Like when, when his opponent is recovering, what he does, he jumps forward and jumps back to try yeah. and read an option and then move in aggressively to try and cover it. And Up the OB takes him too. Very nice from Norton College, 2-0 was... up. See, I'm, I'm going to be honest, that game surprised me. Yeah? Um, yeah, like, seeing Captain Falcon going against the Donkey Kong, I thought Donkey Kong would have just been easy combo food for the Captain Falcon. But yeah. seeing Donkey Kong just pulling it through with the easy combos, and then right at the very end, there was not a lot going on. It was almost as if it was just, like, just trying to feel each other out again, mm -hmm, like they mm -hmm. were doing at the start of the match. It was, it was weird. Yeah, I think one, one thing I was, I was noticing is, is you know, when it comes to spacing specifically, because like um, Captain Falcon's a rush down, down carry. He wants yes. to be in, in your face. But DK was always kind of playing this game where keeping him at arm's length, which is very, very good for DK. Yeah. He's got very, very long arms to like, you know, slap his opponent, opponent about a bit. So it's kind of nice to kind of, you know, use that spacing to kind of let Captain Falcon come in, but always yes. be playing at a safe range where when he does make his, like, his dash attack or his option in, um, to then counterattack it afterwards, and I think that played very much in Kyle's favour, um, which allowed him to kind of get that, get that that victory quite cleanly, despite you know the matchup differences. Yeah, like you say, like Captain Falcon is that rush down character, so it's like when Captain Falcon can't rush down because mm. of his opponents, where's his option suddenly? Exactly. Yeah. It's, yeah. What 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 can he do what when the rush down is kind of exactly. like you know blocked out by very very um, optimal spacing? Um, so it's two zero to Norton College. One game and they'll send they'll make make their way through to um, winners finals. Uh, but you know Langley aren't out yet. You know the Absolutely reverse three O's can happen. But uh, yeah, yeah, so we're going into game three. We got Harry throwing out the pink Yoshi, and then we've got uh, seven from Langley Grammar School. I wonder why they're named seven. Is that perhaps because know. they're playing Final Fantasy seven? Maybe. <laughs> Cloud is my favourite Final Fantasy. No, um, <laughs> no. Um, FF7 is Cloud Strife, rocking the cloudy wolf outfit. I, I prefer the FF7 outfit. No offence, Seven. Sorry about that, mate. <laughs> um, <laughs> could you imagine? I'm very upset by, by, by that. Please don't say that again. Um, okay, we're going to be going into game three. Then we are on battlefield. A nice one there. Audience getting involved. Love, love, love to see it. So this is the thing, right? This is actually going to be a, a big moment for um, this thing. This is Yoshi. Yoshi, yes. what does what is, what is Yoshi dislike the most? Disjoints. Disjoints. What does Cloud have? A, a big lot old of sword. Disjoints. He's got a big old sword. <laughs> um, so that's looking pretty good. And you can see right now, very strong opening from this Cloud. Um, you know, looking at 74% unanswered pretty much. 70% different. Harry falls down as well! Okay. Oh. That was a bit weird. I think maybe there was an air dodge that came out that maybe he maybe. couldn't quite um, respond. But uh, a, a, an early and kind of like almost gifted stock there for seven. So it's not the start that Norton College wanted. As you were saying earlier, that up be very, very nasty out of shield. Just such a good out of shield option. But then mm. there is Yoshi's... Um, Lovely. There is Yoshi's, obviously, secret weapon, which is the down air. Racks mm -hmm. up a lot of damage and can also be used as a combo start and used as a tech chase. So it's just interesting. Cloud getting the final smash there. And it will connect. That, yeah, the, the, yeah, the air dodge came out, waited for it. Perfect punish yeah. there with the Omni Slash. Over 100%, that's going to be GG's 3-1. Can we get a three stock here? It might happen. There's a lot of work to be done for Norton College to bring this back. We're looking very strong for, for, for Langley Grammar. Just cloud stuff going on right now. Wonderful stuff being done, you know. These lovely landing options into like combo follow-ups. Um, combo follow-ups. Um, they're the, um, they're the cloud used limit up B, which mm. kind of surprised me because using limit up B, you, it's going to be harder in mm. battle. Very nice. Oh, but this take from Yoshi. Yeah, it's hard because of like the lift you have. That was a wonderful yeah. forward air just just to get that 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 stock back. So we're not going to see a, a, a three stock just yet, everyone. It, 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 it is early doors, but we'll have to see how it goes. But um, Harry, with a little bit of life left in them yet. I mean, Yoshi obviously being this combo character as well. Mm -hmm. Obviously not as heavy as Captain Falcon, but still has decent combos. Can easily bring this back. Yeah, but again, these, you know, these... I think, yeah, there's a big, 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 big reliance on that, on that Klim, Klim Hazard. But, you know, as you were saying, you know, limit cross slash is a really, really good move. Like, yeah. damage, knockback, all that kind of, kind of, of good stuff. So maybe using it as a more, you know, a KO option later when right now, still building up a little bit of percent. But here's the point when Cloud's like, okay, I can get a kill with a, with a, a, a good move. So I'm going to look for it. Um, and then there's obviously Cloud's limit break, which mm -hmm. would be Cloud's down B. So you use down B to charge it. And then when you charge it, if you use down B again, 
you bring out a massive tornado as a limit break. Yeah, and that is touch, yeah. a very Ooh. good. Oh, a parry in the last the hit. Parry. Harry, some wow. swaggy stuff coming out from Harry. Just trying to put their mark on this game despite being 2 1 down there. They need to keep working here. There's one more. Oh, there's a wonderful back on air. the back air. Be takes the stock, and that will be game three to Lang <laughs> Dammer. It's not over yet. Not over yet. Sorry, Norton, you don't get that easier <laughs> ride to, to, to the winner's uh, finals. As a shortcaster, I am not biased. Uh, good, that's what I wanted for. to hear. <laughs> <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't heard, heard any, you know, you know, when like, you know, just un, un, under the breath, your team get, get, gets stopped. Go on, son. Like, yeah. no, none no, none of that, none of that. No, of course. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just looking forward to see who can play what. Of course, that's exactly, just, yeah. That's what we play for. So, um, obviously, Harry came out um, with uh, the, the Yoshi. We've also seen Kyle. So, the, you know, we've got our third, um, our third Third player left um, from your team to believe is Nathan. Um, yep. Their favorite, favorite character, Jigglypuff. Now, yes. are we going to see the puff? I remember actually watching because we were at, at the Northern Northern Finals last week. Very exciting games. And we saw that that Jigglypuff come out and put some hurt on some people. Oh yeah. Uh, so yeah. Uh, you know, one of those things. <sighs> His puff is very scary. Yeah. It's. <laughs> I played against this puff. It's it's not fun. I'm I'm not gonna lie to you. It's not fun. I mean, you, you could have just said playing against puff is not fun. <laughs> <laughs> Floaty characters just like yeah, stay away true. with those kind of like you know those long kind of like you know the like that yeah. back air just kind of always coming out yeah. like please stop this. I can't. Yeah, I it's uh, I've only I've only ever beaten his puff once. Um, but you you hold on to that. You hold on. I, to I that. hold on to that. Let I hold that on to that with dear life. You. I don't let that go. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> just, just bring it up every now and then. But you remember that one time that I yeah. did beat you? you know? Yeah, well, yeah. Let's forget about the 70 ta 75 <laughs> times you beat me. Yeah. I beat yeah. you once. I yeah. win. That 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 one time's the only time that really matters. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, Jigglypuff. Um, I'm not quite sure who we're going to be going to be seeing come out from. Uh, oh well, no, it was the the, the Beleth player is going to be the one left. Will they bring out a Beleth again now that it's one v one? We did see the Cloud in a one v one system scenario as well, but that's because Cloud's a strong character anyway. I'd yes. say um, may, maybe not absolute top tier. Um, just in case anyone from the Smash UK, UK scene is watching and like you know Curry Governor's watching right now, being like, don't you dare say Cloud is top tier. <laughs> But, uh, you know, okay, so it, it looks like we are going to see the uh, Jigglypuff and we're going Jigglypuff. up against Rhythm's Inkling. So Jigglypuff versus Inkling. This is a matchup that I have to say, I've been casting this game since it released. Yeah. I've never seen this matchup before. Oh, well, <laughs> <laughs> funnily enough, um, we, we used to have an Inkling main before the Inkling swapped to Little Mac. Right. Um, so I've actually seen this matchup quite a lot. And it's a Little Mac from Inkling. Oh, they do Yeah. Um, I mean, they were, they were going to um, swap to Ryu, but then they oh, heard that... They heard that um, the, we were going to play on Wi-Fi for some of it. Oh, good, yeah, yeah, good and idea. They were like, yeah. Maybe not real. <laughs> <laughs> So, so, so far, one thing you'll see is like you know, pound is a very like elongated hitbox, large activity, oh, yeah. long a a active frames. So it's one of those things that also breaks shields. So it's a good move to kind of like cover spot dodges. Perhaps there's the uh, the roller comes out. Very very nice coverage of the very DI good. to the left. Down smash to come out. So this is the thing with Inkling. Inkling can cover their opponent in a lot, a lot of ink, which, which is a damage multiplier, which is very yeah. very big damage. So it's a good recovery tool. Oh, or kind of like comeback mechanic. Very very nice coverage from Nathan. Oh wow! First stop of the match. Jigglypuff being at kill percent though. Oh, and instantly using it. Ooh, that will amazing. be maybe an SDI out. Oh, oh, and just jumped into it right at the end. That was really, really that well was... used. Like wow. there was great um, like coverage on the on the left hand side from Nathan to cover the edge guard and get yeah. a stock. But then Rhythm came in so aggressively, got that um, got the smash ball and just again ama amazing usage <laughs> just to cover. See, but... see with the smash ball, I think it's interesting because the way smash ball works is. It spawns in at very high health, but deteriorates very quickly. So you can play the idea of the waiting game and just hit it at the last second. Nathan doing oh, such a great job of edge guarding. Oh, but but the Inkling recovery. just making it back. That recovery, man, it's too good. Just too good. Way too good. Okay, bombs out. So please remember that you know one thing that you know Jigglypuff, uh, or at least Nathan as a player, has to be looking for here is to keep an eye on that ink tank on the back of Inkling. You can tell yeah. how much ink your opponent has and when they need to like space back and mm -hmm. you know try and recover. Yeah, it is, it is one of the meters that I think... I think without um, the ink meter, Inkling would be um, a higher tier than they already are, honestly. Without it? Without it, yeah. Because wait, wait, as in, if, if, as in if they could do what they do without it? Yeah, that's what right, I mean, sorry. Okay. Rather than like yeah. the moves that use it. I like, oh, okay. no. <laughs> the moves no. help, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good dash attack, that's going to oh, be one. Oh, the dash attack taking the sock. And Jigglypuff <laughs> only being at 50%. This mm. isn't... 
too bad for the Jiggle Puff so far. Yeah, Nathan's doing, doing a good job, but you can just see like, the thing that Nathan's doing so well is just really utilizing you know, a big strength of Jigglypuff, which is like so much air game. Yes. So much, they can just, just cover so much you know, with these active hitboxes that you know the edge guard has been very, been very, very strong so far. Rhythm just trying to find a hit there, gets met by an, an up air though. The roller is a big yeah. thing, it's a big KO option because it locks the opponent in, in, in the ground for so long. So Nathan wants to be careful of that, but there it is. Gonna it's be a stop. such a strong, very move. Wow. Yeah. So here's the, here's the point that's quite scary. Nathan wants to try and push away very, very quickly before this kind of stuff happens. It grabs into these up-air mm. combos for their follow-ups. Good hits, though. Oh, this Jigglypuff is very good at tech chasing, let me tell you. They are yeah. very good at reading roars and everything. But yeah, Smash Ball coming out, and like I say, will they go for it straight away, or will they leave it to <gasps> Oh, Inkling it went, it getting it. Go for it immediately. Oh, oh got over. missing Jigglypuff. However, it is utilizing very good as a stage control option, which I think is very good for Inkling, because obviously it can't... Not yet, not yet, not, yet, yet, not, not just yet. The yet. game's lying to you, the game's lying to you. Oh, God. Again, here's that really, really strong edge guarding, but good idea to go higher, to let Nathan uh, think that they're going to go, go lower, then recover high. <gasps> but oh the forward smash! That's yeah. the reversal! Oh my god! Oh my word, okay. I was Jigglypuff. not expecting that, wow! Jigglypuff is a very light character. Of course. And yeah, yeah, it wasn't, as I said, it was 2 0, but Langley are back in this game. That is exciting stuff. Norton thought they had it, so much confidence coming out, and, oh and to be fair, god. you could see why. Nathan played a very, very strong game, but. Uh, but I think, yeah, rhythm just finding their rhythm and getting it. We're going to game five. We're going to game my, five. We go to that squad strike. I'm looking forward to this very much. It's so, so good. So here what they have to do, they have to pick their order of how they're going to be BB going in. We're going to have one, two, three. What order do they want? Who do they want to bring out? We were mentioning, we were mentioning it earlier. Do they want to like open up with their big guns, try and get a point on the board and just and then try and ride that high? Or do they want to try and, you know, save, you know, their big player for last to try and bring it back if it's not, not, not looking so good? Yeah, that's, but, that's um, always the thing with squad strike. It's like sending the big guns or save until the very end. Mm. It, both are both like equally valid options in squad strike, but it's oh just well. interesting to see which option they do go for. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Okay. Um, whew. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah, so, uh, God, uh, it's going to be pretty pr pretty good. A, a game five to begin oh, yeah. with, that's really what I wanted that to see. I was kind of worried, where well, are we going to see a game game five? Was it all going to be 3 0, you know, you know just mullerings? I, you know, I everywhere. think game fives are the most hype because we do see every player mm -hmm. playing in this game five, as well as it just being the tiebreaker. Just, yeah, yeah, of course. Just telling us who will win this set. It it's all comes down to this one moment. After this, I had done. That's it. That's it. No more and more chances. And, and every player only gets one stock as well. So they have yes. one stock to imprint as much as they can onto this. And that's the thing we were talking about earlier when you know we had um, Alicia popping in to say hi. Is that a whole idea of you know maybe this is kind of new for some some players to mm -hmm. obviously compete, sure, but to compete on a stage like this, you know, in the Gfinity Arena, it's a lot more kind of like you know, that real professional esports vibe that maybe they haven't experienced before. So is that pressure going to get to them, or can they stay cool? See, pressure cracks even the best of us sometimes. Indeed, yeah. Like. Um, like I, w I watched the Smash scene quite a lot, yep. and there was, um, there was like this kid I can't remember his uh, Spargo. Spargo, yeah. Um, he was a contender to be like the top Smash player, what some people thought. Yeah. But the issue is he cracks under pressure so much. Yeah, well, he did when he's that losing. day. Yeah. And um, it does happen. It does happen. Yeah. But um, and, that, and, that, and that was a two. Uh, that, that was a, a two zero or a three zero reversal. Anyway, yeah. we have our final game. We got. We have um, Norton's going to be in blue this time, um, <laughs> and Langley are going to be in red. So again, we've the same characters that we've been seeing all day. They're going to stick to their mains, and whenever these uh, lads are ready to fight, we're going to be jumping into our fifth and final game of this first set to see who goes on to win us finals. See, I, I always I always love when um, when people play characters that they don't necessarily say are their best characters because it's they're basically trying to say the whole oh, oh, not good. Oh, there's the order is a rematch oh, oh wow okay very okay. interesting there's a grudge match oh, to open God. up with <laughs> in fact it seems like they're all in the same order they are all much. in the same order the only difference being that harry obviously swapping from yoshi to ike yeah yeah, so, yeah i think that's one of those things maybe that the uh felt that the uh, the, the, the the yoshi didn't do what, what they wanted here we go yeah. gets some exciting going it's on fd yeah. Grab to begin with. Again, only one stock per, and you saw that it was very neck and neck between these two in their last oh, game. 100%. Get this is. Attack. 
Yeah, it's See, so tense, isn't it? <laughs> this is this is scary as well because it's obviously they keep their percent, so mm. it doesn't matter who wins if they keep playing as they did in the last match. The other one's basically going to be a kill percent ready for the next person to take them instantly. Exactly. Yeah. When you take the stock, you want to be on. You want to be as healthy as possible. If Nathan, if Nathan can see this out with 35 percent on the ball, that's really really good. Um, good looking for the next stock. And to be fair, if the inkling does take the game with this percent they are at, it's still a solid percent to stay at. And there's that smash ball just looming in the darkness. Well, I mean, it's not really in the darkness, but you know what I mean. Um, it's looming there. Oh, and oh, got taken back immediately. immediately. Knocking Good. it straight out. Playing it safe there. There's a the forward smash. Percentage looking a little bit better. Jigglypuff just able to get that. Trying to, wants to try and maybe get behind or just exactly push his opponent to the other side and then use the final smash. So that, that height tall. there. Rolls on. Very nice timing. Oh, but the inkling ring out of ink. Yeah, couldn't quite get the roller out, you're right. In there, uh, obviously, being Jigglypuff's. So good much attempt. aerial control so from good. this Jigglypuff player. It's just so hard for Rhythm to just land and get that ink back, maybe. Careful. Both of them, both just trying to see yeah, where they can find an opening. They're yeah, just throwing out their, their, you know, their back airs and their forward airs, just trying to throw out these hitboxes. Just trying to get oh, the back air again. It's going to be enough. Takes the game. Okay. See, Nathan survives. Nathan survives. However, Nathan obviously being Jigglypuff on 77%, mm -hmm. that's kill percent for Jigglypuff. It's, it's oh, yeah. anyone's game at this point. Anything for, um, you know, I mean, Captain Falls got, got some big hits, you know, if, they, if yeah. they're going to open up, you know, with a strong back air, um, you know, get that early hit, get that hardest hit, that's probably going to be curtains for the, uh, the, um, the Jigglypuff, excuse me. I, I actually don't think that this is going to be as good for the Captain Falcon because obviously Captain Falcon is the rushdown combo heavy character. But if someone's at high percent, mm. they can't really find the yeah, combo. They, they they they, they, it kind of has to switch in immediately to the KO option, Captain Falcon. We're going for a small battlefield here. Um, small battlefield being my favourite map in the map pool, in my opinion. Up smash being thrown out, but these grabs are strong. Really good stuff there. The, the Falcon dive does, does connect. That was beautiful. See, that, the thing could have been punished there, but maybe it was a little bit unaware. Uh, land with a stomp, maybe, but doesn't hear that dash tag coming out. It's looking really good. That's looking that really, really, really good. good Wonderful work. Oh, Nathan. Wow. And just like that, takes the second stop. Nathan redeeming themselves after, you know, that unfortunate loss in game four. Looking to see it out, but they're going up against, I believe, Cloud now. Cloud, so, yes. Um, and we saw this Cloud, you know, they gave it the beans in their game yeah. and, put the, and put, you know, Yoshi to the screws. <laughs> like, it was not... Not good, not good, good no. for Yoshi that day. No. However, it's Cloud going up against the Jigglypuff. Can Nathan see this out and completely just put, put their foot down and close the door for Langley's um, winner's bracket? We'll have to see. Or will Seven do what they need to do? To see what happens. The down air into grab forward throw. Just I mean, having to play that. At this point. See, this is the thing, right? Um, Cloud's recovery is very limited, so it's actually something that that, that Jigglypuff can really punish if need be. Oh yeah. And um, so, you know, good stuff from Seven to stay safe now. Trying to find that time down. Can they find that landing? Oh wow! Oh, okay. Wow. Cool. That's gonna oh, be enough. That's gonna that, be enough. Well. See, I was unsure about that. I, I wasn't too sure either. Oh, it, I, it was one of those things that I wasn't sure that, that the blade beam was going to come out at that point because I was trying to find that moment where Nathan was going to land, but it was almost like they landed and kind of just jumped and didn't anticipate the blade beam then and just didn't yeah. have a defensive option. So just got caught, no reaction time to kind of get an air dodge out or anything. But uh, we're going straight into it. Can Seven do the reversal just like their, um, like, like Langley did as a whole? <laughs> yeah, green greens there from... Uh, See, I'm not ready. sure how this will play out because... Kel is very good at <gasps> squash forward smash. That Kong is so dangerous. Yeah. Um, again, the RB is coming out once again. Can they get this, this KO quickly? 100% now. Smash Remember, ball. if they can get the Omni Slash onto this Don Donkey Kong, it's looking good right oh. now for the Cloud. And he did just say I connect. This is ridiculous. Oh my Why god. Do we, this what is going on right now? <laughs> That's going to be GG. It's oh going to be going to game five. Oh, oh my wow. god. <laughs> Nathan took it to the last one. Oh my Seven god. Seven took it to the last one. We, <laughs> this is ridiculous, dude. <laughs> See, I spoke too soon. I saw Swordies. I'm saying anime swordsmen. That's all we need oh in Smash god. Bros. <laughs> Everyone's always like harping on about anime swordsmen. They're hype, dude. They are beautiful. Final destination. I love watching them play. Oh, we're trying to like go up there as well. Good forward to carry the cover on uh, to cover there. 
they're doing their, you know, their, their usual like landing there, landing back air options. Harry just playing it safe right now, which yeah, obviously seven. is what you need to do. Yeah, seven stalling with the um, the cross slash to keep himself safe. <gasps> that was oh, a very wow. very ballsy move. Back is looking good. Bringing it back slowly. They're going to be in a in a situation here. Quick draw is oh. not punished. Cloud playing it very very safe right now. Obviously just going for the options with the spacing, the back hairs and everything. Jab's going to push him off stage. Well, what, what's Harry's edge guard option? <gasps> oh, he had a limit break. There's the... Uh, there's the... Oh, he can't oh, it. That that hit. Oh, oh, that no. takes him one. Wow. That was ridiculous. Oh, so wow. He's standing, he's topped off. He's on his feet. What a I'm victory. That was... That is... That was two reverse 3-0s. Wow. They that reverse 3 0 as a whole. Langley, Langley Grammar School reverse 3 0 as a whole, but then seven. Final I Fantasy was... seven. Oh my god, I was Cloud not... Strike. I was not expecting that. That a double oh you my can't god. believe it, Logan. You can see he's so he's excited. Like, I spoke to them before. <laughs> I spoke to them backstage before we started. I was like, what do you think? You reckon you're confident? He's like, yeah, I got this. Look at that. He proved it. He's proved oh it. Oh my god. What a match. What a match. And a brilliantly done as well. Wow. Well, both teams played extremely well there. Oh. I've I might have overestimated my team's capabilities after watching that game. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the way you want to open your, your, your grand finals. What oh, a absolutely. brilliant first set. Oh, that was... I don't, I don't even know where to begin mm. with that. <laughs> it was just... Yeah. It was just well, hype all I, over. I mean, can we... Can, I just want to, like... Can we just take a minute, as you just said, Danny? Ladies and gentlemen who are watching at home, and people who are watching us, that was just game one. <laughs> yeah. That we was got... just game one. We have an entire bracket to get through just yet. <laughs> and that was absolutely incredible. We had Bowie standing up. Danny was <laughs> flailing all over his chair. <laughs> just, we just like, didn't know what to do. I was just trying to like, just, like I was, my palms were sweating. I was like, what's going on? This is game one. This I'm is game sweating. one. These weak arms heavy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but of course, we are going to talk a little bit about what we just witnessed, Bowie and Danny. Like, mm. I, I, interest, I was really interesting to actually listen to you guys. Um, of course, Danny, you know some of the players personally. Yeah. Um, it was really interesting to see kind of the mix-ups between both teams. I, again, we took it literally right down to the wire. Uh, tell us something, Danny, that, again, that really stood out for you. Like, what was, what was something that came out for you that you just did not expect at all? Well... For starters, could we talk about that Cloud's reverse 3-0 in the squad strike? Like, that was insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, absolutely. Talking I, about pressure, you know, you're the last yeah. character. You've got to get through three, You've three, got to get through three, three players. Them. Yeah, because that's the thing. You're not just playing one player three times, like getting three stocks. Exactly. Three different players. Mm. Three different, three play different players, mm. three different play styles, three different characters, mm. like all different archetypes as well, like Jigglypuff, Ike, and Donkey Kong. Like, <laughs> three characters that could not be more different. Yeah. And Cloud just... Beat them without breaking sweat. Yeah. It, was, it was insane. I think mean, it's like adapting the play style to between each individual character. What they need, what you know, they needed to do to achieve to achieve victory in those situations is definitely the most um, you know um, incredible thing. You know, throwing out the the disjoints where where need be, creating this wall. You know, a big thing that you know sword players like like to do. I mean, you can see you know both players are doing it. Like with his nail, his landing nails is a good option to kind of like you know because it just pops the end of the, the enemy up land with an air and then immediately either follow up with like an up air or a forward air. And the same thing is true of Cloud. When he wants to try and create that wall, these kind of like short hop, fast fall back airs to try and keep the opponent away. Um, you know, and, and you were saying that kind of defensive yeah. play, it's just creating that wall, let you come in, you know, let the opponent come in and, you know, let them create the, my win condition, basically. Yeah. It's um, and that, and that, that like stoicism to be so controlled and calm and win out against that, you know, three stops. Yeah, it's, it was interesting to see how they played because I prefer I prefer more of the rushdown play style when I play. So to see them both just wait patiently, waiting for the right opportunity to strike, mm. it was it was interesting to watch. And Definitely. I will admit, I, I do think I spoke a little too soon uh, <laughs> during the squad strike <laughs> because I said um, Donkey Kong, uh, yeah. the Donkey Kong of that team being great in squad strikes because there was a thing in our school where last DSH um, tournament we competed in, it came down to a squad strike and the Donkey Kong just threw out everyone. <laughs> um, instantly, <laughs> it was it was brilliant. So I thought, face. <laughs> yeah, I, th I thought the Donkey Kong would have done something similar, but no, the Donkey Kong went <laughs> Excellent. It was it was great. Right. Excellent. I mean, again, we just first and foremost is again, thank you so much to Danny. Can I get oh, a yeah. round of applause for Danny? Really good work. So, thank you, guys. Danny, of course. 
We're going to see you a little bit later on today. You, of course, are going to go and console your team, give them a bit of a pep talk. It's, um, not, over yet. it's not over yet for them. It's not over it's yet, not over exactly. Yet. It's not over yet. So thank you so much, Danny, uh, for joining us. Of course, here we'll be seeing you a little bit later on today. Um, before, of course, uh, we move swiftly on, I'm just going to say, Bowie, no smack talk about Diddy Kong. Thank you very much. Actually, no, 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 um, no, 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 no. That is warranted. <laughs> no smack talk. <laughs> that is but of course, ladies and gentlemen, um, do not go anywhere because this was game one. Yep. I'm going to say it again. This was game one. Of course, we'll be right back very, very soon. Do not go anywhere. If you need to use the bathroom and get a drink, go and do it now. We'll see you very shortly. See you in a bit.
Welcome back. Are you still with us? I hope you're still with us. Uh, everybody in, of course, the studio at the moment is very excited to get into the next games. And of course, if you've just joined us, welcome, of course, to the grand final of the Digital Schoolhouse Super Smash Brothers Ultimate Team Battle 2022. My name is Nims, and we're just going to get straight into the next set of games, guys. Now, if you were here earlier, you saw it was quite a uh, quite an epic set of games we saw there. Um, two of my co-hosts who were just here, Bowie and Danny, have gone to just cool off for a little bit because I think it got a little bit hype on the on the desk here uh, a little bit earlier this morning. Um, but I've been joined by two more special guests, two more shoutcasters. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for TJ and to Freddie. <laughs> Welcome, guys. How's it going? Going oh, good. Pretty good. Excellent stuff. Now. TJ, Freddie, do you guys want to explain to the viewers who are watching at home and everybody here what schools you guys are from? Whereabouts in the UK you guys are from? So uh, I'm TJ. Uh, we're from Valley Park School okay. down in Kent. Yep. Nice. And do you guys play a lot of competitive Smash Bros yourselves? You guys are more into the shoutcasting stuff? Are you more competitive players no, yourself? Uh, yeah, we're more of shoutcasting stuff. We don't really do much competitive right. uh, Smash, but no, we do love um, you know um, this shoutcasting. Great opportunity to be here. It's great, being here. great experience. Excellent stuff. So, talk to me a little bit about what you guys just saw from the first set of games. Were you were you blown away? Was there something interesting that you thought you didn't really expect to see in like game one of the tournament today? Well, mm. personally, I I think it was a great game. Mm. Strong start for one school, but right at the end, the reverse free stock was. Phenomenal, yeah. phenomenal. Really, you know, shocking, you know, first game, you know, you, you, you expect, you know, to kind of ease into this tournament, but no, it's very strong, very strong kind of rounds, very exciting. Excellent stuff. So we're going to see the next set of schools come up now in uh, game two of our grand final today. Uh, of course, we have, I believe, uh, New College Swindon mm -hmm. uh, going up against, um, I believe, our other school, which is, of course, I want to pronounce this correctly because I don't want to get this wrong. It's Coldy, isn't it? Yeah, Coldy, Coldy, Coldy Grammar School um, who are going to be going up uh, against, like I said, uh, New College Swindon. Are you guys familiar with these schools? Have you seen any of their competitive play before? Uh, no, not no, really. No, but not really, no. Yeah, but it's, a a, you know, it's going to be quite a surprise to us. Excellent, good stuff. Um, so, we're, we're, I mean, I've seen these schools take part uh, mm. over the past few months uh, competing against, of course, lots of other schools all around the UK. Mm. So I'm familiar with their games. Is there anything you guys specifically, besides, of course, these two schools that are competing, is there anything particularly you guys want to see? Uh, is there anything particular you guys are looking forward to seeing today? Mm. No, not that I can think of, other than the, the grand final. Right. Yeah, no, I'm just, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I would personally like to see the losers bracket. Right. Yeah, okay. A bit of, you know, desperation, trying to get to the United. Ah, well, yeah. under under pressure, you want to yeah. see what they pull out. Excellent. That's interesting. How each team functions under pressure. Excellent stuff. So I think let's just get straight into it, guys. I think we're gonna call out the uh, the two schools. Come straight into the next set of games, ladies and gentlemen. Give it up for our first school, which is Caldy Grammar School. <laughs> Excellent stuff. And of course, joining Caldy Grange Grammar School, we of course have their competitors. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for New College Swindon. <laughs> uh. All right, guys, welcome. You made it. You made it. Now, I'm sure you guys were watching those previous games and it was Pretty hype, wasn't it, what you just saw here? So similar sort of questions to you guys. What have you guys been up to since, of course, when you competed, you qualified, you've made it to the grand finals? What have you guys been getting up to? Well, in any opportunity we've had, we've been trying to go to each other's places, get some practice in. We've been analyzing the past um, semifinals and just looking at matchups and practicing them to try and get an edge in the competition. Excellent stuff. Now, am I right in saying we might see an Isabel player here? Potentially. Potentially, yeah. Oh, he's leaving it to a mystery, guys. Leaving it to a mystery. Coldy, how's it going? Good. Am I pronouncing it right? Yeah, you, you pronounced it right this time. Perfect. Okay, so what have you guys been getting up to? Uh, yeah, we've also been doing similar, just doing some practice sessions or lunch and break times that we can. And had Harry, our team manager, just also analyzing the past rounds, see what we can get out of that. 
cool, calm and collected. He's, he's reserving all that energy for the hype games that are gonna happen next. Guys, I hope you're ready. I think the audience are ready. You guys wanna go and take your seats, get yourselves prepared for the games. Give it up for both these teams, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna head straight back over to our shoutcasters. TJ and Freddie, are you guys ready for these games? Yeah. Yes, I am. All right, let's do this. So, two teams going up against each other. This is game two. So, talking a little bit about, of course, uh, the bracket itself in terms of what format we're gonna be seeing. So, it's exactly the same as what we saw earlier. Uh, we're going to be seeing some, of course, team battles, 2v2s, mm. uh, followed by, of course, some Smashdown, uh, followed by, if needed, of course, some Squad Strike. Um, Freddie, are you a fan of all three modes? What's, what would you say is your favourite you, you really enjoy seeing? Um, uh, pff, you know, I, I don't know, really. <laughs> put, me, put me on the spot here a bit. <laughs> um, I don't really think I have a favourite, because, you know, all of them, you know, it, anything really can happen when mm. playing. You know, one minute one person could be winning. Next thing you know, you know, final smash comes. Mm. They, you know, they, you know, someone's brought it back. But no, I'm just really looking forward to seeing everything. You know, last round, you know, it was you know quite quite um, a lot of hype. You know, this round, you know, you've got to live up to that kind of first mm. round. But no, yeah, absolutely. So no, I mean, no pressure there, of course, to both the teams that are going up against each other. TJ, um, talk to me a little bit about what you feel about the team battles, because team battles can be quite a different play when it comes to observing and, of course, the players, how they're connecting with each other, how they play together and keep each other going in, of course, uh, team battles for this game. Are you a fan of team battles? Do you play quite a lot of team battles I, yourself? I do like team battles along with squad strike. Okay. But when it comes to team battles, my favourite aspect is if you and your teammate manage to pick, get, pick two good characters that work well together, that bounce off each other. Okay, give me an example of two characters you think worked well together. Ooh. So <laughs> of the roster of, of the of the roster doing, complete Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Well, I'd say if you if possible, if you can land a good combo of Donkey Kong right. and follow it up with a Captain Falcon oh, Captain Falcon doing a rush. Okay, well we did see some DK and we did see some Captain Falcon in the previous mm. game, so who knows, we might see a team battle of the both players. So I believe um, both of our teams are almost ready to go. Uh, we're just waiting for players just to be connected uh, and get the show on the road. Freddie, what about yourself? Are you, uh, do you have a favorite Smash character? Uh, mm, you know what, nah, I, I like the whole roster. You know, I, I've grown up playing um, video games all my life. You know, mm. I, I, I've played a bit of um, Switch, Xbox, right. PlayStation. Um, if I really have to put, you know, one into perspective, it'd probably just be like Mario, you know, the classic. You know, I grew up, grew up playing, you know, on, on my DS, playing um, Mario games, so I think, yeah, it has to be Mario. <laughs> Excellent. I, I, do you know what? I've seen a fair few games competitively, but I, I, I haven't seen many Marios yet. Who knows? We might, see more, we might see some Marios today. Who knows? But here we go. We are almost set to go for both of our teams. Uh, Coldy are in the red, and of course, New, uh, New College Swindon are, of course, Team Blue. We're seeing a Falco, we're seeing a Palutena, we're seeing a Joker, and we're seeing Sephiroth. Interesting characters across the board here. Are you guys familiar with playing these particular characters? Are you...? Um, I, I'm familiar with um, Falco. Um, I do, um, when I play Smash, I do like to play Falco quite a bit, but other characters, not really particularly, I don't really... Right. I personally played a little bit of Joker. Nice, okay. Yeah. Excellent stuff. So here we go, first game, uh, two, two v2s, straight away here with a quite a Joker doing quite, taking the quite mm. damage here, but Sephiroth back up to 64% already. Matt sitting comfortably, although actually gaining some percentage rather quickly. Yeah, both, um, both Joker and Sephiroth do have quite high percentage, but you know, um, red team quite close behind. Oh, Joker oh. losing his first stock. Currently going strong, Joker may be able to turn this around mm. with his remaining two stocks. Yeah, Palatina is also, you know, quite high percentage, might be knocked off soon. Calcium and Noodle sitting at similar percentages. Mm. Yeah, no, um, quite, you know, it's been quite close so far, but, you know, it's only been the start. Can't really tell. Yeah, you're completely right there, Freddy. Mm. Yeah, Sephiroth, also, uh, you know, everyone besides Joker, quite high percentage, might lose all their first stocks. Uh, you see Matt is gaining percentage at 140%. Mm. One big strike could knock Matt off. Ooh. Of course, at the moment, we still haven't seen Joker use his persona. Once that bar is charged up, he can unleash the persona. 
pulling off quite a devastating attack if he wants to. Ooh, as you oh, say that. As I said that, there you go. <laughs> he yep. came straight out of there. Matt currently down to two <laughs> stocks remaining. Mm. Yep. Yeah, the Persona really, you know, helping Joker take that first stock. Oh, no Smash Ball was spawned. I found Smash was spawned. Yeah, see, there it is. Oh, oh. man, he Sephiroth gets it. Can he Activates. It? Oh. Uh, misses. Nobody there. Quite devastating. That could have been big for the game. Mm. No, that could have been very big indeed. Right, as we've been talking, Falco seems to have lost his first stock. Joker's still sitting comfortably in 57%. And Sephiroth still having all three stocks. Playing very cool, calm and collected, our new, new player. No. Oh, and as you say that, Noodles loses his first stock. Commentator's curse there, I need to be quiet. Yeah. <laughs> All right, it's been quite, you know, a bit slow game, you know, not as fast paced, you know, kind of like both teams trying to, you know, preserve their percentage. They're, they're playing very well, I must say. Mm. Mm. Ooh. Oh, and as you say, that, yeah, another. Yeah, you know, we, 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 yeah, we need to stop playing. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> it's just got to. Yeah, keep silent now. Keep silent now, exactly. Oh, oh. loses stock. Quite, quite evenly uh, played right now. Joker of high percentage. Mm. Yeah. With Carlson catching up. But still two stock a piece four. Of course, that all oh. I said it. I, I'm just going to be Yeah, quiet. yeah. We, oh, just, and oh, Joker okay. loses another stock. <laughs> oh, goodness me. One stock a piece for all of our players. Mm, very close match. They're very close indeed. It really can be anyone's game here. Look, Matt's gaining some percentage. Yeah. Palatina slowly taking damage. Might be the first one to lose all three stocks. Joker still. Oh, Final Smash has spawned again. Let's see if anyone can actually hit this time. Oh, are we going to see an activation? Oh, Joker got it and activating it oh. and misses. Damn. Quite disappointing, you know. Final Smashes can change the game. They absolutely yeah, they very can. can. Mm. Just one land could completely erase someone. Mm -hmm. All right, Palatina, strong contester to lose all three stocks first, but Noodles quite and Joker seems to be quite close behind. Hmm. Uh, Matt going up slowly while well, Joker has overtaken uh, Matt in percentage. Mm. And now's the time, you know, re you really want that shout cast to, you know, curse, you know. A bit more interesting game because <laughs> it's been quite close I'm at the moment. I'm just gonna keep quiet. Yeah. I'm just gonna, gonna keep, keep quiet. quiet. <laughs> yeah, both all about 100%. So you oh. know, one strong hit can knock one. Oh, it off. is literally as you said, Freddie. Anybody's game right now, 100% for all four players. One it's hit can change everything. Absolutely. Oh, oh. oh. the double oh. up there! Wow, that was, that was great. <laughs> that was nice. That was a great match. Yeah, excellent stuff. So our red team, of course, Coldy, excellent play there from both of the players, yeah. both taking that up smash up, oh, both at the same time. Mm. It's like a synchronicity there from yeah. team players. Yeah. Interested play, uh, interesting mix-ups between all the different characters. What did you guys notice about that game? Was there anything that you picked up on that you thought was quite interesting? Mm, yes, um, you know, both, you know, had quite slow play styles. Okay. Both, you know, trying to conserve that percentage, you know, mm. not really going for the rush, going, you know, straight, you know, knock the player out. Wait for the perfect moment to strike. Mm. So you, would you say they're kind of, almost kind of figuring each other out almost, mm. aren't they? Yeah, kind of yeah. Seeing the play styles and seeing what's Working going out on. Working out where they can attack. Yeah, they, you know, that, it is a good game plan for, you know, first mm. round, you know, you know, size up your opponent, yeah. see, see what you're dealing with. Yeah. Especially with, you know, a game mode like this where, you know, you have majority of players playing. It's a good, you know, opportunity to see what you're coming up against. Excellent stuff. So that, of course, was our 2v2s. Um, we're then going to move on to the next set now, which of course is our Smashdown. Uh, obviously, we have uh, the other player who wasn't playing uh, from each school uh, who's going to partake now. So we're going to see some 1v1s happening. What do we think, guys? Are we going to see some different characters? Are we going to see the same characters? What do we think? I, well, really, it, it depends. So some people may have a different play style when they're with different people. Right. Yeah, no, I think, you know, we might see different characters because as we say, you know, it was slow. People have seen what um, you know others can do. They might want to change up their play style, you know, try and like throw like a curveball in there, you know, really um, you know distract their opponents. The, the uh, one extra character could completely mm. change everything. Yeah, no. Absolutely, and it was interesting to see, wasn't it, that all of our fighters so far are really utilising, of course, the smash ball. Some players just prefer not to use the smash ball at all. They f prefer to just do full on combat. Mm. Um, do you, are you guys, you guys obviously mentioned before, you are big fans, of course, the smash ball, as you said, it can completely change the game, can't it? Yeah, it, it can, it can. Absolutely. So I think we are good to go. 
to the next game. Uh, we are seeing, of course, a Roy against a Rob. Ooh. Roy and Rob. Battles of the Elves. Rob and Roy, <laughs> exactly. Mm. Here we go. Quite interesting seeing Rob. <laughs> no, don't, you know, when I, when I watch people play Smash, I don't normally see Rob. Yeah. It's not a very used character. It, I, I believe Rob is, Rob is one of those characters that it, it does take a lot of work to get into the, the nitty gritty of his play style. A lot of technical abilities from Rob here, but as once you do, you can see some real powerful play. Oh my God, exactly. look at that. You know, as, Perfect. as you're talking about, you know, the skill, you know, <laughs> and all this, you know, Rob's showing you what, you know, what like a good, you know, skilled Rob player can do. Get those good combos through, you know, zero to um, death. Absolutely. Character. 100 to zero to 100. Uh, 100 to zero, that's it. That's it. Yeah. Zero to 100, absolutely. Yeah. Third time. Third time, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Okay, two stocks still down, of course, for Roy. Three stock. Rob still holding on quite strong. That was a perfect little shield there. Sitting comfortable on the stem. Oh, never mind. As I speak, 89%. <laughs> yeah, what's well, going to happen quite a lot today, no, TJ. Yeah, we, well, I, can, I can tell. <laughs> yeah, I don't think teams want us for shout casting. You know, we, seem, <laughs> we seem to be the curse over here. <laughs> Okay, a very high percentage now for Rob. Still trying to hold on with that three stock with good grabs. Mm. Tries to keep the pressure. Rob. Rob, you know, trying to, you know, maybe, you know, just before losing his first stock, take that second yeah. stock, you know, give him a comfortable lead. A last ditch effort before mm. losing another, before losing his first stock. Mm. Which yeah. I respect. Yeah. Absolutely. As you see, you know, with that quite high percentage, he's kind of playing it slower than he did, you know, at the start. But who knows, you know. Oh. Rob's did 140 percent. Rob being those goes in for the. Oh, Ooh. not enough. Nice. There we go. Still on that restock for our Rob player, ladies and gentlemen. One very strong hit could send Rob off and make Ooh, him first final off. Smash. Oh, Roy could take advantage of this smash ball. Oh, no. nice inch. Excellent play there. Takes him out first. Roy gets then smash. Goes the smash. This could be big for Roy if he does land this final smash. This could be the comeback he needs. Ooh. Roy seems to be playing it safe, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. Yeah, Rob trying to, you know, trying to stay in the air, trying to get um, avoid Roy. I'm trying to knock the smash ball out. Playing it very cool, calm and collected here. Ooh. Activation. Oh. Ooh. And misses. Unfortunately, the wrong direction for Roy. <sighs> you know, I try, you know, we really want to see a final smash. That was know. a very big yeah, sigh be... there, Freddy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I'm, <laughs> you know, Freddy loves a uh, final smash. Ah, you know, uh, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's the cinematic. You know, <laughs> it truly, you know, changes the game. But you know, we've we've already seen three miss. <laughs> we have. I don't know if this is gonna be your game, Freddy. No, <laughs> not this match. Now, especially you know, last last round, you know, you got all these final smashes mm. going off. You know, all these game-changing ones. You know, trying to you know get some hype over here. But, <laughs> no, it, this Rob playing right now, you know, it's bringing all the hype right Absolutely. now. Absolutely, Rob still holding on to that two stock at 78%. Roy trying Ooh. his best with the up smash. Oh. Nearly. Oh, not just it's not enough. It's not enough. Maybe just one more big hit could send Roy off. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh and Roy's eliminated. Excellent stuff. I thought, unfortunately, Roy was not our boy mm. in no, that game. Today. But that was some interesting play, and you guys picked up on this in the first set of games, as you mentioned. Very cool, calm, and collected players, this set of games, isn't there? They're very mm. aware of what's going on, trying to pick up and learn what's happening between both the fighters, not just going in all guns blazing. Yeah, trying to um, sniff each other out. Absolutely. Very, very interesting place. And, of course, you guys, as you mentioned, you, you haven't seen much Rob play before. How was that for you to see Rob in action there? Oh. I, I think it was great. Mm. You know, Rob is a very tactical, shall we say, character. Mm. Requires lots of skill. Mm. And right there was a good demonstration of a skilled Rob player. I Excellent believe. stuff. Very, very good stuff. So another point, of course, they're going to Caldy. Um, we're going to go into our third game now. This, of course, could be a match point for Caldy if mm. they continue this uh, going through. What are you guys looking forward to seeing in this next matchup now? What would you say you've seen? Because uh, as we mentioned, everything has been very cool, calm and collected. Do you think they're just going to go crazy in this one and I, just go for it? Or do you think they're going to still hold on? Or the most realistic, what I think, would probably be they're going to stay calm and collected. But yeah, I would like I, to see a all-out 
<laughs> yeah, no, I you think, just want all yeah. the guns and glory yeah. straight away. Let's Dude. go. Nah, I think I think New College Swindon, you know, they they're you know, they're two points down. I think mm. if as long as they stay, you know, calm, yeah. you know, maybe, you know, Coldy might, you know, start yeah. rushing a bit. Mm. Maybe, you know, they, they could take um, you know, a first point, maybe even a second. You know, you can't really write them off right now. Absolutely. And of course it takes a lot of it takes a lot of uh, composure. You are of course a grand final here. Um, as you mentioned earlier, we spoke about earlier, the pressure can sometimes take its toll as well, but these guys are doing incredibly well. Mm. Both teams and all the teams that have competed so far today at our grand final are doing absolutely amazing, amazing work. But here we go, straight into the next game, guys. Very exciting stuff. We're villager, seeing... Villager versus Captain Falcon. A villager versus a Captain Falcon, indeed. Mm. All right, here we go. Captain Falcon being a rush character. Yep. Yeah, so... Who knows, but you know, we've already seen Captain Falcon today, you know, both times, you know, it's, it's been, you know, it's good gameplay with uh, good skill being used by all Captain Falcon players, but you know, maybe this one can, you know, show us like a new light, kind of, you know, because we haven't really seen Captain Falcon win his rounds, but... Villager, you know, at the start, playing very well and concentrating on his ranged attacks. Mm. I'm gonna, I, I was gonna, I was gonna say a really lame joke there and say, Captain Falcon, show your moves, come on. <laughs> oh, no. As you can tell by nobody laughing, that was a lame joke, I apologize. <laughs> um, oh, oh, nice, there we go. Falcon yeah. losing his first shot. Yeah. Okay, concentrate yeah. on the match, Nims, yeah. let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Ball is spawned. Yeah, Captain Falcon, you know, failing on the recovery, but yeah. you know, Blue team is New College Swindon, as we've been seeing. As I said, you know... Falcon oh, got a final smash. Yeah, as I was saying, New Ooh. College Swindon, you know, they're trying to take it slow. Oh, oh use it and no, misses. enough. Still no final smash. <laughs> oh. oh, and Village almost falling down, managed to recover. Yeah, Captain Falcon trying to get, you know, the edge guard. You know, yeah, so New College Swindon, you know, retaking, you know, their time, you know, trying to, you know, you know trying to get that stock lead. Oh. Omar, oh. Omar, current, Omar, current, nearly, nearly punished. Mm. Near a hundred. Mm. On, still on their third stock. Yeah, Captain Falcon trying to get a good up the combo. Trying to keep him at bay. Oh, you got to watch out for that bowling ball. Oh, oh, and Falcon down their final stock. Okay, we're not done yet, folks. It looks like it. Mm. Three stocks still for our villager player. One stock left for Captain Falcon. Mm. Coldy probably looking to, you know, at least, you know, get one stock, you know. No one really wants to get three stocks here in the grand finals, you know. It, you know, it would be exciting to see, yeah. you know. You're completely right, but this might hit right here. Oh, the grabs! This right here could be their final last-ditch effort. Absolutely. To claim victory. Absolutely. Excellent play here from our villager. Utilising all those unique weapons and items that a villager does carry. You've got to watch out for that bowling ball. You've got to watch out for that gyroid. You gotta watch out for the balloons, you gotta watch out for the slingshot. Ooh. Oh, oh. oh. and Falcon go. taking nice. Villager's first stock. Really a large dish, large dish oh. effort. Absolutely, and we've got to be careful here of that tree, because if Villager does cut down that tree. Oh, final smash has spawned again. Freddy might get you with you. Oh, maybe. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, if, if Captain Falcon, Falcon getting it oh, again. If this lands, it could change the game. It very well could. Villager trying to the this could be activation. Oh, oh and oh, misses. Not enough. Still, uh, <laughs> still so disappointed, aren't you, Freddie? <laughs> One day. Don't worry, Freddie. We'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah. <laughs> Soon. You, you will see a final smash this tournament. Well, I've already seen one this tournament, but I'm, <laughs> oh, I'm not this, this match. Yeah, I want, this I want, match. I want, I want to commentate one. <laughs> you, you want, you want the final smash? It'll happen. It'll yeah, happen. I want, I want, Believe. Yeah, I want the excitement. <laughs> oh, excellent place to the Try to utilize it. Beautiful play here from our villager player. Falcon at a high percentage. Mm. This one might be match here with Falcon. Oh. oh! And Falcon is lost. The games are not done yet, folks. The games are not done yet. That was great. Two one. New College Two Swindon one. taking their first match. Yes, indeed. They are not done yet. Excellent, excellent play from our villager player there. Really utilising all the different abilities the villager has and proving to everybody who's watching at home and, of course, us hitting here, there is so much you can do with a villager. You can apply that pressure by just planting the tree, that bowling ball putting on quite the packing, quite the punch in terms mm. of taking out a player uh, and, of course, all the other abilities there, using the net to grab them and throw them off the side of the stage. What, was, what, was, what stood out for you guys in that game? Mm. 
Um, it was, you know, it was, it was, you know, the fact that, you know, there was, uh, as we were saying, you know, new coach Wyndon had to stay, you know, composed, had right. to stay, you know, to, you know, take, take their time. And they did stay, you know, they took their time. Mm. The captain Falcon, you know, was rushing a bit, you know, maybe, you know, trying to finish the game. Mm. And as you saw, you know, with, you know, the cool, calm, collective, you know, take, you know, trying to, you know, oh, punish the Falcon with, you know, the bowling ball, um, the tree. So, and, you know, they, it rewarded them with the first game, um, with their first win of the game. And, of course, TJ, for yourself, Captain Falcon uh, did his best there to he, show his he moves. He did, he really did. Um, are you, what would you say, are you, are, you, are you quite a fan of Captain Falcon or would you say I, Village is kind of your more kind of play style? I, well, I, I personally like both, but I do usually, pl I would play Fal Captain Falcon more. Right. Mm. Now, of course, with Captain Falcon, TJ, he did try to get that twice, in fact, with the smash ball, but just missed there for a little bit. And it's interesting, as you spoke about earlier, that you did think that they were going to stay cool, calm and collected and get into, of course, um, uh, this game. Um, but, of course, now let's see what happens in this next one. Mm. Uh, we're going to get straight back into the next set of 1v1s. We have a King DDD and, I believe, a Ken. Ooh. Cool. Here we go. Good lineup. <laughs> Called you with the King DDD uh, and New College Linden with our Ken player. Here we go. Oh, New College Linden landing the first combo. Mm. We getting oh, it's been you know, quite fast paced, you know. No, 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 it hasn't gone as you know quite as how the other games have been going. Noodles is getting great combos on this man. I must say. Really like, putting the damage on there. Mm. Yeah, you know, Swin, you know, Newcron Swindon, you know, quite obviously, you know, going, you know, full fossil, you know, at the start. You know, this is unseen for them. Quite nice. I see you. You've got to be careful of that. Oh. Perfect example. Noodles oh. losing a stock. That, yeah. that perfect example of King Diddy. You've got to watch out for that hammer. King Diddy does have a pretty strong recovery back onto the stage if blown off. Ooh. But of course, oh. Ken putting up the fight. I personally, this is a really even match. Yeah, no. Yeah, you know, Noodles did get punished by King DDD, but then, you know, right back at him. Been, you know, quite close so far. Excellent play here from our Ken player, trying to utilize combos. Both very strong players. Yeah, I know. Uh, I'm loving this match so far. It's been very intense. I haven't really seen it from these two schools. Oh, there we go. With the sure you can tries to provide the punish to King DD. I'd say this is more the this is more of the uh, all-out attack that the match I wanted. This is what you've been waiting for, yeah. TJ. This might be the match for you, Freddie, as well. Oh yeah, I might see the final smash. Oh, oh as, as you say that. that, it's the commentator. Oh. As you say that, oh, oh. are we going to oh. get an King activation? King DD mm. having final smash. He goes for it. Oh, he goes for it. And he oh, lands. Yes. Quite. Oh, and this is probably going to be Ken's second stock loss from this. It is. Excellent play. There we go. Excellent play. Two stock, as you just mentioned. Yes, uh, for King DDD, but a very high percentage. Mm. It's a very close match. Mm. One great hit could knock out King DDD. Yeah, Ken probably looking to stay quite low. You know, mm -hmm. low percentage. You know, you know, trying to get it quite even. So it's, you know, the more high percentage they go, the more likely King DDD is to, you know, punish them later on. Are you completely oh, as, I there it is. as you say oh, that. No. Are you recovering? Not enough, not enough. Are you recovering? Yeah. And instead switching out, sending DDD off. Ken trying to punish King DDD. Trying to get that, you know, second stop off. Oh! And oh, oh, it's it. not done yet. Perfect. It's not done yet. It's not over yet, folks. Both down to the final stock. Oh, nice parry. Get some good damage in there. Ooh. As I, uh, from what I've seen, these two players are very Ooh. combo based. Ooh. Ooh. No, it's not on. enough. They're still on. They might still hold it. Ken might punish King DDD. Ken on one hundred and twenty-four percent, going strong still, but gaining percentage. Goes to the brats. Oh. And again, it's oh. an it's down. Oh. Alrighty, guys. Very different gameplay there we saw, wasn't it? Yeah, Very indeed, different gameplay. Yeah. TJ, talk us a little bit about, as you mentioned there, you got what you wanted to see. More of like all guns blazing, just going absolutely, going for it with real powerful attacks, real heavy hitting attacks from both players. What what was what stood out for you in that game? Uh, what stood out for me is the when Ken got sent flying off to the left. Mm. 
his constant recovery whilst also trying to knock King Dedede off as far as out as he mm. went. Absolutely. And great. And excellent stuff. And of course, Freddie, King Dedede does have quite a, uh, a very powerful uh, recovery, doesn't he? With the, yeah. with the jumping back onto the stage. You saw quite a lot there. Are you, what would you say, are you, what, for, for you, what kind of stood out for you in that match? You know, it, it was like, you know, it was a battle of, you know, punishing each other, you know. One person may have, you know, made a mistake, might have rushed too quickly. Mm -hmm. And the other person was right there, just, you know, you know, reality checked them. You know, King DDD would just hammer swings. And, you know, Ken, you know, as soon as he lost his first stock, gave it right back to King DDD. You know, it was, you know, an intense battle, you know. So, you know, this tournament we want to see, you know, keep, you know, the um, viewers entertained. And that's silly. And as Freddie said, with the whole punishing, mm. that's what ended up getting King DDD the land with the Smash Ball. Mm. And you finally got your Smash yes. Ball. Was... You got a Smash Ball while commentating. It, it, it was great. <laughs> you know, you I... mentioned it and it just landed. It was like someone was controlling the game yep. and just landed it yeah. for you. you know, <laughs> you know, and it, it did show, you know, King DDD got it, mm. he punished um, Ken and he won the game. As I said, you know, it is, you know, the game changer. It is, you know, the game winner. Absolutely excellent stuff there. If I was to ask both of you guys, out of the King DDD and Ken, what, what's kind of your go-to? Would you would you be more of a King DDD player or a Ken player? Mm. What's kind of your go-to between those two fighters? My go-to is Ken. Okay. Uh, compared to King DDD. Um, yeah, I'm the opposite. Oh, wow. Uh, I, I do love, you know, heavy hitting, you know, with the hammer, you know, really, you know, punishing people. Well, we might have to see that matchup a little bit later on. Uh, <laughs> between the two of you, yeah. who knows? I, Maybe. Uh, I perfectly like the uh, more combo, quick combo base. Right. Excellent stuff. Ken. And it was quite a nice contrast, wasn't it, between both the players? Because obviously, as you mentioned, Ken is very hard hitting, but he doesn't, he, his mobility is very different to, of course, King DDD. King DDD does, of course, have the hammer, the, the projectiles that can be thrown out as well. Uh, excellent recovery back onto the stage. Lots of different things happening in that game. Mm. It'll be interesting to see where we go next with that game. Yeah. Um, but at the end of that game, of course, Coldy does take the three points there, so they will be going through to the next rounds. Um, excellent stuff from both the schools there. Um, I believe now we are going to head over to the players uh, and take a short interview with uh, my other co-host, Bowie, who is going to have a quick chat with, of course, the winning team and the losing team. Bowie, are you there? I am here. Hello, Nims. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you very, very much, obviously, to TJ and Freddie for taking us through that game. Wonderful work there. Um, yeah, I'm joined by Phil and Omer from, um, well, well, from Cool Cool, the Grammar School and New College Swindon, respectively. Um, obviously, first off, congratulations, Phil. Your, your team made it through. Um, how, how are you feeling so far? Um, feeling good? I'm um, feeling pretty good, but a bit disappointed how my match went. So against felt like it could have been a lot better. Well, yeah, I mean, it's one of those things. It is a team effort, of course. You know, you might feel that perhaps you let let your team team down a little bit, but it's not over yet. The team pulled through together. Um, is it, uh, I mean, obviously, let, let's talk about about that then, because you're feeling a bit bad. Uh, you know, it, what kind of things would you think you want to work on and try and improve yours for the, the next time you play? Because you guys are still in. You're in that winner's side. So honestly, uh, just be better with recovery. Recovery side, yeah. It's definitely a very important part of the game. Obviously, you know that thing. You can you can take as many hits as 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 you want, but if you can rec and recover, uh, that's the most important thing. So yeah, just uh, I think it's one of those things. Maybe just forget about the game that happened and move on to the next one. Um, but still, congratulations, you made it through. Um, but Omar, obviously your team didn't quite make it. It was a three-one loss. Um, there was a bit of hope there, here and there. That that game four though was a little bit, um, you know, one of those like, heartbreakers where may, maybe could have taken it. Um, you're not you're not you're not out yet though. Still that lower that lower bracket. What are the team gonna perhaps be? Th be thinking about and looking forward to when, when we get to our next game? I feel like we're just going to, you know, in terms of the next match, the next We're just going to quickly sort of just pass the mic over, um, o over there just to make sure we can have that. Sorry about that. Sorry. Um, yeah, uh, sorry. So go ahead from, from the beginning, I guess, to, yeah. to make sure you hear yeah, that. In terms sorry. of um, the winner's match, I'm yeah. hoping to you know, analyse how the two teams play and just use that to our advantage, hopefully. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, know what to pick and all that. 
in terms of the losers match we'll be going to I'm just hoping it's not over yet and we'll see ourselves through to the grand finals yeah sure I mean that's that that's the beauty of a double elimination yeah. um, so obviously you saw as well you know from the previous match uh, you know that you're going to be playing against Nor Norton College you may have managed to see a couple of, of, of their players play I'm not trying to put you in uh, in the uh, in the heat here guys but obviously you saw how they play in some of their characters um, you know uh, so you've got some stuff uh, to work on uh, we've, we've heard from some of the players about how much they kind of like want to practice and, and build that what you know can you improve as a team together going forward you know to make sure that 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 this doesn't happen again I mean you never know how, how it's gonna go but as a team um, probably just specifically try and come up with something to do in the 2v2 matches because <laughs> those are our big, biggest weak point I feel as of right now do you always have like the same pair that play or a uh, different pair we just sort of alternate between each other but sure. we're a bit unsure of which characters to play for 2v2s mm. it's um, just not something we've really practiced much for I feel Fair enough. Um, well, we, yeah, I think there's a little bit of time left. I think the, we're going to be doing that first losers game next, so I think you're going to be um, kind of preparing. Um, I'll pass the question back o um, over to Phil as well. Um, obviously, you guys made it through, so you're going to be playing up um, against Langley. You were watching them a little bit earlier. Um, anything you're kind of scared of, or, or anything you want to try and tighten up before you go in against that match? Because we, 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 we've seen them have some clutch play. Do you have some clutch of your own? As I said before, like. <laughs> I just need to improve recovery, especially against that cloud, because he was ledge trapping. He was managing to catch mm -hmm. all, every recovery option. So, just being playing careful and playing around that is yeah. probably best bet to winning. Yeah, to to mitigate your own errors and, and maximize the chance of winning. Fair enough. Well, um, gents, thank you so much indeed for joining us here and uh, for having a quick chat. You, you, obviously, you're both still in. Um, obviously, a winner side and a loser side of one. But best of luck in your up, upcoming games, and we'll hopefully be speaking to to you again soon. Cheers. I'll throw it back over to uh, to Nims to um, round out this section of the show. Thank you very much, Bowie. Um, and of course, well done to all the teams that have been playing so far. I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, all the games that we've got coming up next. We've still got lots and lots of games happening. But before I continue any further, can I get a massive round of applause for these two fantastic shoutcasters that have joined me today? Thank you, TJ and Freddie. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much, you. guys. We're going to be seeing you a little bit more later on today as well. So thank you so much for joining us this, uh, this morning, of course. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and everybody who is here, don't go anywhere. We're going to take a short break as we're going to get into some more games after this break. If you need to use the bathroom, if you need to get a quick snack, now's your chance. See you very soon. Take care.
Welcome back, everybody. We, of course, are here live in London at the Gfinity Arena for our grand final of the Digital Schoolhouse Super Smash Brothers Ultimate Team Battle 2022. Audience, are you still with us? Yeah. Oh, Excellent. Excellent stuff. They're a little bit more awake now. They, they, <laughs> they needed a bit. They needed a bit of waking up there. They've had their. They've had their drinks. They've had a bit of. They've had a bit of food. Yeah. They've recouped, and uh, I'm joined again as they have. They've. They've kind of gathered themselves after quite the, uh, the eventful first game <laughs> we had this morning. Um, welcome back, Bowie. Welcome back, Danny. Uh, how are you guys doing? Are you, have you recovered? Are you guys well? <laughs> I still haven't recovered from watching that first game, honestly. But oh, do you know what? I'll, I'll survive. <laughs> Excellent stuff. So. Let's talk a little bit about the game that just happened. Mm. Um, uh, I was, of course, uh, on the desk watching that. You guys were watching from uh, the audience there. Talk us a little bit about what stood out for you, Bowie, in that particular game. Um, in terms of the things that stood out, I mean, uh, it's, it's more the case that I, I was... I'm a fan of, 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 of Roy. I know that you're a fan of Rob. Oh, so well, when that match would come up, I was like, oh, OK, this is going to be really, really good. I, I like seeing good Roy Roy play. He's a very, very fast character, very combo-heavy, very powerful if you have him in the right frame, frame of mind. Um, so I was kind of like looking forward to that, you know, those big hits. But um, I think the, the, the Rob just played very, very well and in walled up very nicely, getting really early pressure that made it hard for the, the Roy to kind of fight upstream um, to get back into the, the game a little bit. And I think that, that those kind of games are really kind of crucial when it comes to stuff like this. You can just like stamp out a point yeah. um, and just stay in the lead and kind of hold on to that lead, which, you know. And yeah. Danny, for yourself, like there was quite a few different characters. Obviously, we saw there, yeah. um, ranging from sword fighters to someone like Villager or King DDD. What what stood out for you? What was kind of like your your favourite moment there for you? Well, I mean, I'm going to be biased as a Rob player. So <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I, I did like I love the fact that the Rob player knew what Rob's strengths were and used them massively. Like, walled them out with the gyro, with the laser, used the down smash a lot, which I love because not many people use Rob's down smash, but it's mm. such a quick, it's more of like a get off me tool rather mm, yeah. than a kill option. Mm. And not many people do that. I mean, not many people play Rob in the first place, but um, <laughs> <laughs> the people who do, don't use down smash enough as, as much as they should. Mm -hmm. Very, very true indeed. And of course, watching from her bedroom, I believe she's still with us. Alicia, are you there? Alicia. I there she am, is. I am. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Alicia, yeah, how was that for you? Games. <laughs> how was that for you? The first two two matches we saw there, quite quite the quite the show they're putting on these kids, aren't they? Yeah, a huge show. I tell you what, I was so excited to watch New College Swindon play because these are our defending champions, right? Mm -hmm. Coming Absolutely. back. Absolutely. Uh, Exactly, with their crowns. So I was really excited to see them play. I thought they put up such a great fight. But yeah, Matt with that uh, King DDD, -D -D, like more like <laughs> King Pow Pow Pow. He was just throwing the punches. It was incredible. <laughs> Well, I hope that you are feeling a lot better after watching those very entertaining games uh, and, of course, yeah. live in your bedroom. Have you made yourself cups of tea for everybody who's watching as well? Oh, it's great. I think I'm on, like, my fourth or fifth cup of tea. But I've got to be careful. Sometimes it's so tense because <laughs> all over the keyboard. So, yeah, putting them safely to the side. Brilliant stuff. Well, Alicia, we will be back with you shortly uh, throughout the... We're checking in on, of course, at Cena, you're OK. And, of course, you're going to be joining us a little bit later on uh, with some more games. Uh, but we'll catch you in a bit, Alicia. Take care of yourself. Awesome. You guys too. I'll see you in a bit. Excellent stuff. Now, Bowie, we're going to go, I believe, into the next mm. set of games. So Yeah, we're going to be dropping down to the loser's side of the bracket, or the lower mm. side of the bracket. I shouldn't call it loser's bracket. It's just an old term from the Smash scene, sorry. Um, so we're going to be going down to the lower bracket first, so we can lock in our top three. And um, so obviously we saw New College Swindon there, as, uh, as Alicia mentioned, our previous reigning champions uh, did lose their game and they've dropped down to the loser side. So they're going to be lower side, sorry, my word. <laughs> Old habits die hard. Um, so they're going to be trying, they're fighting for their lives to stay here. And Norton College, Danny, obviously your own college here have also yep. fallen down. Um, and they are looking to stay in this as well. Um, so it's going to be interesting, you know, you know, it was a very tight loss for Norton um, against it Langley. Was, so was. You, you, we, we, you would argue that, you know, they shouldn't be too shaken by that loss because it was so close. You know? I mean, no, I, I spoke to them like after the game happened and they just said it was just a series of unfortunate events. Mm. They, um, I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna like put words in their mouth and say they're confident, but um, yeah, they definitely weren't 
to shake up by anything Good. that happens. Most important thing, yeah. you know, again, the, be the beauty of a double el elimination bracket, it's not over until you lose that, that mm. second time. Mm -hmm. uh, one more chance is just the way it goes. Um, but this, this should be, be a good one, because I, I remember, obviously, we were up at the um, Manchester finals, or the Northern finals, the North finals, mm. last week, and, and Northam were just dominant. They just, they did, yeah. they did so well, that, 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 that entire thing. So to see them kind of, you know, g get their first loss, and having to like to, to fight yeah. back is going to be pretty interesting. Now I'm also, very excited for this one because I'm a massive hero fan. Because my full tag is, yeah, as we all know, is Bowie the hero. Absolutely. I don't play hero, <laughs> but here he is. And I'm um, massively excited because there's a King Diddy. Look, King Diddy. Sorry, a Diddy yeah, Kong. A King Diddy, Diddy, Diddy Kong. Kong. Um, okay. <laughs> so we're getting into our first game. Um, as we said, yeah, I believe it's Norton in uh, on in red, and then yep, yep. Um, New College Swindon in blue for our first game here on FD once again. Um, We've got uh, Omar as that hero, rocking. Obviously, not in college, pulling out the same Ike Violet combo for the 2v2. Yeah, we saw that last time. I think yep. that, kind of, that, that combination of you know double, uh, dis, the double, dis, double disjoint, excuse me, um, can just uh, play a lot of havoc. Now here's the thing: Diddy Kong is a super tricky character, really, really fast pace, and has got some crazy moves. But Hero is just the RNG king. He can do some mad stuff. Yeah. And we, we, you know, if you are not, if you're not unused to the jank, uh, you're going to see it for the first time here. There is some nuts stuff he can do. That. That um, RPG menu, um, the spell menu, is, is silly. To be fair, but, okay. to be fair, there is so much like RNG in Smash, that, but not many people. Oh, oh, oh wow, the spike! The spike. Looking that very much very... like MK Leo there is Young Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not yet. Not not pulling out enough. <laughs> not pulling out enough nares yeah. to look as MK Leo esque. Have to see. Okay, it looks like Omer oh. managed to get the uh, get the, the the final smash ball after a while though, so maybe they can utilize that to get so they get their way back in as they do have a two stock disadvantage. Currently, Harry and Nathan still safe on their three stocks. Omer, what are you going to do? Use that. Go for it. Go for it. And it connects. That was good. My good old Dragon Quest Six. What a game. <laughs> um, Blue Vegeta. Very, um, <laughs> that was a very nice confirm on the kill, but the Ike was at 130, 140, somewhere along those lines. Yeah. So it's like, it, you could have just killed anyway and it could have just used it to rack up damage, but you know. Oh, but you oh, that almost spike. for a massive edge guard here, and but oh, Harry does a really good play. Back. That's a lot of pressure. That puts Harry in, under a lot of. Wow, F Smash just meets it. That's oh. a wonderful bit of work there from Omar. <sighs> See, let's go. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I, I like Hero, no, no, dude. No, no, <laughs> like, what's a hero? But yeah, it's just the issue with. Oh, oh, oh wow! Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I love it. Translation? Oh, oh um, clean hit. Perfect. Sorry, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so obviously, Dragon Quest is a Japanese game, yeah, and whenever yeah, you get a critical hit, it says Kaishin no Ichigeki. Right. Um, critical hit, yeah. <sighs> yeah. The issue with Ike is. Like, yes, Ike has two recovery options, but they're both so linear. Oh, was asleep there? Sleeping forward, if that crit, <laughs> if that crit, that would have been insane. I love watching this character, dude. <laughs> it's so silly. By any chance, are you a fan of Hero? Yeah, maybe not. Yeah, you can never done. guess. Okay, so the, although the Diddy Kong did get hit by the um, by the uh, uh, kaboom there, so he does go down and yeah. uh, take a, a team stock. But uh, it's uh, it's three stocks to one. It's not insurmountable. Um, because of the high percentage currently on the red team, if they can just like, yeah. if they can just convert these stocks, they're going to be in a really good position. Mm -hmm. I mean, both Harry and Nathan being at kill percent, but Nathan having two stocks available, and the hero being at 85% currently, that could be kill percent with a very strong move. So it's, I'd say it's quite even currently. Uh, it looks like Ike has it. Gonna catch the hero. And it connects. Here, going down. Oh, that is perfect. And Diddy Kong has to get out of that. Be careful with Diddy Kong. <sighs> oh. Okay. That was interesting. So that, now Nathan. that's a massive turnaround. That, 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 that final smash has made it a lot safer here for Norton mm. College looking to take this one now. 2v1 with a high percent on Jackal. I do think that upbeat. Oh, missing the tech and the down air killing with the stage. Oh, wow. wow. That was. I wasn't that expecting was, that. Yeah, that, that was, was well, well, well finished. Well placed. Yeah. Excuse yeah. me. Um, I, it's been a long time since I've been able to to cast a hero game. <laughs> when it, like, there's like one competitive hero in like the European scene. Yeah. And I haven't yeah. seen I haven't seen hope in like two years. So yeah. whatever. Anyway, these guys um, because they, that was a great great game. It was looking really solid. I do feel that like um, New College and could have got that, but because the F smash fell in the hands mm. of Norton, they utilised it. They managed to uh, turn the tables and swing it in their favour yeah. very very quickly. Because that could have been so much different if they managed just managed yeah. to get those um, stocks well, off Norton. One, the one thing that surprised me was when. Um, when Nathan the Byleth let off that neutral B mm. um, just before the final smash connected down because that could have been an easy kill on both of the players. If not, Nathan could have like 
held the neutral B, and then that could have been a kill move as well, taking the game. It was, mm. I thought it was an it's kind of hard. Option, yeah, it's one of those things where it's like when you're looking at that. Do you know if your teammate's going to... Because like, the Diddy shouldn't have run under, Wilson Noble was going to get hit. Maybe a bit risky. So I think maybe just kind of covering, just just trying to cover options just in case. So yeah, may, I mean, maybe wasn't thinking about the potential of what, what would happen if the Diddy was there to try and just push away. Mm. I'm going to make sure that this KO is confirmed. Yeah. So that we have the 2v1 situation and we can play from there. Yeah. Because even if the Diddy was to, like, you know, push back and do, you know, take two stocks, they still have that one fresh one to play with. Yeah. So it's still a, a disadvantage. Yeah, it's... Um. Yeah, it's... I mean, we can always be over analytical, but at the end yeah, of the day, of course, yeah. you can't like you can't really work out what they're going to do. In no, the game. Uh, it, and you, you can sit there and you know just like hypothesize how how it's going to look in future, but you know. Mm. But we're going to be getting into our next one now. We've got Sheik Ooh. versus Kirby. Um, Sheik. So Kyle rocking the Kirby. Okay, okay so Sheik's an in, in, interesting character. Back yep. in Smash for Wii U, yep. very very powerful. Very um, powerful. And it, the same tools apply here, but just it's, it has to be utilized in a very very different way. Mm -hmm. um, Ultimate's not been as kind to Sheik, but it's still like the dominance of that the character can put out in general in neutral is so scary. Yeah. Um, and Kirby's one of those, those characters has like really hidden strength, has a lot of big hitting moves, but the lightness yeah. of Kirby makes it hard to use. See. The thing with um, Sheik is obviously combo heavy and everything, but like, if, if you can't do combos, it's like, you'll do a 10 hit combo, guess what, your enemy's at 20%. Yeah, exactly. It's, yeah. it's, like, it's not fun it's no as a Sheik player. It looks like you're de de dealing a lot of damage, but yeah. 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 Oh, but that was a good read with the forward smash there. Mm. Trying to find that air dodge and punishing the landing does go it goes through though, but a down smash comes down out smash. anyway to that double side cover. Okay, yeah, good, the dash good dash attack to outrange the down smash there. A big thing you're going to be seeing from Sheik when they try and go for the, these KOs and you know maybe to try and get mm. these, these, these bouncing fish confirmed. Because obviously it's a big KO, yeah. KO option off stage. Look, now that they're on small battlefields, they can easily do the um, drag down up pair up smash combos, mm, which yeah, yeah. just as powerful, if not more powerful, in my opinion. Um, because obviously up air being such a strong multi hit move, oh, and wonderful. the up smash there to punish yeah. the down B. The wow. dynasty coming out. So yeah, like the, the coming out oh. of the rock just allows oh. wonderful. Oh, and hitting the hitting the final smash as well. It's getting that extra damage. That's really good. Yeah, that isn't going to be a 55 KO. Fifty-five damage. That's Fifty-six percent from one. Fifty-six percent. It's mental. Mm. So yeah, that, that was kind of unlucky that the oh nice oh, back air from nice the back there. air. That was good. Yeah, coming out, out of the rock just like pops the, pops the Kirby up, which does allow what do I allow Noodles to get the sweet spot on that. So yeah. That's why that happened, just to kind of clarify. But um, yeah. See, I'm seeing um, I'm seeing Noodles throw out a lot of Needles, but not not a lot of connecting. They're, no, they're deciding to go for the aerial version of Needles, which I'm not maybe maybe that's maybe that's what you should do, Sheik, but. I think mostly it's just trying to cover space. It's trying to control a certain area. Again, the rock yeah. coming out and being being covered. Very, very and nice the forward again. smash taking stock. Mm -hmm. Held on to one stock. Sheik being at 50%, which is a very respectable percentage, honestly. Yeah. I think one thing I feel like right now is that whilst Kyle's able to kind of definitely get conversions here and there for combos, I think just flailing a little bit wildly right now, trying to just fight back a little bit too aggressively and leaving, mm. leaving their defense a little bit open um, yeah. for Noodles to, just to punish here and there. Maybe if they wanted to just slow it down yeah. a little bit. Keep doing what they're trying to do, but just hold back a bit of space yeah. to be safe. They do bring it Kirby, back, though. Taking the stock and at 11, it's basically even at this point. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah. I mean it's like nine, nine hits, hits for Sheik, but like yeah. one or two I mean. for Kirby. <laughs> you can see that actually Kirby has take, taken the lead in terms of these, these hits, and this is what I'm talking about, just needing to slow it down, make sure they're not overreaching with all of these, these, these hits, and here are these drag down. Here are the drag down up airs. The void. <sighs> down B. <sighs> see, originally I always think that down B and up B on Kirby, not being as good as they normally are, but yeah. um, but obviously the best player, JJJJ, uses them so much, so it's like, are they better than everyone thinks they are? Mm -hmm. It's one of those things like, like um, Final Cut is pretty solid, the update. Um, pretty solid, solid move in general. Like Rock you have to use, you can't really like use it to land, you need to kind of like use it as a stalling tactic more than anything else. Okay, Final Smash is back on board. Yeah, I think I think it's one of those things, who, whoever gets this and manages to utilize it will probably win this game. Yeah, but although the issue with Kirby is, Final Smash doesn't kill. Like, it's... <gasps> However, it what does connect. Did you say? We're going to find out. Bum, bam. Oh, wow. Okay. 
Hang on. <laughs> Maybe I should rephrase. Yeah. Um, what I meant to say was, <laughs> it takes... It they, need to be a really, they, need, they need to be a really high percent for it to kill, which they were. Obviously they were. Yeah, game, yeah. <laughs> so Kyle winning that one there for Norton. Yeah, not too wow. bad. Looking a little bit dire here when there was that good lead. But again, mm. when we were talking about how, how hard it is for Sheik to work to get their damage, I think that worked in, 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 the, in the Kirby's favor, where, you know, Kirby could get those one or two stray hits, you know, pull back yeah. a little bit on the aggression, get those one, two, three hits, and just rack up the percent they need, and force Sheik to have to struggle to get back into an e even footing. And it, it, really, it really was a struggle as well, because, like, the Sheik, like, just average Sheik player, just the Sheik doing so many combos and not doing as much percent. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, like, it looked so good, you know, because obviously they, so they, they, they were getting the void loops, you know, just getting that, yeah. you know, the, the drag down up air, you know, underneath the platform, just holding them there. Mm. But it's like, you do that four times, and yeah, 12, they're like... Yeah. 13% and then that's one back air from Kirby. The issue is it's like the the one drag down which really stood out to me was when they did two drag down up airs into a rising up air. Mm. But it's like the issue is in this game staling exists. So the more time you use a move at once, the less damage it's going to do. So mm. by the time you've used the third up air, it's going to do like what? 5%, 3%? Yeah, exactly. You could you could have you could have gone for a much better option in my yeah, opinion. For sure, for sure. Um, so that's currently 2-0 then to, uh, to to Norton College. Um, so we'll have to see how it goes for our uh, potentially last game. We don't know yet. Um, don't know. New Swindon obviously uh, backs against the wall here. They have to mm. fight back against a 2-0 deficit to see if they can stay in this tournament. Um, which is, you know, as I was saying, they were our last year's winners. And so to see yeah. them in the loser side is already a surprise. To see them 2-0 yeah. yeah. down is also a bit of a surprise. But we're going on to our next game. Fire Emblem. And we've got a Pikachu. And that Yoshi's back on stage from Harry. So um, Pikachu, very, very fast character. Um, got some wonderful moves. Um, and they, you know, they, they, we're going to hopefully see things like, you know, the, the Pikachu lightning loops. They're kind of mm. similar to, you know, the void um, the void loops as well, where you can just say, do, do this back air and just, like, fast forward it to try and keep them locked in that position. That break That'll shield. There. Good to drop that it. was very good to drop. Yeah, drop your shields. Look. So you use you use your one character hate to hate Diddy Kong. I'm gonna use it to say I hate Pikachu. Pikachu. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Pikachu's hard to fight. It, oh no, honestly, Pikachu's a menace. Really, really small frame, hard to hit, very fast move set as well. So you gotta be careful with uh, that. Yeah. Oh. The neutral thing. The the where did that come from? I don't know. I didn't see, but um. That was. Just maybe, maybe just land landed on the platform. So Jackal maybe. looking to get a nice recovery. Quick and simple quick attack. So that's it fades back and the then jumps on aggressively yes. for the uh, forward air. Very nice. That, that is by far my favorite, my favorite get up from ledge. Fade, it's, it's so fun. Phase back aggression, yeah. Yeah. People will start reading that I found, especially when you play Roy. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, just trying these like short hop forward airs, just trying to like get some like big hits and bounce up. But um there, there, there's no, there, there's like no major like big hit coming out from either no. team or either either player. Just loads of like small hits, not anything extended coming out. Up smash out of, out of shield, pushes I mean, Yoshi into the air, but can't punish just yet. Jackal looking for something. See, the thing with Pikachu is, um, so I say I don't like Pikachu. However, there is one thing that I really like, and that is the um, Thunderbolt confirms. Ooh. Okay. Oh yeah. wow. That was really close to the end. Oh, the up air. Get oh, there. God. That up air has a really, really fast start-up, and it's really hard it's, to see sometimes. Uh, oh, that was amazing. Just, they did the um, jab reset, but knocked him off the stage, so they were able to jump out and jump out, out of it. That was a really strong position. Look at this, this percent. They're still on their first, their first stock, 62% on Pikachu second. No, it's... There like, it oh, wow. I'm taking the stock again. But yeah, like, like I said in the, um, in the first set, Yoshi is a, like, combo-heavy character, so... You know, you can easily... <gasps> Oh dear. Ooh, this is not looking good for Yoshi. Gets knocked out, has Ooh. the air dodge left, has it only has the air dodge left, gets on stage, there's a damage Gets on stage, but he does have a his double jump back, so he will be able to make it back safely. That was that was very well played from the Yoshi there. Wow. Yeah, still oh, hanging on to this one. You know, can't be can't be too complacent though, have to keep playing their game. Mm -hmm. um, need to be careful and wait to see the adaptations that Jackal's gonna be, be gonna be making in this second one. Goes for the um, quick attack to land on stay, or on the platform rather. A little bit too far to the right, I think, with that up smash. Pressuring the shield. It goes through. You have to oh, be careful. Wow. That. You have to be careful with the Yoshi bomb. Damn. When Yoshi presses that, if he holds down, down, you can go through the platform, and not many yeah. people know that. So holding the shield, and then just got hit by that. I mean, that, to be fair, that is um, a mechanic with everything. It just drops straight down, like most. Most. Like, oh, 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 God. 
<laughs> nearly a rage quit there. Nearly a rage oh, quit. They God. knew what they did. They knew oh, what they did. Oh, that is so unlucky. Oh. There, there is a laugh in there. There's a laugh there in there. They knew the error they made. <laughs> oh, oh, man. That is... That was a shame. That was a real shame. It was a shame. So, for anyone who doesn't know, went for the quick attack. The angle was just slightly off, went past the, uh, the grabbable ledge and fell to their demise. New College Swindon drop out of the tournament and Norton College survive. They'll be moving on to losers' finals. L lower yeah. bracket finals. Don't worry. Everyone knows what you mean. I know. No, one, no one's going to attack you for saying but everyone, it's whenever, it's, whenever it gets labelled like a lower bracket, because the whole is like calling people losers is very mean. But yeah, you know, I don't know, one of those things. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I mean, it was a, it was a hard-fought game, but I think it's one of those ones where just Norton always had that extra moment, that extra yeah. bit. It was. They were managing to power through quite well. It was. Mm. See, see, like you said um, in the Yoshi versus Pikachu, it seemed like they were just trading hits back and forth. It didn't. It didn't seem too uneven. Yeah. But then when you look at the percents, mm. um, the Pikachu was at a much higher percent than the Yoshi, and you sit there thinking, well, how did that happen? Because they were just trading hits back and forth. Mm. There was no clear sign to say that Yoshi was going to win up until right at the very end. Yeah, sure. But so yeah, it's just. It's just it's interesting to see how people like take advantage of how characters deal damage and stuff. Of course, yeah. Guys, I was literally clinging on to this table for that <laughs> moment there. That was some really, really amazing play from both mm. fighters there. Both both scores were absolutely amazing. Um, wow, just wow. That's all I can really say about yeah. that game. Those guys really put up quite the uh, exciting game there. Um, audience, are you still with me? Yeah. We're still there, we're still there, just, good, just good. checking, just checking. <laughs> Can I, of course, one more time get a massive round of applause for Danny, our shout cast Danny. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you so much, guys. Um, so any, everybody who's been watching at home, if you thought that was hype, we still got more hype. There's still more things to come. We've got, of course, more Super Smash Bros. Ultimate games happening right here. Do not go anywhere. Um, and, of course, we have our guest panel, which will be happening after the break. We're going to take a short break now. We'll be back at 1.45 p.m. So if you need to go grab a snack, re replenish yourself, get yourself hyped and pumped and ready, we'll be back at 1.45. Don't go anywhere. We'll see you soon.
Welcome back, everybody. Are you guys ready for the next set of games? Well, let's ask our audience. Are we with us? <laughs> they're there, they're there. <laughs> They're still with us, guys, and I hope you are too. And of course, if you're just joining us, welcome everybody watching at home to, of course, the Digital Schoolhouse Super Smash Brothers Ultimate Team Battle Grand Final 2022. My name is Nims, and uh, I'm joined once again by two of my very special guests, two shoutcasters who, jo who joined us earlier, and they're back to help me shoutcast again. Welcome back to TJ and Freddie. <laughs> welcome back, guys. Thank you. So. TJ, um, quite, quite the interesting games we saw there as you guys took a break uh, and watched. I, I could see you guys watching in the crowd there. Mm. Talk to me a little bit about what you noticed in those games, TJ. What, what stood out for you in, the, in those particular last so, games we saw? In the first game, uh, I, can't, I can't remember what score it was, but mm. the user with the seven, uh, under name Seven. Yeah. Really, I believe, really skilled. Mm. Managed to come back with the free stock, uh, reverse free stock. Yeah, that was our cloud player, wasn't it? it yeah, was. yep. excellent stuff. And Freddie, what about yourself? So, uh, across, I guess the the entirety of all the different games uh, we've seen so far, you you've kind of been really uh, vocal about you wanted to see some smash downs, you wanted to see some yep. different things happening. Are you are you satisfied yet? Are you still looking uh, for more? What uh, what are you looking for next in these games that are coming up? No, nah, I'm looking for more. You know, I want more. I want more intensity. I want okay. more. I want more drama because you, okay. <laughs> you know we're getting we're getting later in. You know, I want to see more upsets. Want to see you know more people truly fighting <laughs> for you know the grand final. So you basically just want to be standing on your seat screaming in, with hype. That's yes. what you want, right? Yeah. Excellent stuff, good times. So we're gonna go straight into uh, the next bracket. Um, we're gonna take a look at the bracket, in fact, on the screen. Um, the two schools we've got coming up next, of course, are Coldy Grange Grammar uh, versus Langley Grammar. Battle of the Grammars, as you yeah, said. Battle of the Grammars. <laughs> we've got some fans in the crowd of the grammar schools. Excellent stuff. Um, now, we've seen both these schools uh, partake, obviously, earlier today. Mm -hmm. uh, seen some really interesting plays from both of the teams. Um, what would you guys like to see from these guys? Are you, are you looking, I mean, obviously, Freddie, you said you want more of the, the hype, the all guns blazing, let's go for it. But TJ, are you looking still for that cool, calm, collected I, yeah, vibe? I, I, I'd like a more of a tactical matchup. Okay, more of a tactical matchup, say, okay. Say, like a, say one of them goes villager, for example. More right. Of a perfect placement. Perfect placement. So that's, that's a good way to look at it. You want to see bowling balls, you want to see fishnets, trees. bug nets, trees. You want to see all of that stuff coming through. Um, so I believe our players are just getting set up and ready to go. Um, and just to remind everybody at home who's watching, of course, same format as we've been doing before. We, of course, are going to see some team battles. We're going to see some smash down. And if need be, we're going to get to see some squad strike. Mm. Okay, and for everybody watching at home, Langley is, of course, in red, and Caldy is in our team blue. We have got a Roy, we've got an inkling, Captain Falcon and Falco. It was a great start. We've, we've seen both schools use these characters before, you know, we know they, they are quite experienced, you know, skilled, you know, this might be a cl quite close matchup, you know, starting us off. Two very strong teams. Yep. And as you mentioned before, TJ, our seven player is there using a Roy this time. Mm -hmm. uh, still Swordsman, yep. but taking on a Roy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's a bit different, you know. It, you know, obviously, you know, seven might, you know, he, it, people have seen him play. Mm. People know he, he's a strong contender right mm. now. Maybe, you know, he's trying to, you know, change it up, you know, make it so, you know, people don't really, you know, know what he's going to do, know what he's, you know. Cause we've seen him play Clouds, you know, multiple games now. Absolutely. An interesting mix, let's say Captain Falcon, very high percentage. His a team player does lose a stock Ooh. though. Curse of the commentator there. Look, yeah. I made him lose a stock again, guys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> me. Both down to two stock. Two stock indeed. Mm. Three stock for both of our red players at the moment. Yeah, both sitting completely. Oh, as I say that, it says it goes up to 100%. <laughs> <laughs> oh, final smash. Oh, Freddie, are you going to get that smash down again? Uh, I do you know what? These two teams, you know, they, they, they've been even trying to be hitting their oh. smashes. Oh, the connection. Uh, Oh, beautiful. Yeah, see, as I was saying, you know, they, they, they're good with their you know, final flash. They can, <laughs> they can hit them, and, it, and as you can see, they punished um, you know, Inkling right here with oh. losing their first um, stock. I'm so, assuming these two teams satisfy your need yeah. for smash. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, both, you know I, I've, I've been sat in the crowd watching, you know, seeing all these, you know, final smashes. I'm thinking, why can't oh. that, 
Why can't I be there? <laughs> Both Falco and Falco, Captain Falcon, down to their final stock. Mm. The Falcos and the Falcons, both yep. holding on for the one stock, as you just mentioned. Three stocks still for our Roy player, AK7. And Ink, uh, Inkly, yeah. Inkly yep. on down to two stocks. Mm. Yeah, quite. Uh, I wouldn't say one-sided, but at the same time, you know, Roy truly, you know, showing off his skill. Mm -hmm. Very good player, as I Roy does have, Roy does have high percentage on. Oh, oh, as I good say that. Me. Wow, oh, the free start. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that truly was a game. <laughs> Wowzers, OK. <laughs> that was... Uh, that was a quick match. That was out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's quite good, you know. We're seeing like Langley. They, um, I'm pretty sure, yeah, Langley are the ones who, you know, took that round. They, you know, they are quite a strong school. They have got, they've got good, high competitive players, and it's clearly showing here with the free stock with the Roy. Mm. Um, yeah, so it's been good. It's, it's been very good. Uh, that was a very good match. Yeah. Very yes. Yeah, Both very good teams. Yeah. Well, clearly Langley coming out on top. Yeah, and you know, it, it was. It, Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, as I said, you know, I wanted you know high action. You know, it's late, in, it's more later into the tournament. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got two of the you know best schools in this whole tournament. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to see good high level gameplay, and it was showed right there. A uh, quick question: what, what are both of your uh, favourite points about the match last, mm. last match? I, I'm I'm quite I'm quite taken by the uh, the seven player. Mm. Uh, he's got some tricks up his sleeve, absolutely. Um, be interesting to see if we see the cloud come back. Oh. Um, we've got, so we can see that there's quite a versatile play there mm. um, from seven. Um, but also the mix-ups in terms of obviously utilizing the final smash. Yep. Three stock there for our seven player. You managed to swipe it clean there and get through to the next round. What about you, Freddie? Uh, no, it's, you know, you saw, as, as you said, you know, you got the final smash, you know, mm. everyone, you know, truly, you know, fighting for the game, you know, it's the mm. first point. It's the point that, you know, because, you know, as I said, you know, this is, you know, the kind of like winner's bracket at the moment. Yeah. And it's like, you know, they're trying to, you know, size each other up. They're trying to see who is the better school at mm. the moment, you know. They could, you know, whoever wins this um, bracket, you know, they might not even go on to win. But at this point in time, these are the two best schools. So, you know, you're trying to think who is the best of the two. Absolutely. So we're going to move swiftly on, of course, mm. to the next set of games now. The third player, of course, each of each of the school teams uh, will jump in now as we go into some Smashdown, a 1v1 game. We're seeing a King DDD come right back with a golden Captain Falcon. Mm. We've, you know, we've seen this King DDD <laughs> play, you know, we've, we've seen... We've seen both characters. We've seen yeah. both characters indeed. Let's see in the, the mix-ups here. That's right, yeah, what? Come on! Yeah. Yeah. Alrighty, straight away in there. Both <laughs> trying as very much to give the punish. Both playing it safe, bro. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's, quite, it's, quite, it's quite high velocity at the start here. You know, as, as we've already seen, King DDD, he may look like he might be losing, but then he just comes straight back with those heavy hits, mm -hmm. sending his um, players off. But, you know, Captain, we've seen this Captain Falcon. He also can get the punishes off. Very, very true, very true. Mm, A yeah. very equal sort of percentage bracket at the moment, 56, 63. Both of the players playing it very cautious, as you both just mentioned. Mm. Good yeah. recovery here from King DDD. I think he gets sent off and manages to yeah. recover again. Yeah. You've got to watch out for that recovery. He has an excellent recovery back onto stage. Mm. Good grabs there. Oh, yeah. Smash, smash ball. ball straight away available. Captain Falcon tries to grab it. Falcon oh, kicks oh. it off. <laughs> it's back again. You know, it, it, yeah. Oh. Oh. oh, and he gets the final smash. He gets the smash that elbow. and sends him off. That's right, good, that's good. No, yeah. Oh, oh. use it and he and lands. And it connects. Nice. This is true, you know, Captain Falcon trying to get that early lead, you know, trying to. No, he, he's, he's gotten um, King DDD to a similar percentage. So if he can manage to get a second stock off without losing a stock, he truly, you know, even, kind of like, not even, so he's kind of like, you know, puts him ahead mm -hmm. of, of his um, opponent here. It's true. Absolutely. Applying that pressure is, of course, very, very important here for both of the players. Captain Falcon now at the 100% mark. Still does have that three stock, oh. though. Oh, Falcon... Yeah, King DDD, you know, Falcon trying recovery. to get, you know, that heavy hits in. And, you know, one, one hammer swing. It, you know, Captain Falcon's off, but at the it's same time, grab again. Yeah, he, he is getting those grabs off, those you know really high you know attack dealing grabs that you know are sending King DDD quite far. DDD, you know, applying more pressure whilst also taking some high damage. Oh, oh there beautiful we go. play there with the up smash oh, there from King DDD. Two stock apiece, but of course King DDD at a high percentage here. 
This could change. Yeah, one one grab from Captain Falcon could send them off. Absolutely. Only, only one stop, but at the same time, you know, King DDD is, you know, quite, you know, good. You know, he's trying to get him quite high chances, you know, trying to like line him up ready for that um, heavy smash. DDD uh, applying that going. pressure, throwing out the spike. Falcon recovering each time. Mm. Boys very old. Oh, and that grab. It is pretty the close here with the... Oh, Ooh. look at that. Excellent play there. Oh, a beautiful play. It's still it's very close pressure. Match. Good, good pressure here from King Diddy. Smash ball available. This one could actually, you know, change the whole course of the game. If King Diddy... Smash. Yeah, if King Diddy can get this, he, you know, his, his chances may look a bit better. Oh, oh the activation. Are we going to connect? If this connects... Oh, oh no. If he did connect that, King DDD would be on his final start. That would have been, you know, that would have been clutch. Oh, oh there it is. Oh, as I say that. Off the Falcon side, down brilliant stop. play. Oh, oh. On their final it's stop. one apiece, guys. One apiece. The trade, though, that is some high-level gameplay there. We're both, you know, you know, resetting to zero percent. Really close match here. Mm. you got to watch out for that knee. You know, well, I think, you know, one Captain Falcon grab could yeah. really change the whole game here. Mm -hmm. Very true, very true. Yeah, but King DDD still holding on. Oh, there's the grab. Good DDD. recovery from Captain Falcon. DDD with rather high percentage compared to Falcon. Yeah, both good trying. Grabs with yeah. the combo. Both trying their hardest. Try supply. Oh, and again, grab. Oh. again. Oh. Nice combo. It truly is anyone's game here. Nothing more. If Captain Falcon can get oh. the recovery. Excellent recovery from both of our players here. DDD hitting the 100% mark mm. with Falcon closely behind at 96%. Uh, oh, I say that. Is it enough? Nearly. Keeps the pressure. Captain fucking tennis. Oh, yes. And it's game. Beautiful, beautiful play. <sighs> All right. Wow. That was intense. That was, that was, that was really good. That very, was close. very close. Very close indeed. Very close. Mm. So, that's one apiece for both teams now, ladies. Mm. Both players. Really putting in the work there, as we yep. can see, excellent play from both teams coming through with those really interesting plays in terms of lots of edge guarding, lots of recovery mm. on the sides of the stage. What stood out for you, TJ? Well, what stood out for me was the constant knockoff, then very clean recoveries, mm. I must say, mm. but also very near, very close. If he was a second later, for example, mm. he would have lost that stock. Mm. Uh, Freddie, we saw quite a few uh, attempts of final smashes yeah. there. I, I hope you were happy with those. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you uh, got some more there. More what, what, else, what, else, what else can you tell us? What else did you notice in that game about both of our players? You know, it was, you know, a very close match. You know, both, you know, it, it, it looked like anyone's game. You know, mm. one minute, you know, King DDD might have been ahead. Next minute, you know, Captain Falcon's ahead. Mm. It really, you know, it, right up until that final hit by King DDD, it was anyone's game there. You know, it is, you know, as I've been saying previously, it is that, you know, it's that final kind of like skill gap. You know, we want these kind of matches mm. in this tournament. Mm. And it, it shows, you know, it's, it's, it's a high velocity, high, you know, everyone's trying their hardest, you know, it is like, intense mm. it's, it's what we want <laughs> absolutely and a really 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 excellent play from both of the schools there i believe our audience were getting a lot more involved that round um, we, we, some, there was battle of the grammar scores as we yeah. said earlier so Very it's really exciting. really interesting to see what we're going to see next mm -hmm. um what do you think do you think we're going to see a cloud player return are we oh. going to see more of the captain falcon what do you think tj my my thought is if one team wins here and it, and it goes on to squad, uh, squad battle. Yeah. The, uh, squad, limit. squad strike, yeah, yeah, yeah. I reckon that's when the cloud player will make his return. Right, yeah. okay, so like a secret weapon. Yeah, well, yeah right. Like another we've, reverse we've seen like a right, right. Okay, so we're going to get straight into the next uh, match of our Smashdown games. Um, Inkling versus a Sheik. So... Fine. Interesting, man. Are we oh. fans of either Sheik or Inkling? What have we? What have I, we I've seen. I've been. I've been keeping an eye on that Inkling. Yeah. Um, um, I'm a fan of Inkling myself. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've been seeing that Inkling. You know, it, it's quite strong. You know, when they were playing. Um, was it? Oh, it was Clefairy, wasn't it? Yes. Yes. Um, Jigglypuff. 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 Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. When we when I was watching um play Jigglypuff, yeah, it was quite close. Yeah. You know, quite skilled gameplay. You know, mm. it clearly shows that um Rhythm here has the you know experience mm. with Inkling, and it, and it shows. But of course, she oh. you know we can't Last really. Spawns. Yep. Nice. We can't really you know put down the sheet. They are also you know they, yeah. they, they we've been shown to be quite a strong player. So. 
Ooh, grabs the smash ball. Ooh, excellent oh, recovery, but the killer whale is put out. Oh, that is, oh, that is, is that enough? Uh, does it is. Of damage and lose. Yeah. Way to lose a snore. Excellent play from my Inkling yeah. player. As I was saying, Rhythm, you know, he's skilled with Inkling, and it just showed right there. He, he, you know, he kept calm. He placed down his final smash, his final, final smash in that perfect position to, you know, take the Cheek's first stock. Absolutely. And of course, with both of these fighters, we've got to be very careful because they are both very fast players, very mm. quick battle players for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. But Sheik does have that very ninja-like speed. Mm. Um, inkling, of course, you've got to be careful of the actual weapon itself. Um, applying the ink to the other opponent, of course, causes double the damage, uh, depending on how much ink you cover upon, upon your opponent. Mm. And of course, those splat bombs, very, very lethal. Uh, from the Inkling player there. Excellent oh. use of the Ink Brush. Oh. Very nice side smash Sheik there. down to their final stop. Yeah, you know, oh. it's, it's, yeah, Inkling, you, you know, they, it's just the skill to, you know, you know, have that composure. He mm. always, you know, he's put down, like, you know, perfect Ink Bombs, you know, get that double damage. He's, you know, he's using his roller to stun the Sheik. It is showing that, you know, this is quite a skilled player here. I agree. I, from what I think personally, yeah. is that the inkling is trying to get a comfortable position, yeah. which he's got now. Yeah. So, although rather high percentage, he's currently two stocks above. Yeah. Absolutely. Excellent observation there. Very high percentage, even for the inkling player, but however, still has three stock. Good roller use there. Blocking Sheik from getting out. Sheik with a high percentage. It, you know, we might even see a free stock here from this. Um, this could player. be Possibly. potentially, yeah, absolutely, Freddy. Ooh. Oh, with the oh. recovery! Oh, Very no. nice, Very both cool. players. We, yeah, we've already seen previously this inkling. He does know, you know he can good recoveries. Yes. Um, you know, it, it's that roller roll again. Mm. Yeah, that roller has been really effective this mm. whole game. Oh, smash ball storms, and she goes for it. She really needs this to stay in the game. She gets his final smash. Goes for it. And oh. fails. Oh, beautiful play. We have a free beautiful play. Yeah. Very nice. Very, very, very nice. Yeah. Very, very nice for Langley Grammar there. Yeah. That, oh, that inkling, you know, showing skill, you know, like composure, you know, even in the face of, you know, final smash, mm. you know, that could change, you know, maybe give Sheik a bit more hope, you know, still yeah. stayed, you know, calm, got that, you know, final hit and, you know, took the game, um, took the win. Really gave what, uh, although Final Smash, Freddy said, Final Smash really does apply pressure to the player. Mm. Remaining calm and going for the perfect moment mm. underneath mm. and to not get hit by the final smash in case he decides to use it. And it's like you said earlier, TJ, isn't it? That, that whole technique of playing very cool, calm and collected, you know, uh, Inkling, really good observation there, as you, as you mentioned in that game, that the Inkling actually took out a good two stock from Sheik there, holding onto the three stock, even at a high percentage, and then just kind of played it by ear from there and really just took their time to really apply even more pressure. So Sheik literally was on eggshells through that entire game. Yeah. So uh, excellent play from both of the uh, fighters in that game. 2-1 currently to our Langley grammar. Um, Coldy is not out of the match yet. It's not out of not the match yet. yet. They can yep. still bring it back. Will we see a squad strike? Ooh, see, maybe. We're seeing clouds by oh, 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 gosh. There we go. We've gone straight into the next game. Those guys are ready. Terry for the first time today, ladies and gents. Cloud making the return. Yeah. Really did not expect you know, that yet. Really yes, clearly, indeed. Yeah, clearly Langley are going for the win here, you know, showing off their final trump card with um, Cloud. You know, Landing the parries. Oh! oh. 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 She right. dead. Cheek down the oh, stalks hey. right off the bat. Beautiful. Yeah. And then with the... Yeah, this, this cloud, he, he is, you know... This yeah. cloud is... Uh, I, you know, not to, you know, sound, you know, <laughs> to, you know not to, you know, over, uh, overestimate or anything, but at, 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 from my point of view, this cloud seems to be, you know, the best player in the tournament so far, you know. He, you know, he's come back from really desperate situation. He's shown that he's got the skill, the composure, you know, win his, um, you know, school. All these, um, you know, get all these games. Oh, oh. You know, taking in. Well, with a smash oh, and no, misses it. A little bit too early. Even then. Yeah, still applying that pressure. Might even, you know, before losing that first round, might even take the second shot here. Good recovery for Terry. The Cloud's really going all out here. Yeah, Terry's still holding on. Oh, getting Perfect the shield. And showing no mercy. Very nice. Oh, nice, yeah. Very good stuff, good stuff. Perry sitting at a high percentage, Lord. Mm. Does have the go. Depends, can he land it just before losing his uh, second start? 
Cloud still applying that pressure. Tries to get the limit break. Oh, he gets it. Oh, Terry does his final stock. And yeah, Cloud sitting comfortably with two stocks. Very comfortably. He's got to watch out for those combos. Terry, nice. Oh, nice Ooh, combo break. there. If Cloud lands this, he probably has the game in the bag. No. Yeah. Ooh, could the Terry could Terry make a nice comeback? Yeah, who knows? It's a very high percentage at the moment for Terry, but is of course on one stock. Perfect shields. Oh, taking some big, both very close in terms of percentage. Cloud nearly getting that combo off. Oh, it's a smash ball. This could be an advantage for Terry. Terry going for the smash ball. Oh, he, he did. Does get it. it. He just needs a connection. Use it and oh, he yes. Okay, okay. Nice. Takes the stock away from Cloud, but of course, is this enough? As no, it is. Cloud, of course, is down to a 0% with one stock. Terry at the 98% mark. If, yeah, if Terry, you know, stays calm, you know, gets, to, as we've already seen, you know, gets those, you know, perfect um, shields, he might actually win this. Terry has, has the go got... available. You know, I'd love to see Terry win this because then, you know, these two schools can continue to have <laughs> high intensity battles here. Oh, oh Terry in high Tries percentage. to charge up the limit break. Terry here trying to you know, get a combo off, but Cloud still applying that pressure. Oh, Terry oh, still in. Limit break available. Ooh. Good block. Oh, oh. And it is. Oh, oh. And, and Terry's out. Finally, <laughs> very good match. Oh boy, it's that lucky number seven, isn't it, it boys? It really that is. Lucky it really number is. Seven. Very skilled, especially with Cloud. Lucky number seven. Right, okay. So, <laughs> where do we begin with that match? We saw some real, real skillful play there from our Terry player. Mm, yep. Talk us through, TJ, what you noticed in that game. What, I mean, we were literally on edge. We, we didn't know where it was going to go. What, what, what did you see in that game? So, from what I saw, mm. the Terry player really wanted to land a combo so he could use gold mm. when he had it available. But clearly, Cloud player just... <laughs> no, not allowing him. Continue <laughs> yeah. applying the pressure. That's it. And of course, Freddie, as we saw there from our cloud player, our lucky number. I'm going to keep calling him lucky number seven now, because mm. um, <laughs> you you just saw the constant uh, uh, pressure being applied yeah. at the sides of the stage, not even allowing Terry a chance to even mm. have a moment to think. And as soon as he would get back on, he'd have, of course, the limit break charged up, ready and rearing to go for our Terry player. Yep. What did what, what what excited you about that game? Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot to go with there, you know. <laughs> you know, we've got, you know, the cloud, constant pressure, mm. you know, not giving Terry that chance, you know, you know, get good combos off, you know. It looked like, you know, maybe Terry might, you know, finally get that combo, but then no, Cloud comes back, you know, gets the counter. But even then, Terry, you know, he got those perfect shields, you know, even, you know, during, you know, when he was on his final stock, you know, and you know, Cloud was, you know, still like maybe like two or three stocks ahead. He still, you know, got those perfect shields off, showing, you know, even then he was still, you know, composed. He was still fighting, you know, made for a chance to, you know, win that round. It was very competitive. Excellent stuff. And I believe now we're going to go and have a quick chat uh, with, of course, both of the scores. I believe Bowie is uh, taking a, a good conversation with them. Bowie, where are you? I am right here, Nims. <laughs> Hello. Uh, a, another excellent game there. And uh, I'm going to be having a chat with two of, uh, of uh, these wonderful players who had a pretty intense game. Um, first off, I'm going to come to you, Charlie. Um, obviously, uh, commiserations. Um, you're not out of the tournament yet, but dropping down to that lower side. Um, had a pretty nice you know, first game, winning out uh, pretty strongly over, or you, over your, your first opponents, but met your match here, you think. Um, how, did that, how did that game go? And where do you think you're kind of like um, your Weak, your weaker spots were. Why do you think that this played out this way? Um, I reckon our downfall was probably me being a bit too aggressive and hitting Phil a bit too much mm -hmm. with my own moves. Yeah. I think that's yeah. the danger of doubles, isn't it? Where sometimes you can, yeah. you know, you're trying as be your, be your best to kind of get a bit aggressive, but then, you know, you do have a teammate to play play around there. Um, you know, it's kind of like a bit annoying to lose that way, but uh, it was 3-1, it was I, I, I believe. So, so, there, was, so the, there was some fight there. Um, the game you won, you know, I believe, I'm trying to remember who, who was playing that one now. Yeah, that was um, Matthew. Who, was it? Matthew. It was Matthew. Um, you know, 
obviously he you know put in that in that 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 good effort. Um, one of those players that, that that maybe you want to try and like put out in that kind of like early point there to try and get some games back in future. Um. To know really, to be honest. <laughs> no, that's fair, you know. I, I guess it's one of those things that it's all about like choosing who you want to go first, I guess, to try and like play your strongest players before it's too late, you know. Um, never mind. I guess it's a bit of a weird, weird question. I apologize. Well, you've got one more game that I think you're going to be playing, I think, we'll say Norton next. I think you, yeah. you played them last week. Yeah, we I think, played them in the semis. At, yeah, in the Manchester finals. So, uh, have you, I guess, you've taken some information from last week and you're ready for this? Yeah, for, we for the match? tried to get some preparation done. Mm hmm. Was there, was there anything from last week you remember that you want to try and like nail on? Uh, yeah, we just remembered about how they did a real good job of keeping stage control mm -hmm. and covering a lot of it. Yeah. And that was our try and plan to try and work around that. Excellent. Perfect. Well, yeah, obviously, I think we're going to be seeing that shortly. So, uh, you know, buckle up and get ready. Before that, though, I do want to bring, a, bring the conversation over to you, Sammy, um, from Langley. They're playing incredibly well today. Um, obviously, Sammy, you're our cloud player uh, who did that incredible... Um, that reverse 3-0 in the squad strike in your first match and then had a really, really exciting game here. Um, so talk to us about this cloud of yours. How, how long have you been with the character and, and, and you're feeling yourself today, I think. Uh, yeah, I'd say I'm playing pretty well today. It's definitely a good day for me. So I started playing in like December 2019. Yep. Played cloud since like I picked up the game basically. And he's essentially like my favorite character to play in the game. I feel like we definitely played better in the game that we just played yeah. because we picked up our momentum, I feel. Sure. With the first game. We were still warming up, but now I reckon we've got the momentum to keep it going. So kind of creating a campaign over the course of, of the day. Obviously, the first game, sometimes, as you say, a bit cold, but, you know, definitely feeling a lot stronger now. Um, are you feeling confident? Because you're, you're sitting right now in, well, in grand finals, and you're know, going to be waiting for the, uh, the winner of, of the losers' finals. Um, and then, obviously, you know, you've got, you got two sets to play, 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 play with here. Are you looking to maybe think about changing something up for, um, for the, the grand final first set or maybe experiment or you're just going to go guns blazing and just go with what you know? I'd say we're just going to try and close it out. That's the main thing close we're going for. Excellent. Nice and dominant the way we want to see it. But uh, as I said, you've been playing fantastically uh, to today. Probably some, like, some big highlights from, uh, some, from today's set. So uh, keep going. Uh, best of luck in those grand, grand finals. You're going to be having your, um, well, you're going to be watching the two teams, one of which will be joining you. So take those notes. Um, before, before we um, head, uh, head, head, head to break, however, oh, first off, thank you very much, Joint Gents, for joining me. Uh, before we head, head to break, just want, just want to remind er everyone that we are going to be having a little bit later in, in the day after, after the the next set, um, we're going to be having a panel talking about unexpected uh, jobs and careers in in video games. Um, so I would like um, to remind you that if, you, if you're at, at, at home watching and you want to get involved and want to ask some questions, go to Twitter at dig dig schoolhouse and use the hashtag dm dsh. Um, eSports. If you use that hashtag and, and at Dig Schoolhouse, um, for any questions for those panel members, we'll be able to ask those questions live on air. Right then, now it's time for a break. We're going to just, 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 just take three-ish minutes, and when we come back, we'll have set five ready to go. That, lo that loses finals to see who will be joining Langley in the Grands. Don't go anywhere. We'll see you soon. <laughs>
Welcome back, everybody. I hope you guys who've been here so far have been enjoying the show. If, of course, you've just arrived, well, fear not, because we have so much more hype and so much more Super Smash Brothers Ultimate to show to you guys. Just checking in on the audience, though. Are you still with us? <laughs> Wolf is definitely still with us, as you mm. can see there, ladies and gentlemen. Excellent stuff. Um, <laughs> so I'm joined once again by... Bowie, hello. <laughs> Bowie. Guy, yeah, Bowie. <laughs> Hi, Bowie. And, and of course, Bowie. <laughs> and Danny, of course, shout casting with us today. Welcome back, guys. So, uh, the games we just had were uh, lucky number seven, I've been saying, yeah. Since, yeah. The, since the break. Yeah, that well, was, was quite a game, wasn't it? Nice to have, have a chat with Sammy afterwards, because he, he performed brilliantly a little bit earlier during the day as well. And then, and then to, put, to, put, to put out another stunning performance just mm. there, really, really good. Good stuff, yeah. and I think he was very, very right when he was saying that you, you take a bit of time to warm up and get into these, and when you're in them, it just mm. you can sometimes play some of your best Smash when you're just kind of like feeling yourself, really like confident in your play, knowing how well, well you're doing, and just like warm hands, warm hands, <laughs> really, really good. Um, so they're they're currently standing in grand finals, and we need to see who's going to be joining them. So uh, we get we have uh, Cooldy versus Norton mm. are the two that are left. Now, as we mentioned earlier, these two teams played last week. They did, and I yes. believe Norton last week were the victors. We have to say, yeah, so we can't shy away from that from that fact. Um, so, Cooldy looking for uh, revenge. Yeah, it, sh it should be interesting to see. Um... Just yeah, we're looking for revenge. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's what yeah. we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not. I'm not looking for revenge. Never. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's um. <laughs> but yeah. Um. I mean, it, w it was quite close um, during the semis, so yeah. it. It should be interesting to see how it plays out mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. yeah. Didn't you have a, a, a little thing you wanted to do quickly before we jump, jump in, in, yes. in into this? Danny has <laughs> yes. a little surprise for, for everyone. Yes, here. there was. So, um, so today, uh, a member on Norton's team, Nathan, it is his birthday today. So, um, <laughs> so um, on three, if we could all wish Nathan a happy birthday, um, <laughs> that'd be great. So, yeah. one, two, three, happy, happy birthday! birthday. <laughs> <laughs> No, we all hate me for that. But yeah, yeah, no, he's, he's very stoic. He's like, I can't believe he's just done that or like, live on stream in front of he's, everyone. He's definitely going to be seeking revenge later yeah. for sure as well. <laughs> Different kind of revenge, but yeah. Um, so there we go. Maybe you know, I hope, hopefully, Caldy, don't um, you know. Don't be kind to him for his birthday, you know, see it all home, but we'll have to see. Anyway, here's how the bracket looks, as I mentioned. Right now, Langley Grammar School sitting in that grand final, waiting for the winner of the lower side bracket. Um, Norton College or Cooldy Gra um, Grange Grammar will be joining them in that grand final. So then, in order for Norton or Cooldy to take this entire tournament, they would have to take two sets against Langley. Because mm -hmm. Langley is still in winner's side, they haven't lost yet. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. unfair to say, oh, no, 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 you only lose, lose once because you, you were in the grand finals. No. Norton and Cooldy need to win their match and then beat Langley twice if they want to try and win this tournament. Yeah, the thing, the thing about being in the lower sets is you have to win two more sets than you would in the winners to yeah, actually yeah. Yeah. win the game. Yeah, or a, 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 an upper side bracket win is worth yeah. two of a loser, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's so it's, uh, frustrating. It's, that's why like the lower bracket runs are so exciting when you see them happen yeah. in these kind of events, because you're going to be knackered and tired. But um, yeah. that said, we are ready to crack on with our first game. Look at that. Brilliant. Let's get this going. Let's get some hype in the crowd. This is your Woo! first, uh, well, your second to last bracket match. Once again, we have the Beleth and the uh, Ike from Norton. Um, and then uh, Kuldi with that Palatina and Volko. Of course. Back on to, uh, it seems like Norton keep, uh, whenever they have the, have the uh, stage choice, keep going to this stage um, for their opener. Um, I like why, I think the more li the more linear nature of like Ike's recovery yeah, is quite kind of helpful. And also yeah. it makes it easier for Beleth to get, to get back as well. Yeah, yeah. The, like, the staging is just, it fits both of their strength perfectly. But, um, but then again, um, Falco's recovery on this map is also extremely good. And then um, Palatine is just good overall in terms of recovery, so it's yeah. just... So uh, like, it's too strong. One thing, one, one thing I'm liking from the Northern player and the Northern, the Norton players, <laughs> <laughs> now from the North as well, from the Norton players, um, is that there's a lot of coverage of like potential from their opponent, uh, from their teammates. So like earlier, Nathan managed to get an, 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 up, an, an up tilt, and Harry was just waiting there to punish with the back air when the opponent got knocked in, in, into the air. That awareness and space and spatial um, awareness and also communication is probably what's making them like you know be able to rack up the good percent, but right now, Cooldy just staying with them, like, oh, hit for hit, as Nathan takes first Falco. Up. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's like we've been saying, it's, um, they're both just, their team synergy is just, like, phenomenal, and they have been practicing quite a lot, so it's just, 
yeah, it's just, it's bound to show eventually. And I'm about to show it now, honestly. Yeah, I, I'm excited <laughs> to see, you know, you know what, what Cooley have done to kind of change up their um, their, their game plan. Obviously, yeah. as we said, you know, Nor Nor Norton won out against them in the uh, finals, uh, in the Northern qualifiers. Um, so, uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, I'm excited to see if they can make that change. I mean, they have already made a clear change because uh, back in the semis, they didn't play um, Parten or Falco against us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah, they, they're clearly showing they're willing to adapt to yeah. do whatever it takes. Absolutely. You need to make sure that there, there are those, those changes covered, those bases. Interesting runoff for oh, there, the gets the stop there. Matt getting a lovely, lovely KO. Yeah, they didn't use this seat just trying to push the lengths that they, that they can go to cover. Falco yeah. off stage, what's going to be the option? Nathan goes for a, a jump up, tries to get the down air swipe, but doesn't get that one. Um, Falco does recover. I've noticed how um, quite a lot of the um, 2v2 matches um, that have been played so far, mm -hmm. inst instead of just being an all-out brawl, that like both teams have kind of turned it into two separate 1v1s. Yeah, that was, oh, that was kind that of scary. That was almost like the side B spike there. That yeah. was scary. <gasps> that, that was, was disgusting. <laughs> I didn't was know that, you could that, do that. Was that up B into final up B smash? Up into final yeah, smash, yeah. Is, I didn't know, that's an interaction I never see. <laughs> 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 that was <laughs> ridiculous. That was great. Oh, man. You know, you know, I'm from Norton, and I haven't seen him do that yet, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. even, brand new stuff even for you to see. Exactly. But, uh, <laughs> looking pretty good so far for them. As you say, there's the, they have a two-stock lead, as well as that Palatina is high percentage, so Palatina has got to be very careful with that stock. You want oh, the yeah. Falco to take point and have um, you know Palatina be the support. You don't really want to see the, the Palatina in the aggressive position. <gasps> that said, the wings oh, of, the um, of light forward smash through, really but not enough. There goes the Palatina, she's down. It's it's just Falco versus four stocks. I wonder if they'll go for something stupid, as uh, most uh, people uh, usually do at this point. At this point, that's the only option you really have, isn't it? Something yeah. dumb that the opponent aren't going to expect. <laughs> like, I don't know, maybe an I could be off stage or something. That'd be fun to see. I always, I always love the um, suicide up bees killing before the, uh, the opponent before yourself. When you, have, when you have the stocks to play with, it's always a little yeah. bit safe. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're just playing with their food right now. There it is. There, and just like that, that, that's the forward, that, forward And there. that does take game one. Yep. <sighs> Norton looking pretty strong. Four stocks that are left on, on the table for them. Cool, they have to, yeah. you know, there was a lot of, as you say, there's a lot, a lot of a an adaptation there that, that came through, but the, 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 uh, the strength was still on the side of Norton. Feeling pretty good. They had a bit of a rough start mm. in this, uh, this, this bracket, but strong since yeah um one one thing i one thing i um at least i think i noticed i'm not, I'm not gonna say i fully noticed it but i think i okay. noticed um the ddd player was playing in the 2v2 so um last time when we were in the semis yeah. the ddd was destroying um kyle our donkey kong but now they've switched it up so now they won't have to run into each other and hopefully maybe they can pull out an extra point maybe mm. yeah just potentially see if they can just catch another one of the players off guard. You know, yeah. you, we know this player is strong in this particular area, so let's you know focus on that and try and you know um, bring it home, if you will. Yeah. But uh, yeah, okay. uh, we'll have to see how how it all looks. Um, it looks like characters I can see from this angle at least. Uh, interesting. We're going to be seeing oh, the uh, the Kirby back out from Norton side. Um, I'm looking forward to this. <laughs> you like There's Rob? You said you're a big Rob. fan. I love Rob. It's yes, it's going to be a fun game. Okay, so uh, game two. <laughs> Let's see if Norton can get that that push. B 2-0 up, or is it going to be one one, locking us into a best of three scenario? Kirby stuff. Forward air. Going to try and follow up. Forward throw into forward air. Just. There's the landing um, down air into double up tilt back air. Lovely stuff. Yep. Let's just go. Oh, <laughs> Don't worry about that. High. So this is the thing with Rob, right? Rob yeah. has these um, rather extended hitboxes as well, yeah. very like, high levels of activation. So that kind of like landing there is a big option because it covers yeah. so much space. Um, hard, to, hard to challenge. Yeah. Um, and one thing I find quite fun about Rob is the fact that, so when you up B as Rob, it's like if you try and press the B button again, it'll just press up B again. However, if you if you use an aerial, like a down arrow, and you, well, any aerial, you can then use another B move, like side B or neutral B, mm. and it won't, like, you can use the up B game afterwards. It's just, it's brilliant, the amount of, like, off-stage game you have as Rob. Yeah. 
So far, though, um, one of Rob, Rob's biggest advantages that I'm hoping Blizz is going to perhaps put into their game plan a little bit later is that is that um, Gyro. Such a huge bit. Very, very oh, nice. Oh, that though. was a beautiful way. That was really nice. Really, really lovely. I do agree. Yeah, waited to see what the Kobe would do and then punish. Yeah. Good shout. I mean, for me, I, I would have just done an instant shot above that. <laughs> yeah. But that was, that was a beautiful punish instead. And Kirby taking the soccer game with the back air there. That's such a big move. It is. It's so nice. Will that gyro come out, though? It's such a space controller for Rob. Kirby's really loving the forward throw forward as. It's, it's a really, really, it's, at low percent it just works. Because you can yeah. see like, Kirby bounces up as well as knocking his opponent in, into the air too. That is a wonderful usage Rob's of Rob's stealing the, it. Yeah, wonderful usage. <sighs> OK. Kay. And obviously, there it is. OK, connected <laughs> there we go. finally. That will kill, yeah. That's going to be enough. Yeah. Wow. See, Rob's, Rob's final smash is weird in the fact that it has the mini lasers come out before the big laser. Yeah. So it's like... You can kill off the mini lasers at really high percent, but then the mini lasers can also like hinder your ability to actually hit the final beam because the mini lasers just auto track. So if they're at the top and you hit them again, it hits them further up, and all of a sudden you can't hit the final beam, so you can't get the kill. Mm -hmm. And it's just it's just a very awkward final smash to use, I think. And they managed to make it work regardless. Interesting position, use it more defensively, but it worked out very well in their favor. However, oh, yeah. they do have that lead right now. 58% is on Kirby's second, uh, final stock. Um, it looks, I mean, obviously we know Kirby's fairly light. It's a dangerous thing. Yeah. There's the F smash there to take it out once more. Um, one stock apiece is not insurmountable, as you said. You've been talking about these, you know, these grab combos coming out from Kirby. 20% roughly yeah. on that um, forward throw forward air. So. It's Rob loving the smash attacks right now. Oh, okay, Ooh, right, yeah. that was Tech close. timing was a bit, a bit a bit all right there. Up smash does come out, but not enough to take the stock just yet. Soon, though, any big, big hit from Rob is going to be enough. There's the dash attack. Doesn't get punished, though. Jumped out of it. There it is. Oh, just like that. The, oh, Ooh. but it doesn't kill. Good DI there to that stay was beautiful alive. beautiful DI. Despite the lightness, it still was 112 after the hit, so still, still in there. If I was the Kirby right now, I'd probably try and avoid getting grabbed, because from what I've seen so far, the grabs have been Kirby's biggest biggest yeah. hindrance. And the thing is, like, the the, um, the down throw is definitely... Oh, the spinny arms! Oh. Spinny arms! Side B, yep. yeah. Oh, God. A little bit of greed there going for yeah. the smash ball. Yeah. That's one apiece here. Caldy and Norton evened out. And the thing I want to say it was a 3-0 last week. So the fact that it's 1-1, Norton starting yeah, to think. Was... See, it was, it was also quite uh, good as well for, in, for the Rob's part, because it was, even if the side B didn't kill, the Rob won the trade for the final smash. So if it didn't kill, they could have just instantly used the final smash. Mm -hmm. And the mini lasers could have just instantly sent them into the blast zone. Exactly. Boom, yeah. dead. It's a lot of pressure was like building up. So it was kind of, I appreciate the fact that the Kirby didn't have much of that, that they could really do. So they had to kind of, yeah. you know, force an option. But, you know, that was just like a good snap decision. The thing about like the robot spin arms is it's kind of like, it just can like just yeah. lurch at you out, out of nowhere. So it's kind of like, oh, it's, it's suddenly in my face. I'm in danger. Yeah. But um, yeah. yeah, caught him. And that's the game. Yeah, I can't piece. really complain about that. It's, yeah. yeah. So we, have, we, we, we saw Kyle. Who do you think we think that uh, Norton are going to play out next? Who, who do you reckon? I reckon it would... But I reckon, it, I reckon it it'd been? probably be um, Harry. Harry. But the question okay. is, will he, pull, will he pull out Yoshi? Will he pull out Ike? Who will he pull out? Who knows? Yeah. Maybe he'll pull out someone we haven't seen before. Who knows? Yeah. If you have that many characters under your belt, why not? I mean... I mean, I mean, I've made half the roster, so it's like big fan it's, of it's completely big, big fan of the question mark is your main yeah. character. Random, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's always yeah. an interesting one. Um, Although, random. I don't, I don't like random in the fact that Duck Hunt Duo exists. Um, <laughs> I can't play Duck Hunt to save my life. Yeah, yeah, you, rem you remember that character? Yeah, they exist. Um, yeah, wow. Uh, yeah, um, I'm sorry, Burning. I'm sorry. There's, a, <laughs> there's a, 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 a Duck Hunt, Hunt duo player, very, very much, you know, can, yeah, love, yeah. loves that character. But um, oh, as you say, oh, the only one in like I, Europe, I think. I, I, ap <laughs> I appreciate when people can play Duck Hunt duo, it's just I can't play Duck Hunt duo to save my life. Mm. So, yeah. Um, Looks just, like okay, you that, might have been right about Harry coming out. Oh no, we're going oh. back. Oh, we're going to the main menu. Good. <laughs> Hell yeah, I love that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so um, my favorite character in Smash is um, closing the game. Closing uh, the game, yeah. Closing the game. <laughs> I'm a big fan of that, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm just... not going to get JB Ford. It didn't happen. Yep, it didn't Home happen. Menu, just closing the game. Button, yeah. <laughs> but 
Uh, yeah, just leave the Switch alone for the day. Yeah. Just leave it alone. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah. it's interesting, we're locked in, one apiece. You know, now yeah. we've got that, that, that best of three scenario. You know, the mm. first two games, they don't matter anymore. It's just best of three now. Yeah. Um, that's, it's so much, it, it, men, mentality-wise, it's such a big difference being oh. one all than 2-0, -oh, you know? Yeah. The, the hill you have to climb up is just, it's almost, it, almost erased, you know? Um, but then again, everyone try, wants a good trying to fight, story. Trying to fight, if it's like 2-1 down, you know? You've only, yeah. only got to fight one to get back. Yeah, if yeah, you're 2-1 yeah. down, you've got to fight back to get 2-1. And then, you know, they're going to start getting ready for it and then you have to do it again and then again it's like yeah, it's, the effort is just so much more it's just so. such a slog it's like it's really hard it's yeah. like have yeah. you ever found found yourself on the receiving end of, of a 2-0 clap back a clap back no never no. um never. i have found myself on the receiving end of a 3-0 though um yeah against Funnily enough, against every single one of the people on Norton College's team. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> that's, and that's why we're doing commentary, mate. Yeah, that's, that's why we're on commentary and they're playing the game. <laughs> nah, okay, yeah. the Yoshi came out though against yeah. Palutena. Ooh, this is a match I haven't seen for a long time. Maybe uh, like, maybe since like Valhalla back in 20. Oh, there we go. Oh. Forfeit a stock. You press the start button. You forfeit. A stock. <laughs> um, don't know quite what happened. I think we're just having a quite a, a, a brief moment with a controller. We're just going to get that sorted ASAP. Um, Mr. Karen Aratne there, just Three, sorting out. Two, one, go. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Beautiful. Um, <laughs> Face Mark. Um, okay, yeah. we're on to, on to FD. The game is, as you said, it's one 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 apiece. Getting that down throw forward air, the usual, the classic coming out from um, from Palatina, and then we're perhaps going to be going into the last Nair bender. As um, Nair's coming out. Nair Bender, no, yeah. I love that. Yeah, the that last is... Nair. Avatar, the last, <laughs> the last Nair Bender. Bender. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, Palutena. Uh, to be fair, every single one of Palu's aerials are just so incredibly good. It's oh, like mate, the shield on the, on, on the back air is dirty, back dude. Air, it's dirty. so good. And then the up air is like the anti air tool, down air for spiking. It's like, there's really no bad option with Palu. It's, yeah, for sure. it's insane. She's got a very, very strong character. That's why I fit since the beginning of the game's lifespan, she's been very, very strong. Yeah. That said, Ooh. as out of the uh, oh out of the egg, God. that is oh, really that is good so egg decision. Lucky. Oh, the egg lay is just yeah, so good. The thing is, you don't want to mash with um, with, with with dodge. You get that, that 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 situation where you break out and you air dodge, and that's yeah. so bad because aerial air dodges create so much yeah. like uh, you know um, delay upon your, before your next action, so it's tricky. That's why, if possible, you should always like aim to go up. I, I say the same very thing. Nice cat. That Wonderful. was a very nice catch with the up air, taking the Yoshi's stock. That was good though, because like using the um, exploding flame just to cover the recovery so well, and then immediately yeah. knowing you, you get it and getting into that danger zone space is a catch for the last yeah. hit of that up air. The thing is, with the exploding flame, it's like it has such an active hitbox that Pella can react to how the opponent reacts mm -hmm. and just do a punish on that. Yes, yeah. it's 100% it, a. a uh, I mean, you can use it for edge guarding, but it is a conditioning tool more than yeah. anything else. That looks like mm, yeah, oh, the right angle ultimate. gets yep. it, and that will oh, be the that kills. Wow, Coolzy in a good position right now, looking to looking to maybe go two one up here against the, the against the team that beat them last week. Is this going to be the redemption they they are after? As we have Harry on his final stock here, looking to bring it back De forward air into up air, not going to oh, take the stock just yet. Maybe. And the Nair? That's oh, going to be enough. Kills. Gave him the wow. Tims. Get the Tims on. <sighs> All right, the Nairs. Down the into Nair machine. into up oh, yeah. That'll do. Shield. That, that, the dash also having a shield property, man. What's that about? Oh, yeah. There's that down air. Down Lots there. of percentage being, being uh, It's applied. such a good damage dealer. Mm. Yoshi's down air. It's... In my opinion, it deals a little too much damage. Um, <laughs> it's just, it's such a, it's such a versatile option that like you can't really do much. Trade. Up smash trade. Again, this, this is the point where you know, as a team, you know, you, uh, as Coolie, you know, you're trying to fight back and get get your revenge. So yeah, you cannot let that anticipation mm. get in the way of you actually just playing and focusing. Matt has to be very careful oh. here. Good air dodge through the up air, stays alive. Dash attack comes out the net. Nair out of shield. Yeah. Yoshi shields always. Frustrating. Powerful shield. It's, it's a powerful shield. You can't you can't shield poke it. <gasps> like Yoshi's shield doesn't collapse. It just darkens yeah, exactly, until it yeah. cracks. So it's, it's so hard to see when it's actually ready yeah. to go. Okay, that was good oh, that was wasted. So good. Close. Really good patience there. Oh my god. 
This is getting very, very close now. Harry can bring this back. Looking for the up air. Doesn't, doesn't land it just yet. Matt has to play a safe recovery. There's the final smash ball. Is that going to be the deciding oh. point of this game? Oh. The exploding flame. That was a sick oh. exploding flame. Can Yoshi get away? Yoshi gets away. Don't land. That is that was okay. beautiful. Good that awareness. That was a beautiful start from Yoshi. That's a oh throw. My God. Forward throw. throw. Harry looking to edge guard here. What's going to be the option? Goes for the uh, up B. Connect. Get on stage. This is so tight. Oh, this is so tight. What's the edge guard? Oh! oh. Hmm. oh my God. God. That's that's it. It. That takes it. It's oh not over God. yet. It's, it's not over yet. Over. It's not over yet. Oh but my God. That was so intense. Kuldi lost 3 0 last week. They oh, are 2 1 wow. up. Looking to get that revenge to, to, to seal the deal against their rivals here. Jeez. That was. Norton <sighs> up against the ropes here. Hold on, let me catch my taking, breath for two seconds. Taking the blows, just ah, oh, body <laughs> shot, body shot. They need to, they need to fight back Ooh. somehow. What are they going to do? What, you know, obviously, they only have one player left. They have to play their third yeah. player. It's going to be Nathan. Um, it's a lot of pressure to put on the birthday boy. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're two one down here, mate. If you lose, sure. you're not. Sure if, if you lose, but the, the party is cancelled. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sure if Cody no, and no, 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 let case. Nathan win, maybe? <laughs> that isn't the case. That isn't the case, Nathan. No, don't worry don't, about it. Just joking. focus on the game. Was, <laughs> don't worry. He's going to get king. <laughs> um, so this is a tense situation. 2-1, it's uh, a bit of a hard one there, you know. Yeah. For one shot at a final smashdown, um, or squad strike rather, not smashdown, squad strike. Um, damn. That's, uh, that's a game. That was an exciting that game. Was, that was so that was... good. Like, really, really good push from, from Matt just to keep the advantage. And then... Like, Harry fought back so incredibly well. Oh, made that did. really, really close, but just getting caught by that dash attack. It's a really weird knockback angle. Yeah. It's hard to DI See, that because it's just straight up. Like. See, that, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned about the knockback angle because I wanted to mention it. I thought, I thought Pally's uh, dash attack sent them straight forwards. No. Not straight forwards, but like, like that, yeah. Yeah, no. But no, it just... Straight oh, up. Yep. It looks like, like the game's ready, though. Game four yep. is looking like we're going to be game getting ready. ready. It's going to be Inkling Jigglypuff again. I've seen this again. match twice today now. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> You say you never see it, and then look now, you've seen it twice, twice today. Yeah. Here we go, we've got Calcon versus Nathan. We've got the Jigglypuff has been creating so much terror on the stage. The, oh, look at this, look at oh. this. Edge guard stuff. This oh, is the edge guard. Shenanigans. The shenanigans. Oh. The shenanigans. Oh. The shenanigans. Nathan. Wait, is that? Oh, oh that would have been, been such disgusting. good edge guard. That would have been so good. That would have been a way to cement your, oh, to cement your position in game four. <laughs> I am here to play. I'm not going down easy. <sighs> This is the thing with you. This is such just good control. Try to go for the ledge trump. Didn't get the right timing. Down it comes out. Ooh. Okay, now fighting back here from from Calcon. Doing a really good job just to regain their 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 position. That's it. Again, they're getting knocked off. <gasps> the stage spike. Yeah. Hit. The stage spike. Okay. Yeah. Beautiful. Calcon can't let the momentum run away from them. Have to just maintain no. the composure. When they have stage control, they're doing a really really good job. Let that ink build up onto the Jigglypuff. Nathan obviously having some experience with the Jigglypuff puff of course, um, yeah. they, against Ink, Ink, Ink today, rather. Yeah. See, the issue is it's Ink, Ink, Ink looking like it's running very low right now. And if they don't, yeah, out of Ink already, if they don't recharge it fast, they're going to be out of options so this is, to recover. So this is obviously where Nathan, what, what Nathan wants to do is to really yeah. like, turn the screws, get, get, in, get in their face and make it difficult so they can't recover. Has to go for the high recovery, but very good from Nathan to, to respond. Looking for the edge guard again, goes under, misses it though. Yeah. Bit of, a, bit of, a bit of Ink then as well. See, that's, that's one thing as well about um, Inkling running out of Ink. It's like, you don't, you don't use up ink when you use roller in the air. However, if you're out of ink, you still take the movement penalty for not having ink. And it's mm. just so hard to work against. Very good, very good decision, oh, very to, good decision to do that there. there. Very, very good usage of the... Oh! oh okay. the air dodge back to step. The stage spike! Stop stage spiking this person! Stop. What the hell? That's ridiculous! <laughs> um, yeah, oh. really good use of the pound to maintain yes. the height throughout that really intelligent and um, experienced uh, recovery there. Yeah, it was. It was beautiful. As, um, and as well, it's... Every time you use a fan or smash, if you're off stage, or in the air, rather, mm. um, you get another jump, even if you're out completely out of jump. Dash attack and man. I just think that's, uh, yeah, yeah. Nathan really, you know, putting his foot down. He is really cementing his presence, saying, "I'm here, do something about it." Yeah, you need to, you need, you need to work through this wall that I'm putting out. But you can see just yeah. how much aerial control is here, and it's just, it seems like, you know, Calcon is struggling just to really get their, you know, to just plant their feet and just stay controlled for a little bit. There's just so much 
pressure being applied. They just can't really like get into the game right now. Mm. They've got a long journey back. Can they play the perfect stock? Oh. That Roller. was a good. That'll be enough. Yep, roll That was a good roller into a smash. Yep. That's the start the you classical. want. The classical. You want to just get rid of that thing. Like the thing with Jigglypuff is like, because Jigglypuff's so floaty and light. You know, it just you want you can't you need to get something substantial. You can't just get these yeah. stray like flimsy hits. You need to get something that says so, so, so solid. Yeah. So just getting that done allows you to start going playing the combo game again. Just try and build the percentage up. Go for the racking up, and then. See. That's another no, thing. Oh, Spike, where are your techs? I don't, Spike! Oh. That's enough. That's, that's enough. enough. Bring it that's back. enough to take the start. Bring it back. Wow. Okay. Nathan's got to remain calm, remain cool. These techs not coming out, but it's uh, seeming like they're back in the game now, and there's another yeah. some final smash. Another if Calcon can get this, can they even this game up? But no, Jigglypuff Jigglypuff uses it immediately. Using it instantly to prevent Inkling from using it. Pretty much, yeah. That, that's, was, yeah. that, that, that was just that's, sheer denial. That's the thing with Jigglypuff, you've, you've got to think, is it worth using it or is it worth getting it and using it just to make sure that your opponent doesn't use theirs? Yeah, yeah. De denial is as much a strat as optimizing yeah. your own usage there, for sure. Yeah. You want to like, just try and, like, you want to just block every single avenue that the opponent has to get back into this game and make your win condition yeah. so much easier to, to achieve. The percentage is looking good for Nathan if you can just get that. So central back air! And the back air! It's going to be enough! And that kills! Oh, wow. Northern College. Game four even. going to Northern College. Well, we're going to be going to a... Game five. Game five. Set five, game five. Game fives are always, always you've fun had, to you've watch. You've had quite a good, like, good session I've today with these games. You've been really lucky to <laughs> get really all the good games. I really can't complain. <laughs> Exciting stuff, though. It comes down to the wire. This is our lower bracket finals. The winner of this game will meet Langley in grand finals mm. and have a, a, a double, a, a couple of sets to get through, but... You know, I know See. that right now Norton want their revenge on Langley, who took them yeah. down 3-2 in this very situation. Mm. Norton have been in this situation twice now. <laughs> so hopefully that experience is gonna help help is gonna help them. Hopefully. Um yeah, last last time um they played, um yeah, it, w it went in Norton's favour, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, um it should be interesting to see because no matter who wins, it's gonna be a run back against Langley. So yeah. it should be fun watching a run back in the yeah. grand finals. Love watching a run back. But before we get to the grand finals, we obviously need to watch get, the Yeah, we have to, we have to get we there first. We have to, don't we have worry to watch about, this first. Yeah, don't worry about <laughs> grand finals just yet. I, I like your enthusiasm, <laughs> but... Uh, um, um, I, yeah. just, I just think it's fun to watch who wins. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> They're all setting up. So we can see a few characters being selected. Now, we don't know the order. We can we see the characters, the but we don't know the order. The order will be displayed just before we go into game, and that's going to be very, very now, exciting to see. The question is... Will they have the order the same as they did in the 1v1s, like they did for the first set? That could was, do it. Could do it. It's very plausible. Looking like yeah. we're getting... I'm um, seeing some similar characters, maybe. Yeah. Got the Ike, the Kirby, the Jigglypuff. Jigglypuff, yeah. Captain Falcon, Rob. Rob. DDD, Palo? Sonic, Dorothy. DDD. King D3. King D3. Gotta love D3. The penguin, man, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. A, a little bit of a um, backstory for us while we were training. Um, okay. So our, our, um, our team manager was asking who can play DDD because that was one of the characters that Cal really struggled with. Mm. And obviously, since I made half the roster, D3 falls under half the roster. <laughs> so does. There, so does, they, yeah. were, they, were, they were basically stealing <laughs> me for practice games, which was, nice. yeah. Um, so it should be interesting to see if that practice plays out for yeah. Kyle. Okay, looks like they're good to go. We have begun the game. They're going to be choosing their order. This is it. Game five, set five. The winner of which will meet Langley in that grand final. There's all to play for here as we enter game five. Ooh. I think we're going to need, need a, bit more, uh, a, bit, a bit more noise from the audience. Let's get this going. Come on. Beautiful. But Appreciate the energy. We are on. I did Smash notice. Um, they put it so that Kyle and... Um, D3 never actually have to come against each other, so that that's interesting. They might not need to. They might not need no, to be fair, it depends on if Kyle Oh, coverage. Okay. Oh, that was a beautiful recovery from Really, Falcon. really good edge guarding right now from Kyle. Recovery from Calcon. Go, go! Oh, oh that would have been a nice knee. Oh, we'll try to get the Raptor boost, but a little yeah. bit too far to the a bit too far, far to the left, so it went through. And and obviously we're on. Oh, look at the knee! 
Obviously, we're on a um, town and city currently, so if um, if Kyle upbeats and Falcon is too close, it will connect, allowing him for a safe recovery. Um, There's a grab, back yeah. throw, gets him off stage. What's going to be the option? Goes to try and find the up air. There's the grab, forward throw. <gasps> oh, good shield. Look that shield. was very, very tense. Up the uh, side B again, tried to find the stop, but didn't. Yeah. Down smash. Very, very oh, nice. On the spike. Taking Captain Falcon. Oh. Kyle with the first see, blood. See, when Kirby had hailed the Falcon there, I thought they were going to... I thought they were going to copy and go for a nice little Kevin Falcon punch. Mm, yeah, that would have been funny. That, that would have been great. great. It didn't happen though. Kirby's oh up well. against Rob now. I believe this is a run back. It is a rematch from earlier, and we know what Kirby can do with these grabs. Look at that 48% immediately oh, wow. at the beginning of the game. Blizz needs to calm down now. Down throw, forward throw times two. Can't let that get the get to them. Oh. Get that stock. Forward smash comes out, and then good coverage from the laser. laser yep. Dash attack just to punish the dash through. Gonna cover the movement. <sighs> Ooh, that was an air dodge of the ages. Down throw, up there smash. Yeah, that there we go. It. We're nice and quick. See, that was. See, Kyle came out with a nice, like, chunky first hit, just to get like 50% on. Yes. And then lost and then lo lost their stock. But yeah. that was a, a nice bit of damage. It's, it's a quite helpful. Um, gives yeah. Ike so, so something, something to work with here. See, see um, one thing about Rob that um, a lot of people might not know that is quite useful. Um, the little beat, the little like flashing light on the top of his head, that actually indicates how charged up the neutral beat is. Mm -hmm. um, and if it's flashing like it is now, they're ready to rip a fully charged neutral beat. But if it's like slightly glowing, then it just fires off the little, the little red beam. Mm -hmm. So both players have to be equally aware of that. Um, oh, and then obviously when the light's not flashing, you can't fire a laser at all. Um, yeah, there's a nair into back air, good air dodge to survive. Just there. That's the classic from from Ike. Nair, nair into it, nair into imagination. I mean, nair into anything. It's yeah. just a classic from Ike. It's just nair the character, basically. Spot. Oh, okay. Ooh. Final smash is here. If, Ike if wants Blitz to try get, to get that. Because Rob's... Oh, gets it. Got it. Oh, that's it. Connect. It did. Oh, Got wow. Wide reaching upwards. Ah, oh, that's goodbye, Blizz. Wow. Final that, stop. Yeah. I am. Um, Ike's, Ike's final smash always reaches further than I expect. And every time when it hits, I'm always surprised. I shouldn't be surprised by Ike anymore, honestly. I should, just, I should just let it happen. It's fine. DDD steps up. The last barrier. Yep. Matt has got to play through two stocks. He wants to keep his team in this tournament. Harry looking for that, that win for Norton to bring them back into the grand finals and get that run back against Langley. But can Caldy, you know, vanquish their demons from last week and get the, uh, get the victory they couldn't get last week? Maybe, who knows? Will that pressure get to them? There's a question. Jab, 70% right now Jab. on DDD. He's a big boy though. So despite the percentage, he is heavy. With a back air. Here, yeah. Matt there looking for some kind of edge I think guard there. Ike was going for the back air as well. It's just DVDs obviously just getting out first. A bit bigger, yeah. Up B. Oh, Gordo. Up B is so good having super armor on Ike. It's just insane. There's a roll forward in. Get air. punished with the forward air. Yeah, Harry just playing it safe. Goes for the Eruptor! Oh, no. And the two frame! The two frame neutral B. That was oh, man. GP, GP would be happy with that one. The oh, eruption two frame. God. As you said, gets that stock. And Norton see off a great challenge from Caldy, who almost got their own back from last week. But Norton oh. see it through. 3-2. Two, two times they've that had to deal with that. Twice they've had to deal with that. And twice not would have come through on top. That was that was insane. Very exciting game. And Norton are back in grand finals for a run back against Langley. Back. Langley must be uh, shaken in their boots, potentially, or be like, yeah, we did it once, we can do it again. Yeah. Um, However, Norton, Norton is in um, in uh, lower side, so they will have to win two sets, obviously. They do, yeah, they do. Two. Take Plenty of time for Langley to adjust if need be, but exactly. they can be happy with that one. They almost they yeah. 
they almost kind of like dropped that stock or dropped that game there. And, you know, lost. I mean, Caldy played brilliantly. We have to say, you know, Caldy put in an incredible job, there, incredible yeah. work there because, you know, last week they lost 3-0. It was 3-2 this time. Great adaptation and so close. It's a heartbreaker yeah. for them, but they have to be proud in how much they've improved since that, that last week. Oh, yeah. They, they, they both played exceptionally well. Um, I'm... Yeah, I, w I wouldn't have I wouldn't have been surprised if either team won. Honestly, it was mm. just yeah, it was yeah. just unfortunate. Yeah. Right. Um, well, we have to keep mo moving on, though. So, um, Danny, I want to say thank you again for joining me. Uh, obviously, that's um, you know your last set here with us. So, thank yeah. you very much. It's been a, a, a pleasure to have you here. Thank you for having me. It no was worries. wonderful. Uh, it's, it's been awesome. Um, well, what we're going to do, though, is we're going to throw over to uh, to my good friend Nims, who is waiting with uh, the Call cool, Coldy players for a quick interview. Nims, over to you, mate. Thank you very much, Barry. Before I do anything, every single person who is in this room right now, can I please get you to give a massive cheer to Cordy Grange Grammar School? <laughs> Guys, you put on quite the show. I was, I, my heart is still racing from that final match. That was absolutely incredible. You guys played phenomenally, not just for today, but the entirety to get to where you are today. You guys, I think that deserves another round of applause. Just to even be here today is absolutely amazing. So talk us through a little bit about, have you, have you enjoyed today? Has, what's today been like for you as, as a team and of course as friends, you know, being in a school together, playing this amazing game? What's it been like for you? Yeah, so it's really been an honor to be here. Um, and we get to miss school, so. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> um, yeah, we've really practiced and we've really enjoyed it. Although there's been SDs along the way. Uh, <laughs> I think it's been Just really fun. There. Yeah. There go. Yeah. It's been a fun ride, so. Excellent. So just talk us through just that last squad strike, guys. What was what was going through your minds? Was it was you, was there a sense of like I got this, I got this, we can do this, we can do this. Or do you think that there was just something, I mean, obviously being in a, in a room like this and obviously going up in a big room, there can be quite a lot of pressure. Would you guys think you uh, have got a lot to take away from this? What, what, what would you say you guys have learned about this experience? Uh, we've learned to not go Terry. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think we've really uh, seen what our weaknesses are and how to improve, like, really well, so... So is it safe to say we might see you guys in the future, perhaps competing in more tournaments, representing your school or together as friends? Yeah, hopefully, yeah. Give it up, ladies and gentlemen, to Coldy Grammar School! <laughs> Amazing stuff. So once again, everybody who's watching at home and, of course, everybody here, thank you so much for watching so far. We're not done yet. If you thought that was hype, we still got the grand final to go just yet. So don't go anywhere. We'll be back very shortly. See you in three.
Welcome back to everybody watching at home and of course audience who are sitting next to me. Are you still with me? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Just double checking, just making sure that they're still there and they're still awake and they're still with us. So for those of you guys watching at home, if you've just tuned in, my name is Nims and this of course is the Digital Schoolhouse Super Smash Brothers Ultimate Team Battle 2022. Um, we of course have had some really exciting games happening throughout today and we still have lots more to come, so don't go anywhere for those. But in between all of this, Digital Schoolhouse of course have produced a careers panel, which we're going to go into next. Um, and this is a really exciting segment, especially for me, because it's always really interesting to hear lo about lots of people who work in the video games industry. So if you are watching at home and you have perhaps a passion uh, for video games or perhaps even uh, competitive gameplay or behind the camera stuff or perhaps even game development, this is a segment where we're going to be talking to some very special guests um, who are pretty much working in the video game industry. but. What's interesting about these special guests, which you may be interested to know, is that these are unexpected careers or people that have unexpectedly landed within the video game industry without even knowing, with skills that they've picked up along their journeys uh, for whatever they may have studied or perhaps jobs they may have done in the past. So it's gonna be really interesting to hear from these special guests. So can I please get a round of applause for all the special guests who are joining me today? <laughs> so, we're just gonna simply go down the line because obviously I know exactly who you all are, but I'm gonna allow you guys to just introduce yourselves to everybody watching at home and of course to our lovely audience, who you are and what is it you do? Yeah, so uh, my name is Becky Wright. I work for a company called NSE, which stands for National Student Esports. Um, I am a senior partnerships manager. Um, a little bit about NSE, we run the British University Esports Championship. Um, we have teams from over 100 universities across the country battling out for uh, to be crowned eSports um, University of the Year at the end of uh, the academic year. And I look after the brands that we work with. Um, so we've got Intel and Monster Energy, Barclays, PC Specialist, and I work with those, make sure that we're doing fun activities with them throughout the year um, and supporting the students that choose to interact with us. Excellent. I'm Manisha Dokia and I'm the Creative Production Manager at Excel. Um, Excel is basically a competitive gaming brand that works in, um, our game titles are FIFA, Valorant, uh, Fortnite and League of Legends. Um, and my role is basically coordinating creative processes um, across the company. So 3D, VR, AR, all kind of new tech that we work with. Awesome. Uh, yeah, I'm Anna Poulter-Jones and I'm a games lawyer. I work at the firm Sheridan's. Uh, so I work for a variety of clients across the games and esports sectors, um, predominantly commercial and intellectual property, um, contentious and non-contentious side of things. So that could be you know, helping clients to enforce their, the IP that they own in a game or working with developers and publishers to help you know, strike a deal to get a game off the ground, get developed, get published, or just you know, general advice on anything from age rating to uh, the use of AI in games and the considerations around that. But basically anything that touches on games and esports will probably be doing at Sheridan. <laughs> right, yeah. And yourself? Hi, I'm, I'm Mo, I work for Yuki. Um, I am the intellectual property coordinator. Intellectual property is anything you create. So if you draw something, you make a game, that's intellectual property IP. So my job is to be, I hate to use the term, the internet police, <laughs> and is literally, no booze please, um, <laughs> is literally to go out there and make sure that if somebody's copying or making something available, then we work on behalf of um, our members. So UK, I think you all know, is a trade association. So all those games companies, if any of their um, games or even their lovely Nintendo jackets are being made available without permission, <laughs> then it's our job to try and take it down, etc. Um, as for career-wise, um, I used to work for the music industry before. Um, I've been doing this for a very long time. Uh, my background is computer science, and it shows that someone like me can get into the games industry with a very different background from what I started with. Mm. Just as a disclaimer, this is a, a legit Nintendo yeah. jacket. <laughs> I've checked I'm your Just <laughs> letting you know, I didn't make this myself. I'm not that talented. Um, it's excellent that you touched on that, Mo, because that brings me to uh, the next question, which I, I wanted to kind of open up the discussion with. Um, Becky 
and of course everybody else, we can take it in turns to answer this question. Um, did you always know that you were gonna kind of be working in the video game industry? Was it something that perhaps, did you play video games when you were a child? Was it something that you did as a hobby or something that you wanted to take a bit more seriously? Talk us a bit about your journey into where you've gotten to right now. Yeah, so for me, it was, I'd been playing games forever as long as I can remember. Mm -hmm. um, I never really considered it as a career though. Um, I went to university knowing I wanted to do something creative. Uh, I studied graphic design originally, which is very different to what I do now. Um, after that, I bounced around industries. So I started off um, in kind of advertising industry, looking after la lifestyle advertising. Okay. Um, and then moved into the automotive. I worked for Ford for a little bit and then jumped over to property. Um, <laughs> I, I found I wasn't particularly fulfilled though in any of these and I was always like, what's missing? Um, and I've been playing games forever. I got really, really into Dota 2 in 2016. Um, mm. And that kind of opened my eyes to kind of esports generally, because I didn't, I didn't really interact a huge amount in esports before. Um, and I just got really involved with the community and thought, why don't I do this as a career? Or <laughs> find out how I can do this as a career. Um, and so I ended up moving more over to, away from graphic design uh, into marketing mm -hmm. and then using the skills I'd picked up along the way and kind of network and people that I met, um, I ended up finding a job, uh, well, at NSE um, a little over two years ago now. Um, and originally entered NSE as a social media and community manager. Excellent. Yeah. So, and Manisha, you, so obviously you mentioned quite a few big games uh, there, uh, which are, of course, quite big in the esports uh, world and very competitive. Did you, are you similar to Becky? Are you Did you grow up playing games? Was you quite a competitive person? Or is, is, is tell us a bit about your journey. Yeah, um, I've always grown up playing games. My dad had an Atari. He's been wow. an old school gamer. And That's old school. I've got an older brother, so I'm really competitive when it comes to games. Makes um, sense. <laughs> so yeah, I've always grown up with it, always played it. Um, and I suppose during my studies, I was always a creative person. Okay. Um, did media production at uni and yeah, so I've, I've been in like the entertainment creative industry. Mm. I used to work in kind of West End shows, live arts um, and esports kind of linked before COVID obviously. Right. Um, with that kind of space as well. So I kind of fell into Excel in esports in general. Um, and it just seemed like a really great fit because there's so many creative jobs out there. Mm. And um, yeah, lo love it. Haven't looked back since. Excellent. And of course, Anna, you mentioned you're more kind of on the legal side of things. Um, did you, when obviously when you studied, studied at university, did you ever think that you'd go into like legal stuff for video games? Was that kind of always the dream? Or did you, uh, tell us a little bit about how you came into the legal side of video games. Yeah, so I took, uh, quite a roundabout route to end up <laughs> as a games lawyer. I always loved games and played them from as young as I can remember. I was mm. playing a lot against my older brother. Um, but I had no idea that I could actually work in games. Uh, right. It took me a long time. I think I was, I just finished my finals at university and I think it was Skyrim was the game at the time I was playing. Um, I was big into that and it kind of coincided with me looking for jobs and a job came up that was you know, related to games, it was actually running events in the games industry, and I thought, it's to do with games, and I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then through that, it was like, open my eyes to this whole industry and this whole just world of different opportunities within games, and through that, I learned that games law is a thing, and I found it really, really interesting, and I ended up going to law school, um, qualifying as a lawyer in more sort of general more general corporate law firm before finally being able to come back and like specialize in games law. So <laughs> long way of saying I was certainly never one of those people who knew from the age of eight, I want to be a games lawyer. Right, <laughs> right. And Mo, so you, you briefly mentioned that you were actually in the music industry beforehand. How did you, are you similar to the girls? Did you kind of grow up playing video games? Did you, was it something that you just did as a hobby and then kind of just was like, oh, this is something that I could, really pushed. Tell us a little bit about your journey. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, all I did is play games. I used to um, have this thing called a cassette and I would put it in at lunchtime <laughs> and go to school. The game would have loaded by the time I got back. <laughs> it's, it's 
this will mean nothing to you're the young generation. You're blowing the kids' minds right <laughs> exactly, now. You're right. blowing their minds. So <laughs> games was everything. My story was I, I graduated from university with a computer science degree. Gran Turismo 3 came out, mm. and I didn't look for a job for six months because I had to complete the game. Mm. Um, so it's always been something that I've enjoyed doing. For me, it's a challenge. Mm -hmm. And in a way, the job that I do is a challenge. I'm trying to identify people who are up to not good things. And in a way, mm. it's like playing a game in real life, basically. Mm. So for that reason, it's interesting. Um, I always explain IP as an upside down pyramid. And if it isn't for music or games or films, at the bottom of the pyramid, I wouldn't have a job, or any of us would not have a job. Right. That's why I think it's so important. And when you are working for something like a video game that you've got interest in, it's a nice feeling mm. because you feel like you're you're making a difference. Mm. Uh, it helps people as well. You know, I've got friends and family who are your age. Uh, when you tell them, you know, I did a boring computer science degree, <laughs> I was terrible at coding, but now I'm working on you know games, etc. It gives them that motivation, and I think that's the cool thing, really, that you can get into this industry by doing not such a cool job, but still being associated with something that you're really interested in. And it's really cool you you actually touched on that, Mo, talking about it being a cool job, because I remember being young myself, and if I you know, spoke to friends, family, and said that I wanted to work within video games, it was something that wasn't really heard of much. You hadn't really seen or seen anything about it or known anything about it. And now everything is so available, isn't there? On social media, there's so much on the internet. You know, Digital Schoolhouse is such a fantastic company that they're providing this to schools all around the UK. For yourselves, what would you say um, is something that you would adv advise kids to who, who want to get into, say, any avenue of the video games industry, where to kind of look or kind of how would they know where to venture in terms of they might, for example, like something to do in legal or something to do with marketing or something to do with um, game design. What What's kind of the advice you kind of would give the kids to, to go and venture and search through? Well, I'll answer this as, um, as, <laughs> as Yuki, uh, we have a website and there is career advice, there is guidance there. Um, obviously, the great thing is there are universities um, and colleges pro as well that have courses related to computing. When I was doing computing, we just learned how to use macros in Excel. So you're well ahead of us. Um, <laughs> the main thing is, like I say, I, you know, I love playing games, but I know I can't make a game. But just being involved in something that you enjoy. So if you like the law aspect of it, or in my side, the investigation side of it, or marketing, just stick with it. Because there's so many games companies here in the UK, so you've got so much more of an opportunity. And yeah, just go and attend to uh, events. There's so many events aimed at young people now. So there's a lot more opportunity. But like with anything, if you put the effort in, it pays off, really. Yeah, and I think just to, to add to that, I mean, Games Touch is on so many different areas. Mm. And that was the big you know, sort of eye-opening thing for me was realizing, oh, it, it's not just developing, because I'm, I'm not, I didn't do computer science. I did languages at university. Mm. Um, but I suppose you can think about what, you know, what you feel your particular strengths are mm. and you'd be surprised how many different avenues there are that actually align with that and games. And having this interest in games might even, you know, would probably be quite beneficial because it might, it, it's it's something a bit unique and a bit different to help you sort of stand out and also focus your energy as you're studying or whatever. It, it's, it's a really kind of, it's very motivating. Mm. So for Manisha and Becky, obviously you guys work with a lot of like brands, you work with obviously within the esports sector, which can be quite daunting for some people. It can be quite, as you said, competitive. Um, as we've seen games here today, the, the pressure can really be on because obviously we can have really big competitions that are streamed all across the world. What advice would you give anybody who's really passionate about a game or they're really, they're really into, let's say, for example, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate and they want to take part in you know, competitive tournaments you know, with esports or with any other company. So that what kind of advice would you guys give them in terms of just encourage them that come and partake in these, in these tournaments? Ooh, um, <laughs> I think my, my advice would just be go for it. I mean, find mm. the events. There's lots of events out there that people can participate in. Um, and if there aren't, maybe like have a go at holding your own. Um, I always think so. We, we did a round of hiring not that long ago, and the mm. people who do those extra extracurricular 
um, whether it's you know them organizing their own tournaments and doing those extra things to make them really stand out that looks great on a cv um, organizing your own clubs you know when you go off to university get really involved in the societies um, game societies if you choose to go to university um, yeah those extra uh, um, extra kind of curricular uh, events that people get involved in are always great um, yeah Manisha? Yeah, I suppose just be super proactive. If you're creative and you're producing content, you know, join our Discord servers, you know, share it with the community because there's loads of people out there who are really passionate about gaming and, you know, there's, there's so many people who are willing to listen. You know, at Excel, we really promote community activations. You know, if our fans create content, we like to share it out on our channels and that in itself can give you a voice um, in a very like crowded space in a sense but yeah I mean keep a lookout on websites do a bit of research if you like gaming then there's so many communities out there to get involved mm. with absolutely so um, besides myself asking you guys lots of questions um, we do have a couple of questions I believe from our audience members who are sitting with us here today um, who would like to go first with asking a question to any member of our panel here at the moment is there anybody with a question I I can't believe I can see anybody at the top there. Oh yes, there we go. Just bear with us, we're gonna, we're gonna get you a mic. There we go. <laughs> um, in teaching, we get asked what was our good moment in teaching. So I just want to ask you, in terms of eSports, what was your light bulb moment and you thought, this is definitely for me? Becky? Light bulb moment. Um, probably going to uh, the International in Seattle, which is like the big, uh, if you're not interested in Dota, it's like the, I don't know, the culmination of the competitive year. Um, ended up in, you know, a huge esports arena, absolutely massive. That was when I was like, oh my gosh, I just have to be involved in this. <laughs> it was just so massive and the fans were just, the passion in that arena was just incredible and that's when I kind of knew esports was for me for sure. Excellent. Manisha? Yeah, I suppose for me it was when Excel put out a BBC documentary called Fight for First and seeing kind of the team, the pro players, the coaches on a huge stage um, is kind of eye-opening. You don't realise how much goes into mm -hmm. esports and everything mm -hmm. around it. So that was kind of a huge moment mm -hmm. and I think from that, a lot of people um, kind of know who we are, know esports a lot better as well. Mm. Anna? I suppose for me, uh, it's probably esports and just games generally, the moment of this is an incredible industry. Like, mm. I can't believe what goes into this was probably when I went to uh, E3, which is just a huge gaming expo convention conference in LA. Um, a number of years ago before I moved into law and I was just blown away by the creativity and the, sort of the sense of community as well. Like it's a friendly industry, an incredibly talented one. And I just thought I'd, I, I would be sort of feel privileged to be involved in this somehow. Mm. Mm. Right? Yeah, um, for me, it's being able to make a change, make a difference. Um, mm. You know, when, you know, we've done, we've made changes. So are probably not going to be liked for this, but on Google search, you're not able to find infringing content. So, you know, we're a small organization. We're, being a, we're able to go to the likes of Google and say, right, people are making available our members' content. Can you stop that from happening? And they listen to us. So, you know, and again, this all comes back from my background doing computer science. So understanding how algorithms work, et cetera. So that knowledge that I picked up many, many years ago is now being applied. And I think that's what I like, the fact that I'm relying on things that I was taught at college, university, and obviously having that opportunity to work with companies. So yeah, just, yeah, I'm the techie here. So I guess having that background really <laughs> means that, yeah, you know, it was the right career choice for me. And yeah, that's, that's how I look at it. Awesome. I believe we have, is there any other questions I believe in the audience? Where are we going? Ah, there we go. Yeah. What's the biggest challenge you've had in your career and how did you overcome it? If you start with Mo. Yeah, um, so I started <coughs> in 2002. Was anyone born here? Um, <laughs> and we were called internet surfers. We were essentially the people who just sat in the corner and pretended to do something. And the biggest challenge I had was convincing at the time the record labels that we could actually make a difference. And my moment kind of came when I was on the way home, commuting home, and someone I saw from school said to me, oh, what do you do? 
and I pointed at the Metro newspaper and the headline was basically the music industry goes after music pirates and everyone went quiet and everyone listened to our conversation. And whether people agreed whether it was right or wrong, it was the fact that people had a say, they, you know, they had a, a feeling about it and that felt to me like I'm making a difference here. You know, I, I may not convince everybody, but I've got this opportunity to do something and, and that's how I look at it. Like this is a career where I'm learning every day it's challenging. We were talking about NFTs earlier, uh, blowing me completely. I feel Whoa. like when I used to show my dad how to use a remote control, you That's know, now it's happening panel. to me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so yeah, just that, that, just that kind of feeling that, yeah, you are involved in something and you've got this opportunity and it's, it's a great feeling. Anna? I suppose the, the, the challenge every day, but also part of what I really enjoy most about my job is that the technological advancements that you're dealing with in this industry are so sort of fast moving and impressive that more often than not the law is still trying to catch up with it mm -hmm. and that i mean that's what's that's why this is such an interesting area of, of law and such an interesting area to be working in um and so every day you're coming across things that aren't necessarily legislated for or that people haven't really considered before mm -hmm. um so that's i mean that is essentially the job so it's great. Awesome. Anisha? Yeah, I suppose when I first started out straight after uni, um, I guess standing out was pretty difficult, mm -hmm. especially when you work in creative media. There's a lot of stuff out there. So, um, yeah, the first job I went to was like a huge conglomerate, loads of people kind of doing the same right. job roles. But then going into esports mm -hmm. specifically, you have so much freedom and you have a voice, you stand out, mm -hmm. um, and whatever you say, you know, is accounted for, it's listened mm -hmm. to. So standing out is great in esports, I guess. It's, there's a wealth of opportunities there. Mm -hmm. mm. Amy? Yeah, I think um, it's not so much like a challenge that I've had in a role, but it was once I realized I wanted to be in esports specifically, um, how did I get there? At the time right. when I realized it, I was working in a property company doing marketing, and I was thinking, I don't really have any particular esports experience, really, apart from just having it as a passion. How do I prove to a company that I would be an asset kind of on the outside? And I think that's something that I learned is that actually getting knowledge from other industries and bringing that into um, a different industry is actually sometimes really great to have that outside perspective. So um, never feel like if you ended up in a different industry and you want to go into esports or gaming that that's that's it for you, you are then in that industry, you can move around. Um, but yeah, it was just, I just did a lot of projects on my own, volunteered a lot of time to community projects to kind of get more um, knowledge under my belt, more experience under my belt to then apply that to jobs um, in the esports industry. But, yeah. Awesome, awesome. Really insightful stuff here, guys. Thank you so much. I think we've got one more question uh, at the top there. There we go. I'm just gonna get you a microphone. Hello. Um, how would you all sort of explain to maybe a school that isn't as supportive of students looking into this industry what the benefits of supporting students at events like this and supporting students in terms of looking at the esports industry? Yeah, how would you sort of persuade them to sort of push to a more modern way of teaching? Becky? Sorry, uh, what was sorry? What was exactly the so question? How, so how would how you get if 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 for example there is a school that isn't uh, supportive of getting kids involved mm. in perhaps say an event like this right. or uh, esports etc. How would you uh, persuade that school? What would you kind of give them an insight into to kind of get them into get involved? Well, I think being a part of events like this, the transferable skills that students can learn to then take on to other, you know, thinking about future careers and just social soft skills as well like working as a team there's endless development in esports and gaming working together being competitive or not so competitive organize being kind of you know working in the background um on events like this just trying to organize teams as well there's so much there to so many skills to develop and learn and i think um as soon as more and more schools and universities realize this the more interested they are um, it's just trying to get in front of those people and say that like, this is something that's a massively growing industry and there's so much um, to be gained from for, uh, for students. So, I mean, that, I would kind of go down that direction, um, the development opportunities there. Manisha? 
Yeah, I mean, esports is such an infant industry, and I suppose in schools um, they talk about, you know, broadcast, media, big firms, finance, and I think esports should really be taken seriously. You know, there's huge brands coming into the space, mm -hmm. there's huge events going on, and kind of getting in there early, I think, is only going to be beneficial. Um, there's so many exciting things going on. You know, I think esports is one of the most creative industries out there. Um, and yeah, I think anyone who goes in esports really does love it. Yeah, I mean, esports and games generally is a huge industry in the UK. There is, and it's just growing. Our friends at UK will have all the statistics on this better than me, but <laughs> it's it's growing, and there is no sign of it stopping. I mean, there's, I'm sure a number of you will know it's you know, bigger than film and mu music industry combined. Like this is a big industry, and there are some excellent, strong, growing uh, studios in the UK, and not just studios, like all number of companies associated with the whole game development, esports world. I mean, just look at the numbers; that'll encourage them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just being able to do something from an early age, you know, gives you the confidence. Uh, playing games teaches you initiative, perseverance. So these are all life skills that you can take on, mm. you know, and, and again, just being involved in that, um, the more you associate yourself with that type of industry, the more likely you would probably want to go into it. Um, obviously, there'll be more events, uh, more companies will be interested in, in it too. So I think, you know, for me, that's one thing I would take, you know, I think back to some of the games I played when, you know, we didn't have cheat codes, et cetera. And I think sometimes I'll probably <laughs> apply that to my, to my job now where I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to jump to the next level or whatever. <laughs> so in a way, yeah, it's, it's amazing how you can learn something from a game and apply it to your working life, really. So, um, but yeah, mm. and as I say, the more coverage you get, the more exposure you get, it definitely will help you. Yeah, I'm sure I learned most about how to manage my time through management sims better than anything else. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent stuff. Guys, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you guys. You guys have been really insightful. Can I get a massive round of applause for our fantastic guests? Thank you so much. So for everybody who's watching at home, this, of course, was our uh, panel talk with these lovely guests here. You can check out, I believe, we just really quickly, if, if any sort of social media handles you guys want to check out there for them to check out if anybody's watching at home. Yeah, so I'm at B Dub Games. Uh, you can follow NSC as well, NSC underscore GG. Um, that'll be more useful when you go to uni, though. So, <laughs> <laughs> Manisha? Yeah, I suppose our website, xl.gg, pretty short. Sure. Sweet. Anna? Uh, yeah, my handle's at Anna Bashal, B A S H A L L, or you can just go on the Sheridan's website and you'll find loads of information there. Sweet, and Mo? Uh, yeah, use the UK uh, handles. I tend to keep a low profile because not everyone likes me on the internet. <laughs> and uh, most importantly, stay in school. <laughs> you seem like a lovely person, Mo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys, once again. And everybody watching at home, we are now going to take a short break. Please do not go anywhere as we will be going swiftly into the grand final. One more time, a round of applause for our good panelists. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. We'll see you in three.
Welcome back to everybody watching at home and, of course, the lovely audience that's joined us here today. We, of course, have finally made it, Bowie. Oh, yeah. We've finally made oh, yeah. it. We're here at the grand final. Of the grand final. Of the, the grand final. <laughs> of the gra of the grand final. Um, and if, of course, you've just joined us, my name is Nims. I'm Bowie, and welcome to the Digital Schoolhouse Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Team Battle Grand Finals 2022 Grand Final. <laughs> um, we've had four teams who have been playing throughout the day, and we have whittled it down to the top two. And it's going to be a very exciting one because it was the opening game of our Grand Final. The deja vu going a on rematch, here. Rematch, which, which was down to the last game, last stock, in a double reverse 3 0, which is a very exciting match. <laughs> so uh, we're going to have to uh, get a lot of noise and a lot of excitement as we get ready for our Grand Final. Absolutely. So. Everybody who's watching at home, you better stand on your feet. You better be cheering. <laughs> I'll, I'll be able to hear you, I promise. Yeah, yeah. And everybody, of course, in front of us, please go absolutely crazy for our finalists, Norton College and Langley Grammar School. Here they come. <laughs> Nervous but confident. Nervous but confident. Uh, I'll, I'll chat to you guys obviously first because you're on the winner's side right now because you haven't been defeated yet. So in order for Norton to beat you, they've got to win twice. Yeah. Um, earlier, I was having a chat. I saw you at least in the audience um, looking at some VODs of previous matches. VOD review to go over what, what you had done, done, done wrong, which is a really advanced thing to do. Are you uh, feeling confident that you've like, ironed out all of the kinks? Uh, Probably not, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, you obviously, had an, you had an incredible run so far. Yeah. Your team captain, I'm going to say, because I'm talking to you. No, uh, <laughs> nah, it's you. You're, you're definitely the team team captain now. Who, who would you say was, has been the MVP this weekend? Uh, Sammy. <laughs> <laughs> team captain, MVP, but you're, yeah. you're, you're the brains of, of the operation for sure. Of course. Um, <laughs> feeling confident, though? Yeah, definitely. Excellent. They have, have, have to be, beat you twice. And you have all that time to, to adapt. Yeah. Excellent. Well, uh, obviously, I'm going to wish you the best of luck. Uh, you've got, you. You got two sets to deal with, but uh, yeah. All right. All right. Give them a round of applause, guys. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Welcome back. Welcome back, Norton College. You guys literally are the epitome of your team name. You thunked, but then you dunked, and then you came back. Are you guys ready? Are you prepared? We think so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are ready. So. You guys have literally been through the ropes. You've, got, you've gone against everybody today, pretty much all of the games, but you persevered. You've shown us so much versatility. Any, any giveaways of what you guys are coming up with? Have you been having a little chat in the break of what Rock you're going to do? Are you going to share anything? We've got a few strategies. Uh, whether they're going to work, well, I guess it, only time will tell. <laughs> he's, 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 being, he's being tame. He's not giving anything away. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, Secret we did weapons. try, we Secret did try. Weapons. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but thank you so much, guys. We're not going to keep you any longer. We're going to get you guys set up just to the side there. One more time, guys. Round of applause for both the teams in our grand final. <laughs> you guys want to go take your seat? Good luck. Can we go now? Can we go now? Yes, we're, we're, we're going to go that way. No, we're going to go that way. Because now... Uh. Oh, now we are going to get set up for this. Oh, yeah. For this game. I feel like you're so far I, away I know, from I'm me. really like, come on, reach me. I know. <laughs> hold, on, hold on, Jack. Um, yeah, so it's been one hell of a day. Very, very exciting one, but it is grand final time. And as, and as I mentioned, these two opened up the show with an absolute blistering match. And they said, game five, it was 2-0 up for Norton. And then Langley brought it all the way back to game five. They went two stocks up in that fifth game and brought it all the way back from some very incredible play. Um, as, they, as they mentioned themselves, from Sammy, the cloud player. So, um, you know, it's going to be an absolute face melter of a match to close this show a out. Face a melter. face melter. Wow. Mims. So, <laughs> talking of uh, uh, the games that's about to begin as we uh, take part in this grand final, the reason why there is a little bit of a space in the middle of us here is because we, have, of course, have one other co-host. Yes, yes. All the way from her house, she is, uh, as of course, as we mentioned earlier today, a little bit under the weather. Um, but she's still here with us. Yes, yes. She's still here. There she is. Alicia, welcome back. Hey, guys. <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> Excellent. Alicia, Face is I not mean. Melted. Yeah, 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 yeah. You look, I mean, you look yeah. great. You look great. Oh, thanks, guys. <laughs> Wonder of makeup. <laughs> no. So, Alicia, how, I mean, how's today been for you? I mean, we, we've had heart palpitations throughout the day. Um, We've we just been, it's been so hype throughout the entirety of today. Talk us a little bit about what, what's really stood out for you today uh, throughout all the games. 
Yeah, it's such a great question. I think what's so wonderful about today's tournament, right, is that Digital Schoolhouse, it started in 2017 with what, like four schools, something like that? And like, yeah. now there's well over 60 and you can so see that from the talent that we've seen playing today. Really, really high caliber. And I think what has impressed me most about players today is, is that ability to recover. We've seen some incredible turnarounds. At the beginning of the day, we talked about how one of the really tricky things about esports and playing on that stage is it's very different from your living room sofa, you know? You're there under the studio lights, you're live on Twitch, everyone's watching, and the game's not going your way. But if you can recover, <laughs> get over that, it's as much a mental game as it is a technical one. And yeah, there's been some really, really great narrative arcs today. And it's yeah. exactly, and it's, it's amazing that you just mentioned, Alicia, that, you know, Digital Schoolhouse started with just four schools partaking mm. uh, in a tournament like this. And, you know, to be going live on something like a platform like Twitch, um, where, you know, hundreds and hundreds or maybe even thousands of kids are watching all around the UK, there are some schools who have been really vocal on social media right now watching this <laughs> uh, tournament. Um, as we can see here right now, there's a tweet from, I believe, St. Mary's School. So shout out to St. Mary's. Having we a dominoes and watching the show, lovely. Know, <laughs> Big fan. These schools are so cool, man. Yeah. White school would never did anything like this. I, all we had was this, just the whole, it was in, <laughs> it was intercolour sports, you know, football <laughs> and rugby. And if I had in, intercolour Smash Bros, I would have been absolutely like sorted. The closest thing we had was sports day. I mean, I love yeah, sports day, fan, don't get me wrong, but that, that was so cool. And then, of course, we've got say, another can you school. imagine if they had Smash Bros at your school sports, oh, sports it'd be a, day? It'd like, be a I played I Smash Hurdles, where I just kind of, like, took <laughs> them all out. As I went. <laughs> Here's yeah. another tweet, actually, from a Valley Park school. Um, they are currently watching it on a big screen uh, in their classroom. So shout out to Valley Park School and to St. Mary's once again. Thank you so much for tweeting mm. uh, this out to us. We really appreciate your love and support. And I hope you guys, both schools are, and any other schools, in fact, who are watching... Uh, you guys are enjoying the show. Yeah. Um, it, it was nice, nice to see them as well, because, um, yeah, TJ and Freddie have been here doing casting as well. Yeah. And from a school, obviously, I think, I think the players weren't represented, but they were here re representing their school as casters specifically. Mm. So it was nice to see their support for them. They did a really good job, job today, I think. A absolutely oh, excellent yeah. job. Excellent job indeed. So we, um, Alicia, you're going to stick with us, I believe. We're going to be seeing you Hell again yeah. very <laughs> shortly <laughs> after this... Uh, <laughs> crazy grand final we're about to entail. So mm -hmm. get yourself another cup of tea, I think, yeah. Alicia. Can I have Great <laughs> idea, Nim. I'll do just that. <laughs> okay. See you in a minute. We'll see you in a bit. Take care. Right, so um, we're going to take a quick look back at that bracket. We again, do want to see, we? yeah, like the journey to this point as it stands. As, as I said earlier, Norton College and Langley Grammar School opened up that game with a very, very tense 3-2. Um, and then Caldy Grange Grammar beating out the previous, um, uh, you know, grand, uh, champions, the reigning champions, New College Swindon. Um, you know, so they stayed on the, on the winner's side. The Norton, as you mentioned, played through every single team. They lost to, to Langley. They played New College Swindon. They then played Caldy again. And now they're back into the grand final. To play Langley once more. This it's, is gonna. Uh, this is gonna be. This. I, I'm, I'm already like feeling the adrenaline, yeah. like coming through my yeah. veins right now. Yeah. This is gonna be some really? crazy deja vu slash yeah. revenge slash comeback <laughs> slash just. <laughs> Epic Just, gaming, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, epic gaming. Epic I haven't gaming. heard that since like 2012. <laughs> like it though. Um, but yeah, it's, it's going to be an exciting one. Obviously, the players are sitting down, they're getting ready. Looks like they're ready to go as well. So, um, without further ado, I think it's a good, good time to, to crack on with our first match. If, Let's uh, do it. If we're good. So, uh, yeah. Look, looks like they're all good, good, good to go. Let's um, get an audience check. Are you with us? Let's get some noise going. All right. Grand Here finals. We go. Oh, I'm very happy to see that. We have. We've got Norton in red, as always, Langley in blue, and I'm like, I'm very, very impressed to see that Sammy is currently playing Roy um, <laughs> in the correct colour as well. That's Elliewood colour with the only silver filigree in the armour. Anyway, doesn't matter. Um, so we've got that Inkling and um, and Roy combination. So again, Inkling's um, ink increases the damage, increases damage dealt, and Roy is a heavy hitter. So really wanting to use that to rack up as much percentage early as possible and try and get those early KOs. Um, Nathan and Harry, though, we've seen them today be a really solid team, very in tune with each other and see if they can bring that out to get that early lead against Langley. Absolutely. We do have, of course, three swordsmen on the stage right now, so it's going to be really interesting. Our Inkling player does need to play very cautiously, uh, utilising all of the abilities that they have, but mm -hmm. we've got to be careful of those sword strikes, especially from the big sword hitters like Ike and Byleth. 
<laughs> yeah, I specifically big, big character. Um, we've seen Nathan using this up B really, really well, just kind of convert into all kinds of shenanigans. Um, but yeah, nice back air from, um, from Sammy just to push back. Harry, though, getting a hit away. Double F smash Ooh. at the absolute okay. sweet spot. Does take down Nathan's stock. Two stock for the inking player, two stock for the Bryleth player. High high Ooh, percentages wow. for our Roy player. Rhythm getting hit there by the double edge dance and actually does go down to their last stock now, looking pretty um, bad there. I think that came out of Roy as well, so actually a, a, a team KO. It is looking like four stocks of people. Ooh, but that beautiful side smash there for Bryleth. Three, five to four. Uh, now five to three. Like still surviving. Still surviving. Like right near that smash ball. Nathan and that lucky number seven trying to put in that pressure. That, this is a really good thing about, about, about doubles is you can try and do that, play a stock tank role. If Harry just plays really conservative, doesn't really get in, in the way of anything, but just like throws out the odd, odd hit here and there and just like stock tanks. Don't take any damage, just be this anchor to, to the team. It can be very, very difficult, you know, to try and break through stocks. Absolutely staying cautious around the edge of the stage. They're both, both players on the red team with two stock apiece, one stock remaining for our rhythm inkling player. Large percentage gaining up here for our Roy player. Oh, okay, yeah, but it's just, it's just getting a hit there. We have one stock apiece now for Langley Grammar. Norton coming out of the gate swinging in this doubles match. We've seen them be very impressive throughout out the day and they're continuing to show it now. Down smash comes out, 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 out from Harry, punished by the dash attack from Sammy. Good recovery there from Inkling. Ooh, okay, oh, Nathan just clear. taking a stop from the team, mate. That's not a good idea. Although up smash does confirm, here we are down to a two stock apiece per team. All we need now is rhythm to stay very, very safe and just hold on to that stock and they can maybe even bring this back. We've got to watch out for that very high percentage here for our inkling player. Rhythm just holding the line. He needs to be very careful with that percentage. Gets a grab though, trying to get, uh, get aggressive. Needs to be careful here. There's, There's the up, up smash. Air. It comes out. Yeah, rhythm's gone now. It's all on Sammy to do the work. Goes for a high recovery. Very, very nice. Down tilt forward air. This is the, the counter just in case. Double edge dance comes out. Forward tilt to push Sammy again off stage. Oh, there There's it is. The forward. The down tilt into forward smash, just following that recovery, looking really, really good. Goes for a charge F smash. No, we're not gonna land on anyone there. Playing between the lines here. Oh. Good recovery. Playing it safe. And then now they with the with the final smash ball on stage is gonna try and force Sammy to make a decision. Not just one, one, one of the opponent away. Opting to avoid the smash ball for the moment. Sammy's playing very safe. There's the up B! Oh, and they, and they both went for it. They 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 say they, they stymied each other. Oh, he grabs it. <laughs> Where's the up B gonna be? Uh, the, the final smash gonna come out. It can. Oh, a bit too miss. early. The signs of life here. Can Sammy do this? Can we've seen him play clutch before? Still recovering. Nathan and Harry just struggling to get this final hit. Safe. The pressure is now on Sammy. He gets one hit now. He's got a little bit of time to play with, but the uh, good distance allows Harry to recover. Forward throw, still alive. Brilliant Close. recovery. Still alive. Still in there. Oh, okay, that was interesting with a, a, a fast full air dodge. There's the up gonna be punished. Oh, no. no. This is so tense right now. Nathan and Harry just cannot get this fill, the, this final hit. He's and holding on. It's allowing Sammy a bit more time, a little bit more hope. Goes for the air dodge over. It's Back throw. Crap. Tries to find the follow up. Down there throw. Is. Gonna be there enough. Is. Okay. Definitely lasted a bit. Nathan and Harry there, they maybe let that last a little bit too long. Um, Sammy looked to have some moment, but there was no major punish coming out from either team and there was an, a, an option there. Um, Final Smash, obviously, you know, there was a moment where maybe, maybe, maybe Sammy could have made a play. I think mm. it was smart, though, for him to play the lines. Like, try and, <laughs> try and keep the, 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 the enemies like, like away, mm. rather than going for the Smash Ball immediately. Because if you make that decision to push, to not push your, your opponent, they can aggress and shut down your space so quickly. Absolutely, and that's a brilliant observation right there. As from our lucky number seven player, really held on right till the final moments mm. there. Really observing exactly what the team was doing, 
that edge guarding that was happening from both players still managed to recover and put that pressure on and not allowing them to simply just wipe him off the stage there. Excellent play from both teams. But of course, the first point does go to Norton. Yep. Norton College there. And, um, and that's the first step in a long journey for them if they want to win this. As we mentioned mm. earlier, Norton are currently on the loser's side of the bracket. Yes. They need to win twice. They need to reset the bracket, put Langley onto the lower bracket as well, and then beat them again if they want to take home this title. So it's a long journey, but it is doable. It absolutely is doable. And we want to see some more games. We want yes. to see some more games. So I, I believe we're going to move swiftly on to the next game, which of course is our Smashdown games, uh, yep. the 1v1s. Yep. Do you think we're going to see similar fighters again, Barry? Yeah, I, don't I mean, know. Kyle's coming out with the uh, Kirby again. We've okay. seen a lot of Kyle's Kirby today doing a really, really good job of just, you know, very um, um, attentive, low percent combo work coming out from Kyle. You know, Kirby's got one of the, 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 those characters that has a very, very scary series of like these, these down or these forward throw, forward air follow ups. 20% from that straight off, you know, if, if you can keep racking those up, it's going to be really, really solid. Final cutter. A bit of a, bit, bit of a wayward um, F smash there coming out from A. <laughs> um, great, great tag. Um, run up, up smash, why not? <laughs> like, the opponent's running away, you might as well just do what, what they're not going to expect. Good usage of the dash attack, the extended yes. hitbox to cover the get up. Brilliant, brilliant usage of it there. A smash, charge as well, bit of an, an aggressive option that was uh, the, 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 like a step back from the charge from the F smash, which allowed um, a, uh, allowed um, Captain Falcon to kind of like evade the attack and then counter. It's pretty close between both players' percentages here. Still on three of stock apiece, but Captain Falcon slightly, oh no, maybe not, Kirby down to 109 now. Mm -hmm. Just using those jumps to keep himself safe when there was a, an, an aggressive um, jump in from Captain Falcon Stomp's gonna push Kyle really high, but not enough to take any anything. A lot of aggression there, but that dash attack will take it. Grabs. grabs. Back kick. Thinks about it. <laughs> just, just looking at Kirby in the face. You might be cute, but I don't care. <laughs> Captain Falcon's just really, really upset that Kirby got another new, <laughs> another new game. Another new game. <laughs> There's not been an F0 for a while. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I probably shouldn't have mentioned that. that um, <laughs> how can you improve upon GX, okay, though? You're still asking. holding on with 152% here for Kirby. Three stock. Oh, Falcon. with that grab and the throw. That DI, though. He just went straight across the top. Still in the game. 169. Kirby hanging on there. Going to use his... Oh, an oh. air dodge. That was an unfortunate air dodge. The that audience was... tapping an SD. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Not sure that's the best thing, but there we go. He gives him the boot. Yeah, give him the boot. The Tims are on. <laughs> a jab, jab combo. Maybe trying to get underneath it. Oh, yeah. Another jab combo. Just gets that percentage a little bit there. Trying to find these up airs, though. That smash ball could do with some wonders. Rack up that percentage as quickly as possible. That down tilt kind of offer, um, offering. Oh, hello. Trying to find the, the, uh, the final smash if he can. Needs to, be, needs to not be too aggressive with it. At the right time. While flailing. Many attacks being thrown out there. All missed. There, there it is. is. Oh, what? spot dodge! Spot dodge! No! That was a next level spot dodge. Saw it coming. Shield down. We're done. Bang. Maybe a little bit too uh, obvious, potentially, from, from Captain Falcon there. You never know. Um, perhaps Kyle's just in his head. Who can say? Run up, up smash. These, are these air dodges onto stage getting caught out by, uh, by you know, quite a lot here. Need to be careful. Dash attack once again. That's not going to be enough just yet. That is definitely a very early. That one's done, though. That low hitbox. 2-0. Norton College are one game away from resetting the bracket and putting Langley onto the lower side. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. So we've, <laughs> we've been in this situation before. Yes, we have. <laughs> this is how it opened. This is how, how the day opened. We're looking at a 2-0. Norton, 2-0 up against Langley. Sailing, smooth, yeah, smooth sailing, easy. And then Langley just, they, they, they deep reach, deep, reach <laughs> deep into their pockets and pull out as a reverse 3-0, twice. <laughs> so, is it gonna happen again? You got, I mean... Like, we're sitting there being like, oh, Norton, <laughs> smashing it out of the park. Easy. Off it goes. But Langley, is Sammy coming out? Is Sammy coming forward? Is the cloud gonna come out? That's what we saw earlier. That's what we saw earlier, indeed. Saw earlier. Are we gonna go right down to that final game in Squad Strike again? 
to then see a bracket reset. Or will Norton just say, no, close the door. You're in loser's yeah. bracket. We, we run it back, straight back. Exactly. So we're going to go straight into our next 1v1. Mm -hmm. um, it'll be interesting to see. Are we going to see the similar characters as we saw earlier today? I'm kind of lucky because I can have a little look over Are there. Are we going to be it. following a similar formula as earlier? Or oh, do they have out. any tricks up their sleeve? Team captain MVP stepping up. Sammy's going up, up, up oh. against Nathan. Okay. Birthday boy with that Jigglypuff. The lucky number seven is back with the cloud. Oh, yeah. This Interesting is... to see with Jigglypuff, actually, Bo. We haven't seen anybody really utilize the rest ability, which is really yeah, powerful stuff. Rest is mega powerful, but you need to make sure you have those combos. Be able to have, like, the setup. You want to get yeah. those kind of grabs to, like, knock them up mm. to get that rest. But again, so far, Nathan's just shown real aerial pro proficiency. Mm. And here's the thing, right? Even though Jigglypuff is a light character, we were mentioning earlier that Cloud's recovery is a fairly linear recovery and therefore set, fairly exploitable, mm. without limits at least. So if, and if Nathan can, can manage just to, just to shut Sammy out, we say that. Limit on deck. Up. Look at this build up. Wasted Ooh, the limit. Wasted 70% the limit. for Jigglypuff. Here we go. Very, very nice recovery. Beautiful. Use the, the, um, the cross slash to like stall the recovery and then jump over. Because saw that Nathan was, was, was coming in and down. Really intelligent recovery. Tries to charge up more of the limit. Yeah, holding that shield for the dash attack coming in. Nathan just popping the back air. Nice parry, gets the grab, Good back grabs. throw. What's going to be the edge guard here? Just charging limit. Oh, Gonna nearly. Use that. Okay, get there the it back is. air trade. Goes for it. So much stalling coming out from Nathan. Oh, a bit too high on the air dodge. A bit too high on the air dodge. Oh, boy. Needs to get, I was going to say, needs to use the limit soon. Wow. Nathan ran in, got caught by the Klim Hazard. Pound. Knock up there. It's got so much, like, you just, so, so, so much buoyancy, keeps, I guess. It keeps it going. Low recovery. Nice. Try to make sure it was hard to hit below the stage. Nathan not opting to go, go below. Forward air comes Charges out. Up the limit again. It's such an important thing. Because, like, not only does, does he gain, like, big attacks. Oh, that was close. Not only, does, not only does Cloud get more attacks, he also, you know, has like better movement. He's like uh, like faster falling. You know, much more speed. So he's a scary character in limit, which is why they kind of you know made it have a time limit. Whoa! -ho -ho! You do not step to me, Jigglypuff. Wowzers! Saw Nathan come in and just <laughs> met them with that. Oh, he comes back with the return forward smash there. That was a silly sentence to say. <laughs> Cloud Strife just said, "Don't step to me, Jigglypuff." Nope. Like <laughs> goes with the final smash. Racks it up straight away to 58 percent. Langley starting that comeback. This is, again, will it be a repeat of last time? We don't, don't, don't want to say anything. Perfect. But Nathan up against it. Needs to really exploit the recovery, which has been, to be fair, hasn't been very exploited so far. As Sammy's been very, very good at getting it done. Nathan just needs to find their way into this game. We need to see it. Here's the grab. Okay, cool. Ooh, good air dodge in. A lot of distance made. Pound comes, pound comes out. Limit break available once again. Oh, looking for the sing to maybe Very get a rest. Close. Another back air, nice and strong. <laughs> swing away, Meryl, swing <laughs> away. There's that racked up percentage again. Yeah, it's 125. I mean, Jigglypuff is a la height character. Anything major, and that puffball was going off the stage and off the screen. Here comes. Try to apply the pressure. Ah, uh, couldn't quite get into the position. Uh, yeah, Sammy's doing a great job right now, just getting these recoveries. Correct! <gasps> Air dodge on and, uh, and attack to get them safe. Nathan's not down just yet. It's a long road to recovery. There's that limit again. Caught it, that's it, GG's. 2-1. Langley fans in the audience, I think. Looks like we're not going down that easy, are we, Bowie? Yeah, I think Two that's a good, one. a good shout to put bring Sammy in. You know, they need to they, 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 they just can't risk him being the one to bring it back to the game five. They need to keep them in the game now mm -hmm. and then put the pressure on someone else. Um, <laughs> <laughs> who's left? You're the one who has to do all of the work now that we've done, and done the majority left? of it. Um, but no, exciting game, as we know. I mean, as we said, I was talking about the, the exploitable recovery of Cloud. Yeah. Because it very much is. It's very, very linear. It doesn't snap to the edge unless you have limit for Klim Hazard. 
But regardless of that, a character like Jigglypuff, who has such a strong ability to um, you know, keep airborne and to chase and to push so far off stage, unable to do it because of how well Sammy like, noted the situation and adapted around it so quickly and so, so efficiently. Really, really strong work. There was some beautiful play there, of course, from both of our players, really utilizing. As you saw, we almost got a rest. Almost got the rest in the there. Thing, the thing came out, but then just yes. missed it, so couldn't but get the follow -up. Unfortunately, you know, for Jigglypuff, uh, for our Jigglypuff player, that Cloud was just putting on too much of a pressure. Mm. Real, real speedy play there from our Cloud player. So excellent, excellent pressure being applied on both sides. So mm -hmm. this is going to be really interesting to see what we see next. Indeed. Yeah, so I believe uh, Harry's the last. We've had Nathan. Yep. We've had Kyle. Yep. Harry's left on Norton's side. Yep. Uh, the Ike player. Uh, who we saw in the doubles match. We're wondering if they're going to bring out I Ike again. We're going to find out very, very shortly. Mm -hmm. um, and then who's left on the other side? We've had Sammy. Um, we had um, the Captain Falcon player. I'm trying to remember his name. A. Captain Falcon, um, Kirby, and where are we? Rhythm! Well, yes, Rhythm. Yeah, yes. Inkling, Inkling, Inkling. Inkling, Inkling, yes. Inkling. Rhythm with the Inkling. So this is interesting. Um, Inkling does have a disjoint to, to, like, I guess, to go against. Um, Ike's yeah. sword. I mean, obviously Ragnar's a bit longer, but the back air from Inkling with the um, with the uh, with the splatter shot junior. Yes. Um, does... But you you got to watch out for that big sword. That big sword. Yeah. Final destination. Will we see the reset now, or will Langley do it once again and bring it all the way back and put the pressure on Norton to not crumble <laughs> when it matters most? A little bit of ink out. Percentage does, but again, I'm, I can't remember the exact multiplier when it's at max, but it slowly builds up to like 1.5, I think. Yes, it one, does. 1. It yeah. Depending on how much ink you cover, yeah. Landing nares into up airs, as we know. Grab up, throw up air coming out from Rhythm A. Again, an inkling staple. Definitely around that kind of like, you know, 100-ish percent is where we're going to be looking for these KO throws. Wonderful. As you can see here, Ike racking up straight away to 100%. Those powerful blows from that sword. Yeah, Ragnar's a big boy. It chunks pretty hard. Nice ready to roll movement. And there, once again, there it is, the Nair up here. All right. Nair just does everything for you. It's, a, it's just <laughs> the auto drive button, or the, the auto pilot button. It just perfectly pops them up for you. There's those up airs coming out, out from rhythm. Bomb out just to force the push back and then covering with that ink just to, cut, just to cover the opponent. Nice. Okay, yeah, just threw out, out the bomb for a, a trade there. Now yeah, Ike is covered in ink. This is where you want to try and get some percentage out. Maybe if you can get that roller just to get the, uh, get the berry. But needs to be careful of that big sword, as you say. Absolutely, 125% for our Ike player. There's a smash ball. Spacing so well as well. I mean, Rhythm really wants to get this, but maybe, maybe he doesn't want to use it until the next stock. If he can find a way to get the stock first, he has the ball in hand. Doesn't maybe, maybe he wants to use it, we'll have to see. Goes for it, jumps back, whale. keeps the height up. Oh, really yeah. nice, there it is. Cool, that was good. Okay. So there was, before unleashing it, it was a slight jump back. Yeah. So to keep to have a higher shot so he can then read the movement and chase up and down with it. Really, really intelligent decision. Trying for the up air, doesn't get that one just yet. Harry's is doing a very, very good job of always just kind of like letting rhythm make, make the first move and kind of like jumping and spacing in response to that. Nice run up, throw, forward throw. What's going to be the edge guard option? Tries to go for a down air, not, not, not the one just yet. There you go. Up to build up. Up to up air. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit, it's 17%, it's not bad. Just needs to get something more substantial going. Goes for a splat bomb. Maybe these walling back airs is something we want to see. Yeah, there, there we go. Um, although the yeah ether comes out, it's powerful. This is to reset the bracket. Harry's looking for redemption from that first set this morning. It was this morning. Yeah. Yes, it was this morning. <laughs> okay, well, okay. Good see combo that. there. See, rhythm doesn't want to take too much percentage here. If you can just get this stock off without any any resistance. Super Jump does have a, or Squid Jump does have a landing hitbox as well. Mm. As that forward air reads the quick, the, the quick draw position, but again, it's got a very low recovery, Ooh. so you can't really punish it when landing on stage like that. And there's that build up. Okay, 130%. Now, this is what I was saying, that if you can just get this stock off now with minimal resistance, he'll be able to get, you know, hopefully get a, a, a big take on. This is not looking good, though. Every single hit he takes is massive right now for Rhythm. He's got to be very careful, as he does not have any more ink. 
a little bit. Okay, the quick draw, meeting the M, the forward air, and just keeping Ike safe for a little bit longer. It's not over yet, even though this percentage is going up Ooh, and grab. looking pretty scary. No punish. Okay, no, they're, they're, as I said, landing hitbox on the squid jump. You can't just like stand there. <laughs> okay, forward air, just get that low hit. The, the recovery angle is super good. Oh, there's going to be forward air. It's not what nice. it is. That's it. Bracket reset. Bracket reset. Sammy there talking to his team here. You can see. Norton have done the hard work, or the biggest part of their hard work. They've reset the bracket. Now we're going to go Ooh. back to the doubles. Yes, we are. We're going back to doubles, and we're going to start this all over again. Wow. It's very important there. You can see at the end of the game, when it was done, Sammy was immediately talking to his team. OK, we've lost this first game. We need to tighten it up. Uh, up. What did we do last time that allowed us to get that recovery? You know, maybe it was, maybe it was player position and player mm -hmm. matchup in that particular mm -hmm. thing worked out in one favor. So, um, or maybe one of those players just kind of just dropped drop the ball a little bit. But we need, need to tighten that up from Langley's side. Norton, though, playing the exact game they want to play right now. Clean 3-1 on their redemption stun set. Brackets, re brackets reset, no more errors from either side is really, really available. It's, it's any team's game now, Barry. Mm. Any team's game. This is... This is it. This is this is the this is the final. The yeah. finals, final, grand yeah. final, bracket reset, grand final. I like I like to call them true grand finals. I <laughs> true think, grand finals. The true grand so, finals. Once again, as Bo just explained, ladies and gents, boys and girls, everybody who was watching at home, we've had a bracket reset. Oh yeah. We have. We've had a bracket reset. Bracket reset. We've had a bracket reset. So what we're going to do here is um, we're going to do a rock, paper, scissors, a classic, uh, the old RPS to see who's going to be doing stage choice. Um, we've got young Mark. Young Mark. Young Mark. Very young Mark. Young Mark. Shout out um, to Mark. Yeah, shout out to Mark. With a C. Just with a C, just to clarify. Yeah, yeah. Mark, Mark with a C. <laughs> um, Mark doesn't know how to play RPS. <laughs> oh, we love Mark. We love Mark. You may recognize Mark. You might, you might recognize Mark. You may recognize Mark. You may recognize that. Wait, who actually won? I didn't even see. No, that's the, 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 oh, the thing. Okay. They, they, <laughs> they knackered the, they, they, they knackered it frame one. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. Oh. All right. So once again, of course, as Bo explained, we are going to be resetting the bracket. So we're going to go back to our team battles, which is 2v2s. Mm -hmm. Then we are going to go into some more smashdowns. Cool. Langley, Team Langley are doing the stage yep. choice because they just won rock, paper, scissors. Indeed, indeed. So yeah, 2v2s, uh, our 1v1s in a smashdown, and if need be, the squad strike may come mm. back. Yeah. I think may come back. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh... I'm, it, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to how, how it's, it's, it's going to go. Um, the thing is, like, the, the, the good thing about being on winner's side in grand finals, before true grands, is that you have enough time, you, you, you can kind of like allow it to happen. You don't want to like let the enemy win, but you can, there's more room to kind of like sit back and kind of like take in as much information as you can yep. about what the opponent are doing before you can then find the counterplay to it. So this is interesting. Again, Nathan and Harry have been a absolute tour de force in the doubles today. They have been so strong. I would, I would say the, the best doubles team we've had, or the, the doubles pair we've had out of all the schools so far. Mm. And that's no, no disrespect to the other ones, but just Nathan and Harry have been on another level. But we're on PS2. Here we go. Different stage, just a different stage layout. Um, so it's going to be, maybe he's going to play a little bit more in the favor of Rhythm and Sammy. Seven. So you everyone know his name's Sammy. Seven. Um, okay. Roy is currently in the ground. Not, not ideal to bury your teammate there with him. <laughs> um, again, these like two f like flurried, frenzied 1v1s on both sides. Throwing out an S smash. These wayward, randy S smashes are not the way to go. Aether, we're going to connect from both players or, or a player from both teams. Um, uh, Ike play at a very high percentage. Ooh, only 108%. Roy, 109. Yeah, last last game we saw this. Harry Ooh, was playing stock. Clear off. That was yeah, exactly. Whoa. That was that was broomstick sweet. <laughs> that was really good. Yeah, Harry was playing stock tank in the previous uh, doubles game. So you know that's okay. There we go. And, he, and he's got Ether out. Nice catch up. Beautiful. Beautiful play. That is matchup knowledge. That there is matchup uh, 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 knowledge. Bit too, oh, bit too early so there. So close. Bit too early. But no, that was match arm knowledge. The counter just basically to hit the attacking frames from a rising ether. Mm. Um, because like essentially, um, 
Ike throws his sword up and then meets it and comes down. So basically when Ike came up, the counter came out and Bosch. And Bosch, yes. And Bosch. <laughs> Three stocks still remaining for our pilot player here. Two stock apiece for the rest of our players on the game. Yep. Sweet. Uh, the sour spot from uh, Roy. See, this is the thing. Very good of Sammy there to kind of get the opponent knocked off stage. And amazing back air to get that <laughs> sweet spot stock take. Let's go. Oh, the inkling, the recovery. Didn't Unfortunately, loses that stock. One down to our inkling player. After so much work being done to bring it back, you don't want to have an error like that marring the fight. Ooh. Clear off from that sword. Yeah, such a big hit, dude. Such a big hit. You don't, want, you, don't want, you, don't want, you don't want to start flailing here. You want to be still very measured in this. I know there, there's a lot of disjoints going around the screen right now. Swords left, right, and center. Is that going to be an edge guard? Sammy is patient. F smash comes out. Down throw. Both players... Okay, so this is the thing. Rhythm and Sammy are going for the same target and sometimes ending up in, in each other's way and they need to stop that. They can't let that be their, their downfall here. A bit more cleaner, clearer communi communication, perhaps. That's Rhythm gone. F tilt is going to be enough. Back air. The, the air. Oh, oh, that's it. In the back. In the back. So, do you remember? Do you remember, Nimmers? Earlier in this set, in this grand finals, when I said that if you go for the smash ball, sometimes your opponent can, like, you know, aggress and encroach upon your space. Absolutely. I don't want to say that was a perfect example of it, but that might have been a perfect example of what <laughs> that, I mean. It's almost like you're predicting the future, Bowie. It's almost like I know what it's I'm talking about. It's almost yeah. like you know what you're talking about. Uh, you could say I've done it before. You could. You, you, you could. I mean, you know, it's not your first time at the rodeo, yeah. is it? <laughs> this ain't my first rodeo. <laughs> um, so that's game one again. Norton again. The, again, the doubles, they're just they're nailing it. The best doubles team we have right now. So, but here, it's not all about, about doubles. Back to the 1v1, we're going again. Yes. Um, and again, is Kyle going to come out? Because we've been seeing Kyle do a very, very good we job. Are, are we going to see that Kirby come back? Yeah. Are we going to see that blue Kirby come back? Are we going to see... Um, the same characters come back again, or are they going to throw a spanner in the works and change it up a little bit? That's what's going to be really interesting here. The thing I like about this kind of like, well, I mean, they have to play Kyle, don't they? Because mm. Kyle has to mm. play next. Um, but the thing that I like about what Kyle's doing is Kyle is playing, I, I think, yeah, by having such a strong doubles team at first, they have this really strong, solid single player character, um, single. Uh, one-on-one -on -one player, rather, yeah. excuse me, um, who is just holding down the line. They're just a, they're a, a, a tour de force to be reckoned with. Like, they, can you get rid of the Kirby quickly? Because I think Norton have gone up 2-0 both times because they've been able to have a great doubles team and then a really solid, um, really solid Kirby. Here we go. We're back with the Captain Falcon. And, of course, Kyle with the Kirby. So this is the thing I would have thought maybe you want to take, like, put, put a different player into your doubles team yes. so that someone else can deal with Kyle. But they didn't. They kept it, it the same. So maybe they just feel very confident that, you know, um, A, Lamont, um, you know, <laughs> can do, has made enough of, of a change mentality-wise or, like, play-style-wise in order to, you know, get through the cracks in Kyle's armor here. Just needs to do the right thing. Not throw out, out an S-match on shield. Town and city here for both of our fighters. Northern Unlucky. College uh, supporters there. Unlucky. Shouting out some, some SDs. I know it's in your favour. But, uh, <laughs> Unlucky, of course, there for our Captain Falcon player. Yeah, you don't want to do that when your team's, you know, 1-0 down. Got to be careful. This is this is the danger with, with rush down characters. You can sometimes rush a little bit too down. <laughs> <laughs> rush down too fast, at least. It's still all to play for. Good rack up here of percentages on both sides. Falcon dive just, you know, in the middle of nowhere there. Just needs to be so much more, so much more careful than they're being. Kyle's just doing so much space control, and it's so hard for, for the Captain Falcon to do what he wants yep. to do. Back here again. Side. Looking like a three-stock potential if Kyle can see this one out. Captain Falcon needs to be careful. They need to do the long fight back if they can. Here's that build-up combo. It's not impossible, of course. Didn't, yeah. Hmm. These, um, these, these, these aggressive approaching nares just landing, you know, in front of the opponent and just allowing like, like a free response. They need to be much more careful with that. They can't Absolutely. be throwing out these wayward hits. Okay. Take your time. Be patient. Smash ball is available.
I was looking for that. Just like there's his little terrifying pink adorable, blue adorable blue couple. Adorable. He's so cute, but then he just hurts you. Okay. Okay. Do we see an activation? I don't really see it. I don't, don't, I don't really, don't, really don't, 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 don't think that he wants to use it here. He wants to get rid of this stock first, surely, because like... It's not enough. It's going to be such a big... Ah! It's going to be such a big... <laughs> excuse me. Um, it's going to be such, such a big reversal. They can get it. I thought that was a Kirby you there. <laughs> okay, there we go. There's the Stock elbow. taken. Now. Still a, has the smash ball. A bit of percent, and then that final smash. But you don't want to lose it. Never mind. <laughs> Norton coming alive here. They Woo! reset 3-1. Three, three, they are 2-0 up again once more. The onus is on Langley to bring this back oh once boy. again. Langley need to really dig, dig deep, dig deep, oh and boy. bring out the best that they've got. They've done it once before. It's not impossible. But how shaken are they from that reset? What happened in that game, and can they bounce back quickly enough? That's the question, Nims. This is this is what's happening to me right now. Yeah. This is getting spicy. Shvetty. <laughs> so yeah, it's um, gonna be it's gonna be uh, just. I mean. Yeah, 2-0 two, two oh up. This could, this could be match, game set and match this next round. Could be. It, could it might be. not be. I mean, like, you can see that there's like a little bit of, you know, maybe a bit oh. dejected there. Sammy's coming out early. Want to get him mix on. Up. They brought the Belef player out. Maybe, maybe Nathan has what it takes. We're getting it's into game uh, three. Lucky number seven. Give it up, ladies and gentlemen. Go absolutely crazy for him. Come on. Nathan throwing out a very early arrow to get some percentage off very, very quickly. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. <laughs> Sammy has been successful so far at bringing back matches for his team. But, we, but there's a new opponent today with the Belef. There are some very secret power plays here from Belef that you've got to be very careful of. There's landing, oh, there's landing nares into, I look like down smash there. Um, interesting decision. Okay, yeah, Limit Beautiful. Blade Beam comes out. What's gonna be the edge guard decision? Just a little bit more Limit Break charging. Oh, perfect. Clean, clean Hazard out of shield is a big move for Clown. Smash Ball already available. Yeah, as I say, that's quite an early prop mm. for that, actually. Charge, arrow, a little bit. Gets the nice. uh, smash there. Doesn't get it. Now picks it up. Never in doubt. Ooh. Oh. Oh, no. Got to be careful with Cloud's Limit. Um, any, any, uh, 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 the, the FE characters do that, do that as well. Beautiful like play there, was an excellent play. Very Up nice smash. back air. Into Limit Break, so, back air. That was so good, went so deep for the edge guy, got so far off stage and found that back air beautifully. Really good stuff from Sammy. That's the kind of, kind of, of aggression you, you need to bring back a deficit. <laughs> it's one of the crowd, there's no way. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely no way. Um, okay, still staying alive. Punish? Okay, a bit, a bit, a bit of a delayed option. Okay, Cross Slash has the most disgusting damage. It's like 26, 27 <laughs> percent. Very nice read wow. and roll in to get that limit Cross Slash, but maybe a, a finishing touch would have been. Oh, bloody Nora! <laughs> <laughs> This is beautiful play here from our cloud player. Still at three stock. I mean, definitely, just, this is just doing so much work right now. Sammy's got a lot of stuff to go. Just, I mean, this is just so. This is why they want to bring Sammy out. Get that two-one scenario, and then just like hope that they can bring it all the way back and then see what they can do for the finale. Forward is going to be okay. enough. It'll be the stock. Okay. Two-one. It's out. Okay. Can Nathan get what he needs? Another RB comes out, but the RB out of shield from Cloud's going to be enough to push that back. Dash attack. A little bit of spaghetti from both. Smash ball available. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh, the connection. Oh dear. Oh dear. Can we bring it back? <laughs> RB into the, uh, into the, the final. We saw it last time. Is that going to be enough to take it on this particular part? It is. Oh, wow. <laughs> Brought it back. That's a very, very low percent, percent KO. Sammy's got, he's got a lot of percentage to play with, but there's also a lot of pressure now. He's been brought back from a 3-1 a lead. Is going to be one of one apiece again. So you have to play very calm here. Ooh, good pressure. No! Unlucky. 
unlucky. There was some fear there. There was some real fear there. There was some fear there. Whew. The blade beam came out and it just kind of put the fear of, of, of I don't know, any kind of deity that whatever you believe in. Um, but you know, what a power play in, there. In, from in, a, in your player. eyes, yeah, just, I don't know. Like, what a power play there from Sammy, aka lucky number seven. I've been calling him all day. Lucky <laughs> number seven. He is the lucky number seven of the tournament, ladies and gentlemen. But yeah, I mean, like, I'd say it's one of those things that, like, because it's a team game, one of these things we have a really strong doubles team. Yeah. But Sammy is clearly a very talented and strong mm. singles player right now. Mm. And you have the, you know, the, 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 these different elements of this team game. And it's going to, you know, do, oh, does rather, um, Langley have with their third player enough to bring it back and put it all on the team aspect once again. So again, same position. 2-1. Every single time Norton and Langley have done this, it's been the same thing. Just obviously, it was 3-1 last time rather than 3-2. Yeah. But it's grand finals reset. So... Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. But it's really nice to see that our players really, particularly with our Cloud player, really understands the player. Yeah. He really understands the character yeah. and knows exactly what to utilize to keep him in the One game. One thing I'm excited about here is Samuel's having a chat because like, there's no talking in the middle of the game. Yeah. Samuel's sitting down, chatting to Rhythm. I need you to focus on this, yeah. right? You need to make sure to use these. No, don't, put, don't, don't, don't try and overstay your welcome. Don't try and sit there and get too aggressive. Just do what you need to do. Get yeah. those hits, get out. Play it safe. Try and bait the opponent to, do to attack first, then you counter. Good start so far. 42 unanswered percent. But there's the nair. Up, up tilt, jab. We're back again with that Icon Inkling player building that percentage up nicely there. Both players, 40, 60. Unfortunately, Ike with that powerful sword. 84 racked up real fast. Yeah, just that's that's what, that what Ragnell does. The Nair is just too powerful. Once again, there it is. Yeah. Early Ooh. stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rhythm had a good start, but needs to maintain that rhythm. If well, main well, get back to to that that rhythm if he really really wants to. But right now, Harris is doing such a good job of so much control. These grabs, these nairs, all con all continuing into these forward airs, up airs, and back airs, and just percent, 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 and stops going left, right, and center. It's racking up very fast. It'll be 70, 85 percent already for our inkling on the second stock. Oh, lucky recovery. Bit scary. He needs to calm down here. Just can't. Just don't get inside your own head. Just egg, just exit your own own head. Focus on the game. What you can do. Don't worry about the stakes if possible. I mean, I know I know they're there, but good blocks here from Ike. He got it. That was max range on that up air. Harry, three stocks to one, looking to clean this out and make sure Norton are the digital schoolhouse team battle champions if they can just finish it off here. But Rhythm's not, not done yet. Not done yet. It's not over until it's over. He's back at all these, air, these aerials being traded back consistently. In coverage does give slight extra damage to Ike, of course. Can you get that? That's yeah, got to be confirmed. There nice. it is. There it Beautiful. is. Up air, up throw confirmed. Beautiful. He can't get. He can't have. Like, he can't get just get di disparaged by, by by this just because it's not. It's definitely doable. You know. If, yeah. you, if you can get like 40 un 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 unanswered percent, you can do it again. If you can do it again, you can maybe get that KO and just bring it back. Just don't overstretch that <laughs> aggression. It's scary, there's no DI there, that's looking bad. <laughs> <laughs> These aerials, okay, rhythm can't be too, he, he needs to respect them, but he can't be too scared. He needs to make sure he can still do his own job. Oh, oh. Dangerous. I like the attempt. Roll in, but it was a get up attack. Oh, there's a trade, that was scary. Rhythm just needs to get a bit more percent. There's the forward jump, gonna be asking gonna be it is! Norton College! They're happy, they did it. The sigh of relief. <laughs> wow. They did it. Wow, wow, wow. What a game. What a comeback. Wow. Brilliant, brilliant Beautiful play. play. Norton put on their back foot at the beginning of the day and has fought back throughout the beginning of that lower side bracket all the way through to grand finals. They get the reset. They get the victory in the same manner that they managed to get there in the first place. Wonderful stuff from Norton College, your digital schoolhouse, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Team Battle, grand final 2022 champions. With that in mind, <laughs> we... <do> <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, oh, I'm absolutely gobsmacked by how incredible that was. Um, we are, of course, ladies and gentlemen, going to take a short break yep. just so we can get our players ready 
for, of course, our prize giveaways. Please do not go anywhere. Stick with us. We'll be right back after this quick break.
Right. They are pretty looking things, aren't they? Yeah, that's, they what, are. that's what everyone's been here for, these <laughs> wonderful awards that you see in front of you right now. <laughs> they are beautiful trophies. So before, of course, we get into giving these awards, can I please just get everybody who is here right now and everybody who's watching at home, please give a massive round of applause to everybody who partook in this tournament today. Yeah. And of course, if you, are, if you are watching from at home or if you're watching from your school and you partook in this tournament all the way from September right up until now, give yourselves another round of applause for just even being a part of this tournament. It's been absolutely fantastic. Yeah. I can only... This has been absolutely amazing. I know I can speak for Bowie on this. It's been absolutely a pleasure to see such talented... Uh, kids from all across the UK partake in this tournament. And a massive, massive shout out to Digital Schoolhouse and of course Nintendo UK. And of course Gfinity Arena for hosting this event at the moment. So round of applause for those guys. Very kind of you to do that. Yes. Okay. So, we of course have prizes for both of our teams. We do indeed. We do. But of course we have a very special award, don't we Bowie? We do, yeah. Um, as well as obviously, because like, this event is not just playing and competing in the game as well, but mm -hmm. there's, there's a whole thing for schools to get involved with. We have team managers mm -hmm. um, going on for all these schools. But one thing we, uh, that you may have seen today is that we've had a variety of some of the students joining uh, myself and Nims on the desk to do some casting. And one thing we always like to do is kind of give an award to uh, the, 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 the student who, who, who has uh, kind of really shone and really, really done a great job when it comes to um, you know towards commentary and really just kind of getting stuck in and doing a great show and kind of you know really just being great um, so what we'd like to award uh, well one, one of the awards you can see in front of you here is the best shoutcaster of the digital schoolhouse grand finals here and we would like to announce that winner right now Go absolutely ahead. so the best shoutcaster for 2022 for this super smash brothers ultimate team battle tournament is of course Danny <laughs> Stand here for me, Danny. You stand this way for me. <laughs> Nims gets Nims gets to raise the trophy then. Go there you go. You. That is all yours, thank Danny. You. Thank you. I didn't drop it. That's the most important thing. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Danny. Thank you so much. We were absolutely blown away by your commentary. Of course, in the semi-finals, as we saw earlier this year uh, up here in Manchester. Um, and today, you absolutely blew us all away with your commentary. I mean, is this something that you're passionate about? Do you see yourself going further forward doing more commentary like this? Oh, um, 100%. Like, I've, I've always been, like, um, interested in the acting industry, but then when I found out that this could be a career path, I've sort of, like, gone more towards this side. And now I'm just going to see where it takes me. Amazing stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time, a massive round of applause for the best yeah. shoutcaster, Danny! Yeah. Thank you, Danny. Excellent stuff. I love, I, love, I love to hear that. You know, I was interested in the acting industry. I was like, yeah, that's, that's a good head on the shoulders there. Love, I love a bit of theatre. <laughs> um, but yeah, congratulations to our best shoutcaster. We've now got to get on with our uh, final two prizes here to give away. Uh, we've had, obviously, as Nims mentioned, many schools have been involved in this, um, and uh, we only, ha only had the top four here, here today. But, you know, we have our prizes for our top two uh, schools. Um, they performed brilliantly today, and they had some very intense matches. Um, so let's give a massive round of applause and say congratulations to our second place finishers. Langley! Yeah. Langley Grammar, you put on <laughs> quite the show, didn't you? You put on quite the show, you fought very valiantly. How do you feel right now? I mean, you guys put on such a fantastic show. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna keep calling you lucky number seven. I know your name's Sammy, but I'm just gonna keep calling you lucky because you were really the lucky number seven for your team. How does it feel right now that to be surrounded by this this event? And what what were you taking away from this? Well, the event's really cool in itself, but if I'm being honest, I'm a little bummed that we only got second place. So <laughs> I feel like we definitely could have done better. It was just, it was really the doubles that got us the lot. Uh, loss here I feel so. Excellent but of course you guys are not going to go away empty handed we of course have some Nintendo goodie bags for you as well. Round of applause for these guys <laughs> Second place And of course this is for you hold it with pride 
Ladies and gentlemen, your runners up, Langley Grammar School! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much. But it all, when it comes to competition, there can only ever be one, can, can, can't there, Nims? Boy, oh boy. This, is, this has been quite the journey for this, mm. for this school. It's been quite the journey. They fought valiantly early this morning. They, it, was, it was a bit of a deja vu moment, wasn't it? They got back into the grand final, going all through that loser's bracket. Yeah, got back in, really showcased their stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Norton College! Grand champion of the Digital Schoolhouse. Thank you very much for the team known, <laughs> Otherwise known as Team Thunk and Dunk. Yes. <laughs> you guys have got, you've got brands and everything. You're all yeah. branded up. <laughs> Great. Oh, yes. Guys, no pressure, but you... How does it feel right now? Are you... How do you feel? <laughs> I don't really know. Excited. <laughs> <laughs> Excited, I guess. Yeah? Yeah. So you guys really, you know, showcased what it's all about, you know, really persevering, showcasing all the teamwork. I mean, t talk me through, like, you know, your journey from when you first entered this tournament right up until now. What would you say has been the best thing about this, for this tournament for you guys as a team? <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> It's just been a really fun experience overall, like everything. Like, this thing looks really cool, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, everyone's been like a good spot, all nice handshakes afterwards. And yeah, it's just been overall a really positive experience. Excellent stuff. Well, uh, without further ado, I'm going to get you guys to come stand a little bit forward. And I'm going to present this championship trophy to you. <laughs> He's got it. Careful. I haven't dropped it. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your grand champions for the Super Smash Brothers Ultimate Team Battle. Digital Fool has grand champions, Melissa Collins! Come on, Fran, stand up! We've got some Nintendo goodie bags for you guys as well, courtesy of Nintendo UK. Yep. There you go. Thank you so much, guys. Excellent very, very well stuff. done, that team. Thank you. No, of course, yeah, we, we couldn't have done this by, by, by ourselves, obviously. You know, the, the, these kind of shows have, have loads of people involved. So, obviously, we do want to, uh, to, bring, so to bring in our, our, our wonderful third co host who's been supporting from, from home. Um, Alicia, where are you? There she <laughs> is. <laughs> <laughs> All in, like, yeah, cheering. <laughs> oh, bless. Have you had a good time, Alicia? It's been amazing. Seriously, congratulations to all of the teams who've competed today, but especially Norton, who smashed it, quite literally. It's been <laughs> a phenomenal day. And I hope that if anyone's watching at home that if you learn anything from today, it's that there really is a career in games for you, no matter what your passion is. You know, if you're interested in competing, <laughs> there are stages like this to perform on. But also if you caught our panel earlier, you know, if you're uh, got parents who are saying, become a lawyer, well, you can become a games lawyer. If you, your favorite subject at school is history, well, you know, Assassin's Creed has historians that work on it. There truly is something for everyone. And I think today's been such a brilliant celebration of this particular slice of our industry. Um, and I guess the only other thing left to say is that registration for Digital Schoolhouse's tournament next year in 2023 is actually open. So make sure to register if you haven't already, and maybe we'll see you back here next year. I hope I'm there next year, rather than in my bedroom. That'd be great. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you very much indeed, Alyssa. It's been, been a pleasure to have you watching from home. And, and again, I, I do hope we get to see, see you, you soon as well. We do miss you very, very much. Love you guys. Well done. <laughs> you did such a great job, well, Nims and Bowie. You thank awesome. you so Thanks much. So much love. Cheers, cheers. Right. Well, there you go. I mean, yeah. yeah. That's it. It's been a pretty exciting year. Um, as, as was mentioned, you know, you can always apply. If you're a school who's not involved right now and you do want to get involved, you know, digitalschoolhouse.org.uk slash apply to get involved. And maybe we'll see your school here at the grand final. Um, maybe it's going to be here as well, but maybe we'll see it in future um, at a grand final event for the, di the Digital Schoolhouse. Thank you very much for everyone who's been involved. It's been, a, a, again, an amazing year of events, like every single school, everyone from, from DSH as well. It's been a pleasure to work, work with you and Gfinity as well for, for making it all happen. Nintendo 
Nintendo UK as well for supporting. Um, I think we should always um, end this the best way as possible, and that is to celebrate once again your champions. Norton College, raise your trophy aloft. It's yours. You are the champions. We'll see you next year.